Chapter 38 My Mate, My Pack Hunter, what are you doing here, Tyler? I asked impatiently. I came here to put some sense into you, he replied. You are wasting your time. I have made my decision. I won't listen to your crap anymore, I retorted. Hunter, this Omega, she can't be a Luna. She will make you sink even further than your father did. She is my mate. But it is my pack. I am the one to decide who can be my Luna or not. I told him what I should have voiced out long ago. Tyler exhaled sharply and ran his fingers through his pitch-black hair edgily. I understand it isn't easy. The bond makes you feel attracted towards her, bewitched even. It's something hard to resist, Tyler started. I could hear Max growling irritably in my head. It was not only the bond, but I was also finally learning how stupid I have been and falling in love with Claire for the amazing female she was. You could have the Omega to give you pups and find another female to be the Luna of our pack. Maybe Katie will accept it if you ask her once again. She seems very reasonable, he added. Tyler really wanted to rile me up, and it was working. No, this is out of the question, I replied firmly. I was sick of having him pushing me like this. He has been like a brother to me for so long that I can't even remember, but it was too much. I turned around. I was about to leave the hall and go running in Max's form to blow off some steam. I didn't want to listen to Tyler's bullshit anymore. But I also didn't want to snap at my closest and oldest friend. Tyler stopped me in my tracks by placing a hand on my shoulder, making me turn around with a huff. Hunter, for the goddess sake! The Omega can't hold the Luna position. She doesn't have it in her. The only thing she can do is housework and serve you in bed. She can bear you pups, and we can only hope they won't take af- He almost yelled. I had enough. Too much of this shit! Before he could conclude his sentence, my fist met his face in a blink of an eye. I wouldn't allow him to talk about my Claire like this, as if she was a thing to be used. Max and I were completely worked up, and he let out a piercing growl. I am your alpha, and you won't talk about your Luna like this. Do you understand me, Tyler? Max was feral. Tyler fell onto the floor at the impact of my punch and brought his hand to the offended cheek as he gave me an unbelieving gaze. But this time, he didn't question me anymore. Yes, Alpha, he replied, casting his eyes down in submission. I stormed out of the castle without looking back. I was even more annoyed than when I arrived at the hall in the first place. I had to shift to Max's form and run to calm down. Unfortunately, I didn't even have time to cool off before I was met with more annoyance when I heard Stefano's voice and his familiar chuckle echoing as I was walking towards the forest. I could hear them from afar due to Max's acute hearing. I can't believe that our alpha left everything for a female, for an omega for that matter. Max and I growled in unison at his words. I ran towards the balcony where they were talking and laughing, as fast as my legs could take me, powered by pure rage. Don't speak like this. She's his fated mate, and she may be a nice girl. I could hear Sunday's sweet voice. I stopped in my tracks to listen to more of their exchange. They were together with some young wolves from the royal pack, talking and day-drinking. On top of that, the goddess never makes mistakes. If this female is your alpha's mate, it must be for a good reason. Floor added. I didn't know she was here as well. I <laughs> know. I'm not as antiquated as Tyler. I think the alpha should do what he deems right. But it was very atypical of Alpha Hunter to change his mind about his decision and leave like this in the middle of the night for a female. That's all I have to say. Stefano remarked, For an Omega? That is hilarious. Those are only for fucking leave. <laughs> this little Omega must have played a good number on him, those fussy, a young wolf said. That was the last straw. I went towards them and lifted him up by the collar of his shirt. Pop! 
never talk like this about my mate again. Do you hear me? Never! My voice was guttural, mixed with Max's. Yes, Alpha. The teenaged wolf lowered his head in submission and started trembling. Good. He better be afraid and never refer to my Claire like this again. I put him down and stared at Stefano as I took two long strides towards him. You! Don't you ever refer to her like that either. Don't you ever make jokes about her or laugh at her expense. She is my mate. She may be an Omega, but she is much more determined and has much more guts than all of you and those pups together. I growled. Max was on the surface and I could feel my hand shift to his paw, which happened quite rarely, meaning that we were both indeed edgy. I am sorry, Alpha. I, I didn't mean to offend your mate. Be careful next time. Better yet, never talk about her behind her back. You must respect your future Luna, I declared. She would be my Luna if she accepted me. Fuck, she would be my everything. She only had to wish so. Give me a chance. Say a single word. I heard someone clearing their throat and turned around. Tor. I didn't know he was here. I was too focused on arguing with those stupid mutts that I couldn't catch his approaching smell in the air. Aren't you everywhere? I asked, narrowing my eyes at him. But instead of mimicking my reactions, saying or doing anything to oppose or retort me, his lips curled up in a smile. Man, you are absolutely right. None of these males can hold a candle to Claire, he commented. Claire. After I woke up, I showered and went directly to the Platt Clinic. Sarah was back today, and we both would have an insanely busy day. But I wanted to stay with my mom as much as I could, make her understand that above all our differences, I was there for her, and I wouldn't leave. I was so glad we could finally talk, because in the last years, our talks were replaced by arguments, by hurt and pain. And that was only because she wasn't able to open up, and I also couldn't see beyond my own frustration and sensation that she thought I was only a source of disappointment to her. During my lunch break, Sarah and I were surprised by Tor showing up. Sarah almost jumped off her seat and went running towards Tor, happy as a little pup. I missed you, Tor, she said as she wrapped her arms around him. Sarah was a quite tall female, but she seemed very small close to that big alpha. I missed you too, Sarah he replied, before placing a kiss on the top of her head. I was so happy those two had each other in their lives. He was the pup Sarah never had, and she was like a mom to him. Claire. He flashed me a small smile. Tor, I am so sorry for what happened yesterday. The way Hunter behaved, I should have talked to you sooner, but I didn't have any time, I uttered, looking down for a moment. Yeah, don't worry. He replied. I'm also very sorry for snapping at you when you were only trying to help me. I was so edgy, but nothing just to... F Don't worry, Claire. We are good. He added as he closed the distance between us and gave me a bear hug like he used to do since we were kids. It brought me back the warmness and the familiarity to have my friend back. I smiled at him. Actually, I also came here to talk to you. I heard Hunter talking to his Gamma and other wolves about you a bit less than an hour ago. Tor started. I didn't know Hunter's Gamma was here. I wondered what they were talking about and feared it wasn't something good. Maybe his pack was in trouble. Maybe Hunter changed his mind about us once again. I sighed deeply at this thought. I was right in guarding myself. Claire, I think he had a true change of heart and is being genuine in his words. The way he talked to the others, defending you and acknowledging... How great you are, Tor said. It was time for him to realize what he was missing. Sarah chimed in with hearty laughter. Stop, guys, I muttered half shyly. At first, I was worried and fearing that he would hurt your feelings once again, but now I am quite sure he meant it and he's working on becoming the mate you deserve. I really think he is willing to give you everything, all you should have as his mate in Luna. Tor added. I smiled at him and wrapped my arms around his torso. Thank you, Tor. My words were laced with emotion. For what? 
he asked, arching a brow and looked a bit confused. For your friendship, for always being there for me, I answered. I was so glad and relieved that what happened between us didn't affect our friendship. <laughs> of course, Claire. Before anything, you were my dear friend, and I only want you to be happy. I know that you can have a great love with your fated mate, now that he is changing, letting go of his traditionalist and stupid views, and finally seeing things for what they are, seeing you for what you are. I also want you to be happy, and I hope you can find your fated mate soon. I am sure the goddess matched you with an awesome she-wolf that will give you all the love you deserve, I said with a smile. I was right. Tor was never meant to be my lover. He meant to be a good friend, the best of friends, and I was so glad I could have him in my life. My puppies, Sarah giggled as she wrapped Tor and me in a hug. Chapter 39 Fighting Desire Claire I couldn't forgive Hunter that easily after everything he put me and even Hope through, but I also shouldn't deny myself and my wolf what we both wanted out of pettiness. Also, Hunter was really trying and being honest. He meant what he said about us being mates, being together in all ways. He's being a good boy, Hope joked in my mind. Should we go meet them after work today? No, I want to spend some time with my mom. Hunter and Max can wait until tomorrow morning, I replied to my wolf. They certainly can, she laughed in her cute wolf way. It was something between a laugh and a bark. I would give him a chance. It was decided, but I would take things slowly this time. Hope let out a muffled howl in my mind. I think she wasn't very happy about it, but that was the best thing to do. The rational thing to do. The next day, I went to the training grounds at 4.30, as I always do. Hunter was already there and once again shirtless. When he turned in my direction, I could feel my heartbeat increasing and my breath hitching in my throat for an instant. Why did he have to be that hot? I want to see Max, too, Hope pouted in my mind. I'm talking to him, Claire. He wants to see me as well. Her voice was pure excitement. But I don't even know when it will be possible. My wolf barked in frustration. We will make it possible soon, Hope. Claire. Hunter said as he walked towards me and wrapped me in his strong arms, pressing me against his muscular chest. Hunter, I replied, breathing his earthy scent in. I didn't know why at this time, but today... He had an even stronger effect on me, stronger than ever. Are you well? You look tired. He asked, cupping my face and taking a good look at my surely tired eyes. His words were filled with softness and concern, and it warmed my heart a little. When you are my Luna, you don't have to work that much, sweetie. He muttered in a cooing voice. Excuse me? I narrowed my eyes, putting some distance between us but he didn't let go of me out of his arms. That doesn't work like this, Hunter. I love my job and taking care of my patients. I will work as much as I deem reasonable. Claire. He inhaled deeply. I know you do. He pulled me further to his chest. I could feel a growl vibrating there. Hunter probably wanted to say something more, but he was holding himself to not upset me. He and Max definitely are alpha males. They are as reasonable as sugar hyper pups in full moon nights, Hope added, rolling her eyes. She was right. Alpha males are naturally a handful. I hope I find a way to conciliate everything, to bring all the pieces of my life together, when and if it actually works. Let's start, he said. We started stretching and running until it was time to spar. He made some moves towards me, but I kept my stance and blocked his approaching fist. I knew he was going very light on me, and he would only press his fist against my body instead of punching me. He and Tor had it in common. Alphas can be so careful due to their strong protective instincts. Now it was my time to make the next move. 
I went in his direction head first, but he laced my wrist with both arms and leaned me down in his arms, dipping me down and hovering his upper body over me, like he did last time we sparred. Our faces were so close that I could feel the warmth of his breath fanning over my face and making my own breath unsteady. Hope rumbled at this enticing sensation. Hunter set me back on my feet, making my wolf whimper at the loss of contact. He made his next move slowly and calculated like a very skilled and patient fighter, but instead of lunging towards me, he captured me in his arms once again, catching me off guard. Watch your left side, mate. You don't want to be swayed away. He rasped. Hunter leaned me further down, Without taking his gray eyes off mine, he lowered me slowly, almost sensually, until my back made contact with the mat. He hovered over me. His weight pressed against my body was pinning me down there, underneath him, immobile, at his mercy, and very aroused. His eyes trailed down to my lips as soft gasps left them. I ran my tongue across my bottom lip to reduce its dryness as Hunter's eyes followed my movement intently. Claire. He muttered as we locked eyes again. Soon his lips were crashing onto mine and I could feel his hardness poking my thigh. I parted the kiss. If I got lost in these distractions, this temptation wouldn't be able to shift my wolf to see her anytime soon. Yeah, you won't see me, but another wolf. A small, cute one, instead. If you keep up like this, we'll end up pupped. Hope laughed in my mind, but I dismissed her words. I didn't plan to get pupped anytime soon. Hope was the only new wolf I wanted to see in the next couple of years. No, we should stop it. We should spar now. My voice was filled with hesitance and carried the undertone of a moan. I wanted to spar, but I also wanted to be that close to him, feeling his lips on mine. My mind was torn. On the other hand, my body was pretty sure about what it wanted. Him. His touch. His kisses. His body pressed against mine. A soft moan crossed my parched lips. Spar, is it what you want? Hunter asked with a lopsided grin. Hunter, I don't know, I muttered. He cupped my face once again, and those gray eyes worked their magic, attracting me like two magnets. I couldn't resist that male. I caressed my lips against his, and that was all the sign he needed to start devouring me. He swirled his tongue inside my mouth and gave me a very passionate kiss. His face was hovering above mine after we ended our kiss. His eyes kept me hypnotized there. His gaze pinned me onto the mat. My breath was quivering, and a hot wave of desire traveled down my spine. Let's spar. I forced the words out of my mouth before I would end up changing my mind. Female, I can smell your arousal. He and Max said in unison. Hunter had a smirk on his face, and his eyes were shining, showing that Max was indeed restless. Oh yeah, Max is ready to pounce. I mean, pounce at us. Not in the fighting way, though, Hope added in my mind. I swallowed hard at Hunter's comment at the way his guttural voice made me feel raw for him. Hunter, I... Let's continue to spar. I sounded so breathy. No, we can't. Not with you smelling like this. All the males will be able to smell what is only mine. He husked. For some unknown reason, his possessive remark only aroused me further. Before I could say anything else, he stood up and scooped me up in his arms swiftly. What are you doing? I asked as my confusion and desire grew in equal amounts. I have to wash you before we resume sparring again, he said with a little grin. But I could feel that all his muscles were tense and his eyes didn't lose their edgy gleam. Alpha males. It's not so bad. I'm totally down for some action. My horny wolf was almost jumping inside my head. I only wanted to roll my eyes at her, but above anything, I missed his warmness, the sensation of being in his arms. It didn't mean I would give in that easily. At least, I hope so. But hope was of no help. Hunter moved fast, without losing his grasp on me. 
In no time, we were already in the pack house. More precisely, heading to his room. Hunter, I can't... just... I started, but he leaned his face closer to mine, rendering me speechless, lost in a thick cloud of desire. What? His expression was softer now that we were alone and no one else could smell me. You want it too, am I right? He asked against my lips. In an almost inaudible moan, left my parted lips before I pressed them against his. That was my response. I wanted it. He walked us to his bathroom and set me back on my feet. Raise your arms up, Claire. He said as he pulled the hem of my shirt up. Alpha, don't you get all bossy? I joked. He seriously wanted to wash me before going back to the training parlor. Why did I think he was kidding? He only chuckled at my words. I won't, but I have to wash you. He shot me a look that was half playful and half serious. I shook my head, but did what he said. He peeled my clothes off slowly, almost reverently, leaving me totally exposed to his hungry gaze. It was driving me crazy. Do you really have to do it? I asked, a little bit unbelieving. Even though I was enjoying it, I was feeling a bit different for the last couple of hours. My mind has been gradually overtaken by a warm and hazy cloud. I have to. I want to. I want you. He answered before he dug his mouth on the crook of my neck and placed a kiss on my mark spot. Hmm. One day I will mark you here, my sweetie. He muttered against my sensitive skin, making the hair on the back of my neck rise in a delicious shiver. My body was burning with sweet anticipation. When you allow me to? He added. He was really trying to be a better mate. An actual mate. He pulled his pants down and was only in his underwear. I could see his bulge, and I swallowed hard at it. It would be hard to resist him. But did I even want to resist? Chapter 40 Shower Steam Hunter I, and especially Max, couldn't let all the males around the training ground smell our females' arousal. She is only ours to smell, to taste, to feel, and pleasure. I couldn't understand why, but her smell was even stronger than before. It was drawing me to her. It was making all my wild and guttural instincts arise. My beast and I only wanted one thing. Have her. Mate her. I took her to my bathroom and bared her naked. I couldn't take my eyes off of her curves, her small but perky breasts. Claire was so beautiful. She looked more athletic now because of her constant training, but her feminine round curves were still there. After I was totally naked, I lifted my mate by her waist and carried her to the walk-in shower. She wrapped her legs around my waist. My cock was so close to her entrance, but still not quite there. My erection was throbbing painfully. I turned on the water and walked underneath it, letting it run down our naked bodies. The fact that our bodies were pressed together added steam to the warm water. I grabbed a handful of her wet chestnut brown hair and tilted her face up before I crashed my lips on hers in a rough and hot kiss, pressing her back against the wall. Claire surprised me by nibbling my bottom lip. She entangled her tongue with mine and matched my sensual movements as she pressed her body further onto mine. Claire gave it as she took it with as much passion and boldness. I found my match. How could I not see it before? I didn't want to take her like this, not yet. I had to pleasure her first, but having her that close to my dick was making it impossible. So I put her down to her feet. I grabbed a shower sponge and coated it with shower gel before running it from the arc of her neck to her navel, taking my own sweet time to trace the beautiful curves of her breast. She arched her back and moaned softly at it, grabbed my shoulders of support. I massaged her body clean until the sponge reached her mound. I looked up at Claire. Her eyes were clenched and her lips parted. Fuck. 
She looked so alluring in her pleasure. I moved it down to her sex, and she moaned in response. I massaged her folds for a moment before her hand stopped me. Stop, Hunter. We're going too far and too fast. I want to go slowly. She muttered, suddenly opening her eyes. Her voice broke with hesitation. I exhaled deeply and looked down at my painful and angry erection. You will have to take matters into your own hands again, Max sneered in my mind. That stupid animal. Fine. We will go as slowly as you want, sweetie. I won't let you down. You can trust me. I will prove myself with acts rather than words, as you said. I uttered, swallowing back my frustration. So close! But I wouldn't risk driving her away just for my pleasure. It didn't matter how urgently I craved and needed her. I had to make up for my mistakes and be better to her. Be better for her. Much better, Max added. Couldn't he just stop taunting me for a moment? I was glad it was working well, and she was giving me a chance. I thought she would have just shoved me away when I met her in the clinic. I hope Tyler doesn't ruin everything, Max muttered. He wouldn't dare. I am his alpha and his friend. Besides, what could he even do? I asked the wary wolf that was pacing around in my mind. Claire wrapped a towel around her naked body to my utter frustration. Even Max growled with disappointment at it. I have to change, and then let's have some breakfast. I'm starving. She told me as she collected her clothes on the floor. Her eyes traveled to my erection. It wasn't going down, not even a bit. I would have to do what Max suggested. Sure, sweetie. See you in the dining hall in twenty minutes. I asked, also glancing at my stupid heart on Sure. She answered, trying to contain a small smile. It wasn't funny, not at all. I came across Claire while we both were descending the stairs and we went to the dining hall together. When we arrived there, many curious pairs of eyes were fixed on us. Among them was Tyler's. Besides him, Stefano, Sunday, Floor, and even Adrian were there. Alpha, Tyler greeted me. He shifted his gaze to Claire, disapproval in his face. Omega, he greeted her, making me lose it. You will respect your future Luna, Tyler. You must call her Luna from now on and stop with this rank discrimination crap. I snapped at him. I was sick of his bullshit. The crap that he made me do, and further, believe in it too. But I wanted to, and I had to be better than that. I had to be brave and my own man, and face all the upcoming challenges with my Claire, my Luna. As soon as she actually accepts me as her mate and Alpha. Because I was certain of one thing, many challenges would be coming. But now, I was even more certain that everything was worth it to have her by my side. I was just calling her for what she is. He added, but I cut him off with a deep growl. I clenched my fists into tight balls. My hands were tingling to punch him again, and my eyes were glowing and burning holes in his face. Max and I were both enraged. Sorry, Alpha. He bared his neck in submission, casting his gaze down for a moment. Once again, he turned to Claire. Luna. The word left his mouth with a pang of bitterness. He would get used to it soon. I was glad that I could reclaim my life and make my own decisions based on what I wanted and deemed right for a change. By putting myself first and being a better wolf and a better alpha, I would also end up benefiting my pack. How could I have been so short-sighted before? Claire entangled her fingers with mine and looked up at me. Don't. Let it go. It's not worth it. She muttered softly. Of course. She and... Everyone in the damn room could feel the rage rolling off my body in waves. She was right. Having a discussion with my beta in front of the high-ranked members of many different packs wouldn't be of any help for the Black Forest pack. That was something that Taylor and I had to discuss in a one-on-one -on -one way, as Alpha and Beta and his friends. Adrian walked towards me. She had a defiant look. 
Once again, I wondered what she was doing here. That female was everywhere lately. I knew she wasn't very fond of me. Not the least. She took one step closer, her hazel eyes burning with determination. I can't believe what you did to Katie. Shame on you. She deserves much better than you and this female as well. Adrian said, eyeing Claire. I'm glad we agree on it. My mate replied with a small smile. I looked at Claire and shook my head. I deserved it. So this is the she-wolf you left Katie for? Adrian added. I was anticipating that she would comment on Claire's rank, and it was starting to make my blood boil. I clenched my fists in balls. She seems great, and she is smart enough to know you are way out of her league. Adrian added, smiling at Claire. Max let out a low growl, but on the other hand, he felt proud of the female by our side. I should be angrier. Adrian did offend me once again, but she complimented my Claire. That was more important. My mate's lips curled up in a small smile. Nice to meet you. I'm Claire. Nice to meet you, too. I am Audrain. She wolf smiled. We were interrupted by Tor when he entered the room looking quite swiftly, his face contorted in a frown and tension radiating from his Alpha aura. Alpha Fergus requested an Alpha's meeting. It should start in a couple of hours. They are only waiting for all the Alphas to arrive here. All Alphas and Lunas were summoned, he said, to our general surprise. It was quite rare that an Alpha, who wasn't the Alpha King, would call for an emergency meeting like this, all of a sudden. I believe it only happened once before, and it was only because we were facing a massive attack of vampires and other disgusting traffickers that were kidnapping weak wolves and pups to use as their blood bags or sell in the underworld's market. And you as well, Claire. Your presence was specifically requested, Tor added, looking at Claire. Claire looked between the two of us, confusion evident on her face. I had no concrete answers. Apparently Tor didn't have any either. It was even more unexpected. Fergus, that obnoxious wolf. I knew how much he looked down at Omegas. I should have seen it coming. But it was rather too fast. Unpredictably too fast. I hadn't consolidated my mate bond with Claire yet. She was still not marked. Besides, I haven't announced to anyone that I was planning to take her as my Luna. She didn't even confirm she would accept me as her mate. How did Fergus get to know about my intentions? To my utter shock, Fergus, his Luna, and Katie entered the room. Hunter, I knew I would find you here, he said with a taunting smile. Katie, she was the one to start it to tell everything to him. The first challenge for me and my sweetie was already coming. Claire squeezed my hand in reassurance. My small and delicate-looking female wasn't afraid. She was up for the fight, and so was I. I will fight for you. For us. For my Luna. Chapter 41 Alpha Fergus Sir... That is your little Omega. He looked at me and Claire, a mocking smile on his face. I see why I cut him off with the most enraged growl that had ever left my mouth. A growl that normally I could only muster in Max's form. Don't you dare to say anything against her or even about her. I was very unsettled and Max was pacing restlessly in my head. Easy, Hunter. I'm not to say anything now. Everything that is to be said can wait until the meeting. Then we will discuss and solve all our issues. Fergus added. The stupid smile didn't fade from his lips. I only wanted to punch it away. I knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to prevent me from making Claire my Luna. There was no werewolf law regarding any prohibition of an Alpha making an Omega, or anyone else for the matter, his Luna. However, this had never happened before. 
All alphas, male and female ones, only mated with ones of alpha and beta blood. Until no, Max added in my head. Things were about to change in this realm. Let's put him in his place, Hunter, Max told me. He wanted to bounce at Fergus right there and then, desperately. I would be lying if I said I didn't want that, too. For a long time, he was the most obnoxious of the Alphas, with his filthy comments and disrespectful ways. Let's go, Hunter. We don't need this. He doesn't matter. And we can also save our words for the meeting, to the king and queen. Claire told me, as her gaze shifted between Fergus and me. The prick was smiling at my Luna, and I could see a hint of lust in his dark eyes. If only, if only, I could attack him. He was so disgusting that he was looking at Claire like this in front of his own Luna, his fated mate, and the mother of his pup. He didn't deserve to be an Alpha. He was a shame for all Alphas of this realm. But no one ever did anything about it, not even the king. I took Claire by her hand and we went out of the main dining hall. She was right. I won't let him bully me, but I also won't let him win and cause the conflict he's aiming for. We shouldn't give him that. We shouldn't give him anything. Claire said, as she tilted my face slightly towards hers. We. <laughs> I liked how it sounded. <laughs> Does it mean you made up your mind and decide to give me a chance, Claire? I had to hear the words coming from her mouth. Claire, the way Hunter's beta was looking at me made a cold shiver run down my spine. Why does he feel such an intense repulsion towards me? Only because of my rank? Or maybe there's something else there. I wondered why. I haven't ever exchanged as much as a word with him. He couldn't have any feud with me. It wasn't even possible. I didn't understand it. On the other hand, the way Alpha Fergus looked at me was something else. Equally, if not even more disturbing. It held mockery, but also some sort of lust. He looked at me as if I wasn't even a person, only a piece of flesh to be consumed, an object to be used, or maybe a ridiculous incident to be the aim of jokes and scorn. I hated this kind of glare and this kind of people. The ones who reduce a person to something less than what their human and wolf dignity entitles them to. His Luna had a blank look on her face, and the girl that came with them only looked a tad confused, as if she didn't even know what she was doing there. I was glad that we walked away from that room, from all those people. I won't let him bully me, but I also won't let him win and cause the conflict or argument he's aiming for. We shouldn't give him that. We shouldn't give him anything, I told Hunter, as I cupped his face gently for a fraction of a second, intending to attract his attention. He also looked quite thoughtful. He was probably pondering about the later events and the next one, the meeting. <laughs> Does it mean you made up your mind and decide to give me a chance, Claire? He asked in a seductive tone. Sly male. I may give you a chance, but you will have to court me first, I replied with my own teasing smile. Two could play this game. If you want me, you would have to come for me, Alpha, and I'm not an easy hunt. Hope rumbled in contentment at this thought. My wolf was also not planning to become anyone's easy prey. I am a hard one and worth it, and I do bite, she mumbled as she tilted her snout up slightly. I will do it. I will do anything, Claire. Hunter replied, wrapping his arms around my waist and bringing my body towards his. You don't have to worry about the meeting. I don't really know how the other alphas will react and if it would be possible to make it work. But there are always other ways. He told me as he caressed my face with the back of his hand. 
I wondered what other ways he was considering. He seemed quite tense and worried himself. My starving stomach complained, releasing a funny noise, which made Hunter chuckle lightly. First of all, we have to eat something, sweetie. He added. After eating, I went back to work. I was distracted, organizing the files and records of today's patients when Sarah's voice brought me to reality. The meeting will start in a couple of hours. The Alpha King didn't tell me much about it, only that Fergus called for this meeting suddenly, saying that the security and well-being of the whole realm could be endangered if we don't take an action soon. She told me, and she gave me a look of sympathy. It sounded overdramatic, to be honest. It's about me, I muttered. Hunter and I were still not a couple. Not entirely. But everything was already getting chaotic. Our mates, our happiness, are worth it, Claire. Don't let that flea-infested alpha tell you otherwise, Hope said with a little bark. She always managed to impress me more and more every time with the extent of her fighting spirit. I won't, Hope. The only person who can set me apart from Hunter is himself, his poor behavior. If he wants to be with me, and we are on it together, we may face the wrath of six realms, and even the skies, but I will fight for us, I answered to her contentment. We will, Hope added. It's not only about you, but also about Fergus and some of the other Alpha's hunger for power— it's about prejudice and a rank system that is discriminatory and doesn't make sense at all. When this Alpha and the others of his vile kind do something, it's mostly about themselves, Sarah explained as she placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. I breathed deeply. Of course it was about Fergus himself. For what I heard about him, he was a selfish, close-minded, and short-sighted wolf. I will be there with you, as the Luna Queen's beta. It is also my duty to attend such meetings. The Alpha King was brooding about it. This time not even I could read his expression and catch what he has in mind, or guess what he'll do. But our Luna Queen, she won't let unfairness prevail. She won't let ambition and selfishness overpower love. I hope the King listens to her this time. Sarah added with a deep exhale. She was a very close friend to the king and the Luna Queen's beta. But there was so much she could do. The Alpha King was an extremely dominant and stubborn male, to such an extent that sometimes not even the queen's intervention could help. I would be lying if I said I wasn't quite nervous about what was about to happen in this meeting. But I didn't plan on stepping away or leaving my mate, not even if a bunch of old and powerful alphas wanted me to. Hope and I were ready to fight. Chapter 42 Alpha's Meeting Hunter Are you sure you want to do it, Hunter? Max asked, for the third time. He was restless, pacing around my head and giving me headaches. If it comes to it, if it's the only choice, yes, I am sure, I replied to my fidgety wolf. I agree with you. If it's the only way, I would do it. I would do it in a blink of an eye. However, I hope we wouldn't have to do it. I went to pick up Claire at the clinic... Maybe I was being overprotective, but I didn't want her rumbling around alone when Fergus was here in the palace. I didn't trust him at all, especially after the way I saw him looking at my mate. I wondered what he has to win with this meeting, because I was not naive to think he did it without an agenda, because everything he does involves mainly his gain, his self-interest. Let's bite his head off! Max let out a scary maniac laugh. He was going mad, but I also never wanted to have to see that filthy old alpha again, Fergus. We can't do anything against him. You know that the punishment for injuring or killing a fellow alpha is life imprisonment or banishment. That wouldn't be the best for us in any context. It certainly wouldn't be the best for Claire and Hope. We would lose them. 
I tried to argue with my unsettled wolf. Look who is showing he is the rational one for a change, Max mocked. Stupid animal. When I arrived at the clinic, I entered it directly, and the first thing I did was to take Claire's small frame in my embrace, and she wrapped her arms around me. My sweetie, I breathed in a lungful of her scent to calm me and mad Max down. How are you? <laughs> Nervous? I asked. Yes, a bit. Claire replied with a tight and tired smile. She has already been through so much, mostly because of me. I didn't want her to go through any more trouble and stress. I pressed a kiss on the top of her brown hair and pulled her to my chest for a moment more, trying to comfort her and myself as much as I could. I took her hand in mine, and we went down to the ground floor without exchanging any words. We went to the Golden Room, the venue of the meeting. It wasn't the biggest meeting room around, but it was the fanciest and most formal one, where alphas and sometimes their lunas would sit around a round table and discuss the most important matters in the realm. A solemn and formal place. Claire was gazing around the richly decorated room, the wooden-carved ceiling, and the golden-colored, very long curtains. She looked a bit surprised at it. Normally, only Alphas, Lunas, and some Betas came to this place, so it was surely Claire's first time here. This place didn't look like any of the chambers in this castle. Nothing here was extra fancy and full of unnecessary details, as in most of the royal palaces in the other realms especially the Wizard King's Castle, which is well known for its luxury and lavish decoration. We werewolves didn't need those excesses of frou-frou. Thus, this meeting room indeed left a strong impression. We took our seats beside each other. My mate squeezed my hand, and I flashed her a reassuring look, even though I didn't feel that secure myself. But I knew it would work one way or another. I wouldn't lose my mate, not now that I could finally open myself to her and to our love. It didn't matter what I had to sacrifice for it. The Alpha King, his queen, the royal Beta, and Sarah entered the room and also took their seats swiftly. The other Alphas and Lunas followed suit, and the royal Beta started speaking. Good afternoon to all Alphas, Lunas, Beta Sarah, and Miss Claire Valoy. We are here today to discuss about the mating between Alpha Hunter and Claire Valoy. First, we are to listen to the claimant, the one who brought the issue in discussion before us, Alpha Fergus. After that, we will listen to the other Alphas and Lunas only at the end of the procedure. Alpha Hunter and Claire will have their turn to make their pleas and express their counter-arguments. No one should interrupt the order of this procedure or talk out of their turn, except if the Alpha King or Luna Queen so allows, the royal beta explained. They followed a quite structured process for this kind of hearing and decision-making. It felt more like Claire and I were before a court than among a council of Alphas and Lunas, a court where almost all those present were about to become our prosecutors and judges at the same time. If only Alpha Fergus would have gotten to know about it after Claire and I had already consolidated our bond, mate, and marked each other, this whole shit could have been avoided. But Katie had to act out of scorn and tell him everything. Hell damn it! After concluding his introductory speech, the royal beta glanced at Claire and me with a look of sympathy. Please start explaining your case. Why did you request such a meeting suddenly? The Alpha King asked Fergus as he stared at him. The King wasn't a wolf of many or unnecessary words, and he didn't seem pleased to be summoned by Fergus like this. I called this meeting because a pressing issue came to my knowledge, Alpha King. 
I heard that Alpha Hunter was planning to take an Omega as his mate and Luna, he announced. Some Alphas and Lunas around the room gasped inadvertently. Others only looked surprised, but contained their reactions. My eyes shifted to Claire. She didn't look frightened by this overwhelming situation. Her warm eyes held determination. She can't be a Luna. She will make the Black Forest Pack a weakness, a weak link, an unprotected and loose border from where rogue vampires and traffickers can enter our realm and abduct our pups and our Omega Maids. That can't happen. This Omega won't only endanger and destroy a flourishing pack. She will be the dismay of our entire realm, he stated, eyeing Claire in his characteristic, disrespectful way. I felt a low growl build in my chest, but Claire squeezed my hand, grounding Max and me a bit. What do you suggest, Fergus? the Alpha King asked, half impatiently. He also was reaching his limit regarding Fergus's attitude like all of us. The Black Forest Pack must belong to a strong Alpha, one who is mated to an adequate Luna, has the ability, power, and experience to manage it, to rule over it. This pack has some of the best lands in the realm, important borders and resources. It would be irresponsible to keep it in the hands of a wolf who dares to call himself Alpha when he is too weak to control his own impulses and desires, when he offends a soul and this realm by intending to make his sex maid a lower omega for Luna. A feral and strong growl erupted from a deep place inside me. Pure rage made my body tremble, and I could feel my nails elongating and taking the form of Max's claws. Claire. Hunter let out a soul-piercing growl at it. I placed my hand on his thigh, trying to calm him down, but it wasn't working. Hunter, please, I murmured, but he didn't hear. I was afraid he would end up jumping off his seat and launching at Alpha Fergus at any minute. It would only worsen his, our situation, and prove Alpha Fergus's point, showing that Hunter couldn't control himself. Probably it was why he tried to provoke Hunter in such a way. Or maybe it's because he's a repulsive male, Hope added in my mind. I tried to call Hunter again, but it seemed like he wasn't even listening. He was engulfed by a thick cloud of wrath, and no words could penetrate it. He was already preparing to stand up. Hunter, don't, I said, but the words didn't leave my mouth. They came from somewhere else. He turned in my direction and looked startled at me, sitting back and shifting, aggravated in his seat. But now his gaze didn't hold rage only. He was also half surprised. I mind-linked him. It was the first time, and another sign that our hope was indeed coming to the surface. Werewolves could only mind-link each other using their wolves' magic, and since us Omegas normally have our wolves buried deep inside our minds, we couldn't mind-link. Besides, as a member of the Royal Pack, I would be able to mind-link anyone in the realm. That is one of the main advantages of belonging to this pack something that only wolves of this pack were able to do. Of course, if we open mind link channel with someone from other packs, they would be able to reply to us, or so I've learned in my science books. Claire, hope. He murmured. His voice raw but calmer resonated inside my mind. Feeling him mind linking me for the first time, made a tingling sensation arise in the corners of my head. A smile found its way to my tense lips. Don't fall for it. Alpha Fergus is only trying to lead you into a trap. For us to win this, 
You have to show that you are not what he is claiming you are, I said in his mind. He took my hand in his much bigger one and intertwined our fingers. His claws had already retracted, and the menacing gleam in his eyes was already gone. I looked at Tor. Even he was looking furious. His pupils were dilating and his eyes were glowing green. His wolf also loathed Fergus's words. My eyes traveled to the Alpha King. All the eyes were on him. Everyone was waiting for his next words. However, he only sat back shifting on his chair after letting out a small sneer. The queen was looking at him. Her gaze carried a question. He looked back at her, without saying a word. Probably they were mind-linking each other. As we are gathered here today to discuss as a community, we shall now hear what the others have to say. The queen's voice was soft and melodic, but it carried some resolve. Why does he want to make an Omega his mate? Is it some kind of joke? One of the young alphas, who was sat beside Tor, asked, eyeing Hunter and me, I think this alpha's name was Blake. I felt Hunter's muscles tensing under my palm that was resting on his knee, but he successfully held it back. We shouldn't give these rankest wolves arguments to use against us. She is his fated mate, and every wolf has the right to be with the one the goddess chose for him or her, the one who holds the other part of their soul, regardless of any ranks. Tor said, his normally calm voice carried a hint of anger. Some expressions changed around the room, and some of the wolves even gasped audibly. She is his fated mate. It is only natural that they stay together, and she becomes his Luna. Who are we to question the goddess's plans? Luna Michelle asked, and her alpha looked at her with love and pride in his eyes. I heard she was a remarkable and kind Luna. The goddess isn't perfect, as many claim. She's made plenty of mistakes. What about what she did with King Magnus and King Augustus? She created havoc among the realms with her poor, promiscuous choices, and after that, she still keeps punishing us for the war that she herself enticed. What about the child, the infant, she abandoned out of a frivolous impulse. Fergus uttered as he stood up from his seat. I was shocked by his words about the goddess, as I was by his audacity to say them before the Alpha King. All eyes shifted from him to the king. Chapter 43 Forbidden Mating Hunter This meeting and their words were unsettling Max and me a lot. But Claire was right, and we had to keep our fury under control. Only she could make me grounded like this while facing so much indignity as I boiled with an overwhelming rage. Claire is more Luna material than any ranked she wolf! Max remarked, and this time I must concede, he was actually right. Usually, in these kinds of meetings, the Alpha King would state his decision and his word would become the law. That was before he found his Luna. She wanted to make the whole process more democratic. However, no wolf would dare to challenge the King's words or wishes, democracy or not. Anyway, the Luna improved the processes in the realm a lot, increasing dialogues and making changes that affected directly the wolves who needed most, especially pups and omegas. The goddess is imperfect, as many claim. She has made plenty of mistakes. What about what she did with King Magnus and King Augustus? She created havoc among the realms with her poor promiscuous choices, and after that she still keeps punishing us for the war that she herself enticed. 
What about the child, the infant, she abandoned out of a frivolous impulse? Fergus said, He was such an idiot. An idiot who was trying to usurp my pack from me. That was his secret agenda. I will bite his head off. Max growled in my head. It sounded very tempting, but I knew better than that. Enough! <laughs> the Alpha King's powerful growl made the walls tremble and all of us, except his Luna, bared our necks in submission inadvertently. As a descendant of the goddess, at least according to the legends, he didn't approve of that prick's words. His eyes were burning holes in Fergus. That joke of an alpha was almost whimpering at the amount of power and anger rolling off the alpha of the alphas in waves and directed towards him. You won't disrespect the goddess like this, Fergus, he commanded with another almighty growl. I... I am sorry, Alpha. I didn't intend to disrespect anyone. I just... I meant that we never know the goddess's plans. She, in her godly wisdom, hacks in mysterious ways. Maybe she intended for Hunter to be with his little Omega maid and step down from the Alpha position, leaving the Black Forest pack in the capable hands of another Alpha and... Fergus trailed off, visibly making a great effort to not stumble. He was a huge idiot to even consider that it was tolerable to offend the goddess before the king. However, it was a good thing for Claire and me, for us. After all, the king would disregard all of Fergus's previous foolish words. The Alpha King only stared at him for a few seconds and Fergus resumed, trembling again. Or maybe Hunter should be prevented to make this Omega's mate and Luna and keep his pack. He did a good job there. It all shouldn't be ruined by an Omega. Blake, the young alpha besides Tor, opened his stupid mouth again. I had to take deep breaths and squeeze Claire's hand to keep Max at bay, to keep myself and my own rage under control. It seems much more reasonable than to strip an Alpha from his title and pack, Alpha Kane said patiently. The situation took the turn I had foreseen. I knew they would end up proposing that. They're all insane if they think we would leave our females, Max barked and raged inside my mind. I agreed with him, and we already knew what to do. Claire. Fergus was right in one single thing in his overdramatic speech. Having an Omega as a Luna in an important pack that has borders with the lands of our century-long enemies, the Vampire Realm, is asking to be attacked. Rogue vampires and even the ones who belong to clans would see it as an opportunity to enter our realm I'll steal our goods and recourses. Worse than that, hurt and kidnap the most vulnerable among our population. Pops, omegas, and even pregnant females who can't shift to their wolves and use them as blood bags. We, as alphas, are here reunited because we are responsible for the whole realm. Not only our individual packs... Hence, we must ensure the safety of all the wolves living in this realm. Alpha Cain said calmly, formally as his gaze shifted to all the wolves around. I have seen him before, heard of him. He was known to be a very old and wise Alpha. My heart was racing anxiously at his words, contrarily to Alpha Fergus. Alpha Cain was a reasonable wolf and some of his arguments even made sense to a certain extent. I swallowed the lump that formed in my throat and looked at Hunter. He looked even tenser than before. His muscles were so tense that they felt hard as steel. 
There were even veins bulging on his handsome face. For this purpose, we can't permit having a weak and vulnerable border. If one pack fall, all the other packs will follow. Alpha Hunter showed that he was able to protect his borders, contrary to his late father. His late father's downfall due to his weakness towards his selfish impulses and desires. That was his darkness and the ruin of his pack. We can't allow it to happen again. This time things could escalate even quicker, and not only affect one pack, but all thirteen of them. As Alphas, we have sworn to protect the wolves under our ruling. And by allowing Alpha Hunter to mate with the Omega, fated mate or not, is acting in breach of such an oath. Alpha Kane added, I didn't know anything about Hunter's father and what he did to his pack. I was a bit startled with this information. I looked at him. His eyes were glowing. Max was on the surface, but it wasn't fury that was radiating from his body. He was growing desperate, and so was I. My eyes traveled around the room. Many wolves around were nodding at Alpha Kane's words. My eyes finally met Tor's, and I saw a look of hopelessness on his face. I looked at Sarah. She also seemed very unsettled. Her face contorted with sadness and aggravation. Even the Luna Queen looked a bit anxious. Oh, goddess. I couldn't lose my mate. My hunter, now that we had found each other again, now that I decided to give him a chance, that I was falling in love with him every heartbeat more. Alpha Hunter must be stronger than his late father and not fall into his desires. Apparently, he isn't able to do it by himself. He can't find the determination to do it in himself, due to the strong spell and lure of the mate bond, which can make the strongest and most loyal Alpha weaker. We have to intervene and safeguard his best interest and the best interest of the Black Forest Pack. We have to free him from the blindfold that won't allow him to see things in a clear and objective way. We have to free him from his mate bond with this Omega female. Alpha Kane said, projecting his voice in an eloquent way. I could feel my heart hammering against my chest. I felt as if I could vomit out my desperate heart. I didn't think Hunter was with me because he was blinded by the bond. I didn't believe these words. I'm not. It's the extreme opposite of that. For the first time, I can see things clearly. For the first time, I am absolutely sure of what, who, I want more than anything. He muttered in my mind. How could he catch on to my thoughts as if we weren't inside each other's thoughts already? It would only happen after we consolidate our bond. Mark and mate. If we consolidate our bond. I told him, Claire, I don't want you to have any doubt because I don't. I know that they can be two tailheads sometimes, but they love us. They love us with open eyes because they chose to. Hope muttered. I could see the sadness in her face, but her words were full of certainty. I know they do. I replied as I bit my bottom lip intending to contain my tears, my cry of fear due to our current predicament, but also because of tenderness, because I could feel Hunter's love. I was afraid to the core. They were planning to break my bond with Hunter. How could they? They won't, Claire. They won't break our bond. They won't separate us. I won't allow them. Never. Hunter's voice in my mind was raw anger and desperation. Alpha Kane's next words brought me out of my mind and mental conversations. We can't ever fully understand what the goddess's plans are. That is beyond our comprehension. However, we must know what to do. What is the wiser decision to take? Always putting our pack, our packs, 
and realm first. With that in mind, we should break the bond between Alpha Hunter and his fated mate. This time, Hunter couldn't contain the soul-piercing growl that left his throat. Silence! No more growling! The Alpha King's words were an irrevocable order that no wolf would disobey, not even if they tried. Hunter bared his neck at the king as Max submitted to the king's wolf. Poor Max. I squeezed Hunter's hand trying to reassure him, even though I knew that no reassurance would be enough at this ominous moment. That is absurd! How would that even be possible to be done? Tor's voice was raw and piercing like a lash. We can't force a fellow Alpha to break his bond. To say the ritualistic words, it won't work. It would offend his dignity as an Alpha, the very nature of his wolf, and everything his title and position entitles. For the same reason, we can't force Alpha Hunter to take a female as his chosen mate, and this way sever his bond with the Omega by creating a new bond with a chosen mate. However, the same doesn't apply to the Omega. We could order her to take another mate, a chosen one, and after they mate and mark, her bond with Alpha Hunter would be automatically broken. The mate and mark should occur as soon as possible, so that we don't provoke any more pain than what is unavoidable to Alpha Hunter. Alpha Kane answered. His words sent a chilling feeling of panic across my whole body, and at the same time, I felt a dizzying and hot sensation throbbing in my head. They were considering forcing me to mate and mark with another male. Most of the Alphas around had expressions of agreement. They didn't stop nodding at Alpha Kane's words. I looked at Hunter. His face was flushed, contorted in pain. The veins in his jaw and forehead were bulging. He was boiling, suffocating, and he couldn't even growl due to the Alpha King's command. Was this the end of our bond? Chapter 44 Breaking the Bond, Breaking the Heart Claire No! That will never happen! You won't force my female to mate and mark with another male! Hunter barked out as he stood up, almost with a jump. He looked as if he was about to explode, about to launch at someone, at Alpha Kane, at the king himself. That isn't for you to decide. Take your seat now. The Alpha ordered. Maybe I can't decide that. It's up to all the Alphas and ultimately to you, the King, to decide it. To decide to forbid an Alpha from taking an Omega as his mate. It's your right to decide it. I could see that Hunter was making a great effort to remain as level-headed as possible, but his body was still trembling slightly and radiating hot waves of fury. However, I am stepping out of my Alpha position. Hence, there is no more decision to be taken or anything that could justify the prohibition of me taking Claire as my mate. Gasps, shocked faces, and even low growls echoed through the room in reaction to Hunter's words. I, too, was one of them gasping and in utter shock. I couldn't believe he was even proposing it. I closed my gaping mouth and my eyes traveled to him once again. It was a great sacrifice. I knew that Hunter loved his pack and how dedicated he was to it. Even Taj, the friendly Omega I met in his pack, told me many times that he was a great Alpha, but he was willing to give up all of it to be with me? My heart swollen and clenched at the same time. Awe, love, and sympathy overwhelmed my mind. He couldn't do it. No. You can't do this, Hunter, I murmured to his ears only. I couldn't let him give up his pack, his wolves, his life like this. Yes, I can, and I will, he replied, his gray eyes looking intently at me, burning with rage, hopelessness, and love. 
This little female is smarter than you, Hunter. You can't give up on your pack for an Omega. That is ridiculous. Alpha Blake said. Of course they all heard me whispering to Hunter. What else could I expect in a room full of Alphas? They have very acute hearing, even more enhanced than other wolves. Hunter's chest was vibrating violently with another suffocated growl. Don't talk about my mate like this. It's my decision to make. Hunter told him. His voice sounded like a lash. I won't tolerate you talking out of your turn anymore, Hunter. Are we clear? The Alpha King intervened. He was a male that no one would dare to defy. Yes, Alpha. Hunter muttered. Hunter could do it. It's his right. But we should be able to find another solution. As you all know, he is a very good Alpha. He did a lot for his pack. He shouldn't lose his pack, and more than that, his pack can't lose him. Besides, there is nothing in the werewolf law preventing an Alpha to take an Omega or whoever they want as their mate in Luna, which makes this whole discussion senseless. Tor remarked tensely. I could see his shoulders stiffening even from the place I was. I also could see in his light green eyes how bad he was feeling for me, for Hunter. Tor was an amazing friend, the best anyone could ask for. I hope his words wouldn't go unheard. In our time to talk, we will tell this Alpha's a good something. My feisty hope affirmed in my mind. She was angry, sad, afraid, and so was I. My heart was breaking. It's not only about the letter of the law, but also about making decisions and even sacrifices to protect our packs and our realm. Besides, the law of nature comes before the werewolf law, and according to nature, the right thing is an alpha mating with someone of alpha or beta blood. A gamma blood is a tolerable exception but nothing lesser than that. Alpha Kane uttered in a controlled but an eloquent manner. Forcing a female to be with a male she doesn't want is brutal, barbaric even. We can't reduce ourselves to it. We can't impose this kind of burden on anyone. Tor retorted, contrary to Alpha Kane, all the words my friend uttered sounded so earnest and heartfelt laced with emotion. She is an Omega. She is no one. Alpha Fergus cut Tor off. He was indeed a cruel and disgusting creature. I felt tears well up in my eyes, but I held them back. I won't let this male smell my cries and know that he is hurting me. I won't give him that. Don't mind him. He's an idiot. Hope tried to soothe me but I knew his words hurt her as well. Hunter's body was convulsing, burning, flushed with pure wrath. I enlaced my fingers with his. Hunter, I want you. I will fight for you. We will find another way, a way in which you won't need to give up on your pack. I murmured in his mind as I rubbed soothing circles on the back of his hand. I had to hold on to hopes, even while facing fear and desperation, I had to keep hoping for our wolves, for him and myself. We can't impose this on anyone regardless of ranks. That's even too cruel to be allowed as a punishment, and Claire shouldn't be punished. She didn't do anything wrong. She is a remarkable female, a nurse, a fighter, a loyal and brave wolf. She should be praised, not punished. Tor added, ignoring Alpha Fergus's words. Alpha Fergus burst off in a burst of loud laughter. Enough! Respect this place, this meeting, and the other Alphas and Lunas. Fergus, your behavior is unacceptable. This is not a circus, and I am not a clone. The Alpha King was pure rage. I saw his Luna wrapping her hand around his arm in an attempt to calm him down. He turned to look at her and let out a sharp exhale. 
Her look was soothing, like a balm. I think they were mind-linking for a moment. Alpha Fergus, your behavior today has been unacceptable. You are showing great disrespect toward all of us. The goddess, and especially Claire. That is not the kind of behavior that fits a leader. An alpha. You won't disregard any of my wolves like this. Please leave this room. After a decision about Claire and Hunter is taken, we will discuss if you are still fit to hold your position as an alpha. The queen's soft and melodic voice resounded with resolution. Fergus gaped at her. He was paralyzed like a statue and looked beyond shocked. Fergus, you heard my Luna. Leave this room now. The Alpha King commanded. A pale Alpha Fergus did what the king said. I was happy the Luna Queen intervened. This male was horrible. Wolves like him, filled with prejudice and hatred, who look at others as if they were less than a person because of their rank, are the biggest plague of this realm. Discrimination is a painful and great form of evil. I know this well. Let's resume our discussion, the royal beta said, in an attempt to placate the spirits of everyone in the room. Hunter, I had already talked to Max about this possibility, and we both had no hesitancies, not a single doubt. We would renounce my pack, my title, and my position as Alpha to be with Claire. I couldn't be a good Alpha, a true Alpha, for my pack without her anyway. That is what I have learned in the last two years. It took a long time, but I could finally see it clearly. I couldn't be without Claire. I couldn't, in any circumstances, allow them to proceed with the disgusting and criminal idea Alpha Kane suggested forcing Claire to take a chosen mate, Mark, and mate with another male. Kane. He was considered a good alpha, a smart and good strategist. However, he had the same level of empathy as an insect. I wanted to beat him. I wanted to shut his mouth up. Max wanted to take control, shift, and silence his vile words. What they were considering doing to my mate made my heart pang painfully and my blood boil in a before-unknown level of fury. I knew that the decision of having Claire as my mate and making her my Luna would lead to many challenges, but even hearing their words was too much for me. Max was growling and whimpering insanely in my head. He was feeling helpless. There wasn't anything he could do right now. I... We couldn't even growl, and I only felt as if my body would explode in pieces of rage and pain. It was torture. I was glad that Fergus, that fucking prick, was shoved out of the room. Now the discussion could be more civilized. Does anyone have anything else to add? The royal beta asked, eyeing all the wolves around. I still think that we should respect the goddess's wishes and plans, as Alpha Kane said. We don't know for sure what her plans are. That is why we can't ignore that by matching Alpha Hunter and Claire, intertwining their souls in one, she intended them to be together. She intended Claire to be the Luna of the Black Forest back. It is the natural conclusion to be drawn from the fact that they were mated by the goddess and the fates. Luna Michelle's words calmed Max and me a tad. I am not an Alpha or a Luna, but I am asking for the King and Queen's permission to say some words, Sarah said, gazing at the royal couple. Permission to... The King started. Permission conceded. The Luna Queen cut her maid off and he looked at her a bit startled. She looked at him for a second longer and he nodded at her. I wished I could know what she said through the mind link to appease the king's astonishment. Thank you, Luna Lee. Sarah had a tight smile, although her face was contorted with pure tension. We shouldn't consider rank something that can prevent wolves from doing things. 
it of course makes it all difficult since omegas are naturally and biologically more submissive and physically weaker these natural conditions can't be overcome with hard work a strong mind bravery lots of effort and hope that is what i witnessed with my own eyes by seeing the development of claire vilos the young female here before us that some insisted on calling the omega in the last a bit less than fifteen years i watched claire flourish fight become stronger and overcome all her natural limitations she is an example that a strong will can challenge nature itself she became the first so-called omega to be a medical assistant and later on a nurse she sparred trained every morning for hours the same amount of time that not even some alphas and most betas do she did it before starting her workday she insisted she didn't give up she kept trying even though she didn't achieve results easily as alphas and betas do due to their enabling biology she already can listen to her wolf and even growl if this female is not able to be the luna of the black forest pack i don't know who could be everyone went silent at sarah's words no gasps no growls only stunned faces they didn't expect my claire to be that extraordinary that incredible she is still an omega and she is still wolfless you said she can see her wolf not shift to its farm alpha blake stated that stupid brat it's easy for you to speak like this alpha for you shifting came naturally when you reached puberty for claire it has been the fruit of her incessant effort and commitment those are qualities that a luna a great one for that matter is supposed to have she is doing remarkably fast progress something that i'm not sure if you sarah's words were laced with a wave of uncharacteristic anger the alpha king cut her off sarah he growled sorry alpha she murmured casting her gaze down for a moment the king gave her a look alpha hunter shouldn't yield his alpha position and pack he can't see it clearly right now the lure of the mate bond is clouding his judgment we must step up and help a fellow alpha alpha kane stated in his annoyingly formal tone they couldn't do it i wouldn't allow them to regardless of what i had to do even if i had to go rogue i wouldn't let them separate me from my claire above all i won't ever allow them to force her to take a mail or force her to do anything for the matter i would die before it happened does anyone else have anything to say about the matter in discussion the royal beta asked no one said a word so miss claire valoy alpha hunter please state your opinion chapter 45 luna material claire no one can force me to retain my alpha position and it's already decided i won't keep my pack and title if it means letting go of my mate hunter grunted he was too filled with rage and despair to see the light, to see the hope of another possibility, a third way that would allow him to keep his beloved pack and be together with me. I couldn't let him give up on his pack that easily, not because of his rank and title, but because I knew how important it was for him. I wouldn't allow him to lose his pack, at least not without fighting for it. All the eyes were fixed on me. I took a deep breath trying to calm my nerves and gather all my strength. The goddess gave me to Hunter and him to me, and for a long time, I also didn't understand why. I also thought it was impossible and unnatural for an Omega like me to have an Alpha as her mate. I tried to reject Hunter. I ran away from him. We tried to be apart from each other, 
and none of us could succeed. Our bond was weakened by time, distance, mistakes, and misunderstandings. But even in those conditions, we never could let go of each other. I finally understood that we were supposed to be together because we aren't our best selves without each other. Hunter told me that the distance between us interfered in his performance as an alpha, and he wasn't as good of a leader as he used to be in the last two years. Besides that, he even tried to mark another female as his chosen mate, but failed. I also tried my best, but I also wasn't happy or completed as I used to be with him. His wolves and his pack deserves a great alpha. They deserve him, and I am not sure that they would want anyone else. Moreover, his wolves deserve Hunter in his best state, best mind and condition, and I have learned that no one can be the best if they are apart from the one who holds the part of their soul, the one they were made to love and live with by godly force that goes beyond our comprehension. Furthermore, he has led his pack very well for quite some time, as far as I know, without the assistance of any Luna, especially not any right Luna. He showed that he is capable to do it on his own. Nevertheless, I am willing to concentrate all my efforts in trying to support him in that and in any other thing he might need. As his mate only, or even as his mate and Luna, if this honorable council would give a chance to Evidently, I have never been a Luna, and I don't have any experience regarding such a position. But I would try my best. I would make as much effort as I could, and I wouldn't stop until I could provide the best for all the wolves of the pack. I said as formally and patiently as I could, even though a pang of anxiety and insecurity was vibrating in my insides. I request your permission to speak, Alpha King. Alpha Kane asked. The Alpha King exhaled sharply. <sighs> Permission conceded. She said beautiful words, but no amount of effort can overcome her natural limitations. An Alpha is supposed to have one of rank of Alpha or Beta lineage as his lunar and partner, a natural leader, someone who was biologically and naturally enabled to take such a great responsibility. We are wolves. We have ranks and a structured organization for a reason. To not allow chaos, violence, and carnage to reign. Thus the most dominant and able wolves were made the natural leaders and co-leaders out of a pack. On the other hand, the wolves that nature didn't provide with such abilities were made to perform other kinds of tasks and activities. This division is what ensures a well-functioning pack. Alpha Cain I have something to ask regarding your argument that alphas can only mate with those of alpha and beta origin, as per natural law. What about your king? He took me as his mate, and I'm not even a wolf. It didn't seem to compromise my ability as a Luna. Or do you think otherwise? The queen's soft voice echoed through the room. She had a little smile on her face. Her words renewed my hope. Of course I don't, Luna Queen. He bowed slightly. However, I must say that the situation isn't the same. You are a very powerful female. Additionally, no willpower, no effort, no sweet love tale can overcome the fact that she can't shift to her wolf and probably won't ever be able to do it. Alpha Kane started. Hope whimpered in my mind at his words. He's wrong. She growled in annoyance. I was surprised when I realized that her growl had left my lips, cutting Alpha Kane off and attracting the attention of all those present as they looked at me. I'm sorry, I muttered. The Alpha King and Alpha Kane were both shooting me dirty stares. With your permission... She doesn't have a fully mature wolf yet. 
Thus it is hard for her to contain her feisty wolf's impulses, like it was for us when we first shifted to our wolves for the first time, or were about to. Her growl only further affirms her capability to shift and do it soon. Tor remarked, a subtle smile curled up his lips. She can shift to her wolf one day, but it doesn't change the fact that Omegas are the only werewolves that haunt immortal. She will die in some decades and leave Alpha Hunter alone. We all know that even the strongest wolves can go insane once they lose their mates, especially when they were with their fated pair. Alpha Cain argued, Alpha Luna, if I may. Sarah asked the king and queen. She had a sly smile on her face. I knew she had something in mind when we heard about this meeting. She canceled some of the patients and stuffed her nose into some old books. Please proceed, Sarah. The king said, We haven't had any case of an Alpha and an Omega being fated mates ever before. But we did have a case of an Alpha female that took an Omega as her mate, long ago, in the times of Princess Victoria. After they mated and marked, their souls were connected. However, in a much weaker way than it happens to fated mates. This soul connection allowed the Omega in question to share the immortality of his mate. He had some small side effects, such as slight fatigue in the first days after the mating and migraines. However, since the mate bond between fated mates is a thousand times stronger than the artificial link created by choosing one's partner and beloved, in my medical opinion, Claire won't even suffer similar effects. I also have done careful research on all the effects of their mating, and in my opinion, as the royal pack head doctor, there aren't any counter-indications or any natural or scientific facts that could argue in favor of preventing their mating. I can hand the king a detailed report about my research in the next couple of hours. Sarah said. She and the queen exchanged small smiles. I let out the breath I didn't know I was holding and looked at my still very tense mate. Claire would be a very good Luna. She is brave, determined, has a strong will, and she could hold her ground and take hard decisions much better than me more than once. I believe she could be even a better Alpha than me. I love my pack, and I wouldn't give it anything but the best Luna possible. And this Luna couldn't be anyone but the female beside me. That is all I have to say. Hunter added, making my eyes open widely and a little gasp leave my lips. Almost all the people around had their expressions contorted with utter surprise. Alphas were known for their confidence, what I could also call arrogance. So having an alpha speaking such words, even about their fated mate, was something rare and very impressive, especially when it's about my mate. I have seen how arrogant he can be with his equally sexy and annoying grin. He was actually changing. Better saying, he actually changed. He said those words in front of all the Alphas and Lunas. He is doing great, but it doesn't mean I won't bite his tail. Hope added in my mind, making me chuckle lightly at her. If nothing else is to be said... May the king and queen proceed with their decision, the royal beta said. My heart started racing fast with anxiety. My breath caught in my throat and my palms were sweating. I exchanged a look with Hunter. He also seemed like a nervous wreck. We both knew that the next words would seal our future, our destiny. The Alpha King stood up. He was a very tall and broad male, and his presence was absolutely imposing. Besides his absurdly dominant aura, everyone's eyes were on him, fixed, almost compelled. It is unnatural to have an Omega as the mate of an Alpha and the Luna of a Pack. It's not how the Pack hierarchy and structure are supposed to work. The king started. Each word that left his mouth made a pang beat in my heart. It couldn't be happening.
Chapter 46 A Royal Decision Hunter, the king started his speech. It's unnatural to have an Omega as the mate of an Alpha and the Luna of a pack. It's not how the pack hierarchy and structure are supposed to work, he stated. The king stopped for a moment. As his Luna wrapped her hand around his side, he looked at her, and they had another silent talk. I knew just one thing. For the first time in my life, I would fight the Alpha King's decision. I would do anything to be with Claire. I started to orchestrate in my head how we could run away tonight. I would never allow them to force Claire into a mate. That was a monstrous plan. It was shocking and disgusting me that these Alphas and Lunas were even considering it. Maybe Claire and I could make it again to the Pixie Lands and ask their queen for shelter. Of course, we would have to offer that sly female something else in return. Better yet, Claire and I could go much further, to the Elf or the Fey realm. They were well known for being Pacific people. I believe they would help us out, offer us a place to stay, a safe haven. It's settled. We can ask Sarah or Stefano to create a diversion, a distraction, and run away with Claire tonight, Max said. I only hope Claire would agree with this plan. The king eyed Claire and me. Then he shifted his gaze to his Luna. Her face was an unexpected mix between anticipation and serenity. At least... I believe so for centuries, since the beginning of my times of my reign. However, the goddess gave me a gift, a blessing, that has helped me to see everything more broadly and clearly, in a way that overcomes the comprehension of what is our realm and pack. The goddess gave me my Luna, my mate. My sweet and wise female told me that there are things more important than tradition, structure, and habit. She showed me with her kindness that all the wolves should be treated as equally as possible and be given a chance to pursue their own choices in the limits of their capabilities and sometimes even beyond it. She taught me that the goddess has her own ways and that a bond of love between a wolf and his female is sacred. Thus, I can't act in counter of all my Luna believes in, and never stops helping me to see. I won't separate Alpha Hunter and his mate, or force a female to take a mate. We aren't monsters, and forcing females, regardless of their rank or anything, isn't and won't ever be accepted in this realm. Are we clear, Cain? The Alpha King gave Cain a stare that held so much power and a sentence in itself. It looked like it could burn through his skin. Yes, Alpha. Cain bared his neck and lowered his gaze in submission. This inhuman Alpha was shown his place. He had it coming. What a brutal and stupid idea. It's Alpha Hunter's choice if he wants to... Remain the Alpha of the Black Forest Pack or not. However, if he does so, a member of the Werewolf Council will supervise his and his new Luna's capability to lead the Black Forest Pack for a few months. We won't take any risks when it's about protecting our packs and our realms. He looked down at his Luna and reached his hand for her to take. She stood up. He was towering over her petite frame. His words really surprised me, and some of the people around seemed like they shared my shock. Even Claire was paralyzed for a few seconds. I could hear her heart still hammering against her ribs. The Alpha King changed a lot after he mated with his Luna fourteen years ago. She actually brought freshness, balance, and tranquility to his life in our realm. Fuck, we were so lucky to have her. She was indeed a miracle worker. That is our decision. She stated with a firm serenity. She cocked her head to the side and looked at Claire and me.
I believe you will both do a remarkable job as Luna and Alpha. Claire, my dear, you have what it takes to be a great Luna. Willpower, determination, and kindness. Hunter, you have already proved yourself to be a thoughtful and powerful Alpha. I always knew you would be able to do great things. Claire, I wish you both the best. She smiled at us. I looked at my mate, my Claire. We both could finally breathe in relief. I enveloped her in my arms and kissed the top of her head. I didn't want to let her go out of my arms, not even for an instant. I have never been that afraid my whole relatively long life. Max was howling in utmost happiness inside my mind. He was hyper, almost like a wolf in rut. He just had one thought, the same thought that overtook my mind. Our females, Claire and Hope. Now, my Luna and I will make a decision about Alpha Fergus's situation. The king announced, and some wolves said something, but I was too focused on the sweet female in my arms to listen to them to care about anything else. Claire and I stayed there, holding each other in silence, as if we were the only ones present in the room. Our heartbeats were calming down gradually and started to synchronize with each other. My female skin was feeling atypically warm. Was she still flushed out of tension and anxiety? I only wanted to comfort, soothe her. Claire's and my attention went back to the others when we saw the royal beta enter the room with Alpha Fergus. That prick looked devastated. I only hoped today would be payday for him and he would finally be held responsible for his repulsive behavior, violent tensions, and plans. Regarding Alpha Fergus, my Luna and I decided that he should step off the Alpha position. A cold chill of shock crossed the room. It was very unlike for the king to strip an alpha of his title. He didn't even do it to my father, even after all his madness and the fact that he paid no attention to the wolves of his pack, the security and borders of the Black Forest pack in our realm. I knew that it was surely the Luna Queen's doing. Having a great Luna can definitely make one a much better alpha, wolf, and man. I am glad to have the same luck the king had. I gazed at my beautiful mate and smiled. What? She asked in my head. She was also enjoying using our mind link. I'm just looking at you and thinking how lucky I am. I replied in the same way, and Claire's face lit up in a pretty smile. Alpha Fergus was an alpha for a long time and contributed to this realm for several decades. However, today, we had a further view that his judgment has been compromised and his behavior didn't carry the dignity and respect that any leader, an alpha, must always show to his fellow wolves and his community. Being an alpha is no justification to humiliate others and treat them in a lesser way. Contrarily, as a leader, he should have set a good example to his wolves, be a role model, showing that respect and decorum can't ever be waived, regardless of ranks and circumstances. Hence, my king and I have decided that he shall, with immediate effect, he should step down from his alpha position and his only child, his son Nathan, should become the alpha of his pack. The queen added, in a serene and determinate manner, This meeting is over now. The alpha king declared before he turned to his mate and took her in his arms. I love you, Luna mine. Today you are admirable, like always. Due to my acute hearing, I could hear the king's sweet words to his Luna. I took Claire by the hand and we left the meeting room and walked out of the castle. We both could use some fresh air, especially my mate. Her skin was still very warm. 
I unlaced my arms around her waist and brought her body flush against mine. I would do anything to not lose you, to not allow them to force you. My voice was thick with emotion. I know. She muttered as she pressed her face against my chest. I also would do anything to be with you. She smiled. Does this mean that you accept to be my mate in Luna? Are you... are you officially giving me a chance, my sweetie? I asked as I tilted her chin up and looked into her almost caramel-colored light brown eyes. Yes. She muttered softly. Her voice sounded sultry and breathy. But I want to take things slowly. She added as she cupped my face gently. It would be very hard for me, and especially for the horny wolf already pacing inside my head. This way I'd have a migraine, a painful erection, a throbbing desire for quite a while. Stop it, Max! I scolded him, but he ignored me. I couldn't take his overwhelming pacing anymore. Sure, sweetie, as slow as you want. I will wait for you. I added, pressing another kiss on the top of her head. Let's go back inside. It's too hot. Almost suffocating in here. Besides, I want to thank Sarah and Tor. Their help was fundamental today. Claire said. It wasn't hot at all. A pleasant breeze was blowing. I looked intently at Claire as my pupils dilated and my eyes opened wide. Her scent was stronger lately. Her skin felt too warm, and I felt the crushing need to have her in my arms even stronger than before. Could she be in heat, even though she hadn't shifted to hope yet? As far as I knew, Omegas didn't go into heat, because it's something that comes from the wolf, and their wolves are normally deeply buried in their minds. Further, I thought that only mated and marked females could go into heat. I put some distance between us, only enough to be able to look at my female's eyes. Claire, is it possible that you are in heat? Chapter 47 Burning and Melting Claire Claire, is it possible that you are having your heat? Hunter asked. I looked up at his face, as shock and realization hit me with a single strike. My plans to take it slowly would fail miserably if I was actually having my heat. I would literally burn from the inside, and the only thing that could soothe my blazing ache would be having my mate inside me. However, it wasn't possible. I haven't shifted to hope yet, and I wasn't a marked female. But Hunter was right in his thought. I was showing all the symptoms of heat. I tried to rack my brain for any plausible medical explanation, but my mind was quite mushy. At first, I thought it was all the stress caused by the events that happened in the last few hours. I don't know, I murmured. What do you think, Hope? I asked in my mind. I think we want and need to mate. Can we tie them? Can we do it now? I swallowed hard at her words. My wolf was actually out of her mind. Hunter cupped my face, tilting it up gently, and made me look at him once again, as I felt another hot wave trail down my spine. I licked my dry lips before I pulled Hunter's slightly leaning face towards mine and pressed a kiss to his mouth. I opened my mouth and molded my lips against his, swirling my tongue inside his mouth and letting his tongue enter my mouth. Our tongues tangled in the most passionate and scorching kiss we have ever shared. I felt my body almost dissolve in hot and liquid desire, which made all my suspicions become certainty. My womb clenched painfully and my body begged to feel him, to feel my male. I was indeed having my heat. Take me, 
My voice was a feral exhale inside his mind. Hunter scooped me up in his arms and ran towards his room on the fifth floor of the palace. His legs had an urgent speed, just like a wolf running to catch and devour his prey. He took my lips with his, before placing me on the bed and covering my body with his muscular one. His face hovered over mine, so close. This small gesture alone was enough to further feed my desperate yearning. The scorching sensation that was growing in my womb and radiating fast to my whole body. How couldn't I realize I was getting my heat earlier? I was supposed to know the signs very well. I guess I thought it was impossible for me, and I was too distracted due to today's meeting. My gaze traveled from his gray, piercing eyes to his full lips. I arched my back, and my lips brushed against his on their own accord. My body was begging for his. For him. Your wolf is begging, too. Hope howled in my mind. She was hyper. Restless. We both needed our mail, with the kind of desperation that only desire and passion could entice. His mouth trailed down to my neck. I let out a quivering breath and a broken moan. Hunter planted a lingering and open-mouthed kiss on the spot where my shoulders and neck met, on my marking spot. My hazy, burning mind finally registered what he was doing. Hunter, don't, don't mark me. Not like this. I muttered. I didn't want us to mark each other during my heat, while the boiling lust induced by nature was clouding our senses, since heat doesn't affect only the females, but their mates as well. I wanted to do it when we could both have a clear mind. I felt a growl vibrating in his chest, but he managed to hold it back. I knew Max wasn't very happy about waiting. Sure, sweetie. Hunter replied as he lifted his face and his eyes were trained on mine once again. Without breaking eye contact, he propped himself on his elbows, straddling over my hips. He took off his shirt, and my hungry eyes gawked every firm undulation of his muscular chest and his defined abs. I was almost drooling, and my breath was a quivering hot mess. Hunter chuckled slightly. <sighs> It's all yours and yours only, my Luna. His husky words made my chest rise up and down in an overwhelming mix of desire and tenderness. He looked down at me, his eyes dark with lust and need, probably mirroring my own unquenchable yearn. His nails elongated, becoming Max's claws, and he ripped my shirt and my bra open. I had no protest. I just wanted, needed to get rid of the piece of clothing that was separating my burning skin from his. He cupped my bared breast, taking my aching nipples between his fingers and rolling them slowly, teasingly. How I missed his touch, this feeling, the feeling of being his. He didn't lose time to also rip my pants and underwear off before he got rid of the rest of his clothes. His shaft was fully erect and hard. His gaze was caressing every inch of my naked skin as my eyes did the same. But my flaming body needed more, needed it all, needed him. I pulled him slightly towards me, making a sexy grin curl up on his handsome face. Without taking his eyes off mine for even a second, Hunter covered my body with his and pinned my hands together on top of my head against the headboard, before his hand traveled down from my waist to my hips, and he snaked it between our bodies, reaching down to palm my mound. Mm, your skin is burning, he muttered, looking surprised. I'm all burning. My voice carried the undertone of Hope's voice. We were both lost in a flaring desire. His hand roamed down to my drenched folds, making me whimper in pleasure as I arched my back to lean into his touch. He kissed his way down to my breasts without stopping, caressing my lower lips and flicking my clit teasingly. I couldn't deal with any tease right now. Hunter. I breathed. Hunter. 
What, sweetie? I answered, almost absently, too lost in the feeling of her soft skin burning against my hand. Don't tease me. Take me. She muttered in a feverish voice as she parted her legs and wrapped them around my hips. I was a tad surprised when she took my dick in her hand and positioned my tip at her entrance. I looked up and her caramel eyes, dark, melted with a sheer desire. I entered her slowly, looking at her eyes and her parted lips while quivering gasps and tiny moans escaped them. Being inside her again was so good, only not better than having her accepting to be my woman, my mate, and my Luna. Mine! Max and I groaned in unison as the urge to claim Claire came from the depths of our soul. Yours, and you're mine too. Her broken voice wasn't louder than a whisper of pleasure. Yours! Max and I replied to her, making a little soft smile light up her face. After giving her some moments to adjust to my size, I started moving inside her, giving her slow and deep thrusts. Hunter, no! She protested. I looked at her face, a bit worried, wondering what could possibly be wrong. Was she changing her mind? No, I need more. I need all. She added. Her brown eyes were glowing a little, showing that hope was trying to come to the surface. She was closer than ever. This realization made Max howl in pure joy in my mind and try to fight me for control to take my body and be the one enjoying Claire's delicious warmness and Hope's presence. I shoved him to the back of my mind. I had to be the only one making love to my mate, at least this time and probably the next couple of times. Right now, it was too hard to share her even with my wolf. I started moving a bit faster. Although I was losing my mind in a thick and unfindable lust, I was trying to make love to her, gently, sweetly, instead of fucking her with abandon. But my female in heat wasn't having any of it. She was trying to flip us around, and I helped her to do so by taking part of my weight from her. Claire was now straddling me. She sat up and started riding me, bouncing up and down fast, energetically. She threw her head back. She was intoxicated in our shared pleasure, and so was I. I was intoxicated by her, by everything in her, not only her body, her smell, and how perfect she feels under my touch around my dick. Sweetie, I groaned as I cupped one of her small perky breasts and grabbed her hip with my other hand. I thrust upwards into her, filling her to the brim, brushing my tip against her womb. She let out a soft, sweet whimper. Her lips parted, her eyes clenched. We were both possessed by so much passion and lust. Harder! Faster! She asked. I wanted to, but she was small and delicate. I didn't want to hurt her. Please! She added. I couldn't deny my mate. I bumped relentlessly into her insides as fast and roughly as I wanted and needed to. That only made her cries of pleasure grow more desperate. I was very shocked when she suddenly ran her nails across the skin of my chest and slapped me there. Sweetie? I asked, confused. This is for almost marking another. Hope and Claire said. <laughs> I couldn't hold back my little chuckle. I liked this wild and possessive sight of my sweet mate. What? It's not funny. I am still a bit angry. She added with a little frown as her nails met my skin once again and she bounced up fast, angrily. Fuck, she was so hot like this. She held the bedhead for support as she rode me fast, furiously. My hands traveled down her body as I imprinted my possessive touch on her skin, caressing and possessing every inch of my woman. My tiny and fierce female was taking control, and she had me submitting to all her allure, her pleasure, and craving. I would easily bare my neck to her and let her show me all the ecstasy I could enjoy inside her. My hand found her clit, and after a couple of flicks and deep, rough thrusts, I could feel her sex starting to clench around my length. 
I took her even faster, with might, with all the hazy insanity that lust could induce in someone. She cried out her release, and soon I followed her. Claire placed her palms against my chest for support. Her breath was hot, deep, desperate. I wrapped my hands around her waist, intending to lift her up and place her by my side, take her in my embrace. No, we are not done. She stopped me as she ran her nails across my chest once again. Pleasure, pain, tenderness, anger, and pure deliciousness. I was mad about this female. She was everything. She kept writing me for two more turns. I didn't know she could have that much stamina, but I heard that she-wolves in heat are unquenchable, and I loved every second of it. All I wanted was to satiate her thirst and hunger with every deep thrust and having her satisfying my also immense desire. I laid Claire by my side and took her still very warm frame in my arms. We were both still panting softly. Claire... Claire, I am in love with you. I muttered. Maybe it wasn't the right moment to say the words, but something in me urged me to do so. I, I, I'm in love with you too. She replied between pants. I crashed my lips on hers, putting it all in a single kiss. Passion, hunger, and love. Claire. After mating three more times and drinking a lot of water, I fell asleep in Hunter's arms. The aching burning of my skin had finally been soothed. I was exhausted, but I knew it would only last a couple of hours, and soon I would wake up needing my mail. It would be like this for at least the next 18 hours. It was so intense, delicious, and crazy— by examining my patience in heat or studying about it, I couldn't imagine it would feel like this. Pleasure and desire reached a new level. I wanted to take it slow, but mating with him was so good. It felt so perfect and right. Yes, it does. Hope sighed dreamily in my head. Especially when we are in love. My wolf was burning and melting just like me. I snuggled further into his strong chest, and he pressed a kiss on top of my head. You should rest now, sweetie, before it starts again. He sounded almost cooing. I slept in his arms for the third time ever. When I woke up, another familiar feeling threw a bucket of ice on all the warmness of our lovemaking and the heat of my burning body. Hunter wasn't anywhere to be seen. I swallowed hard and tried to breathe slowly as a single tear slid down my cheek. I sat up and looked into space, startled. Chapter 48 Staying Claire I can smell him, Claire. Claire, calm down. They didn't leave us. They are already coming back. Hope's words felt like a blanket of comfort for my now chilling body. A couple of minutes later, Hunter opened the door of the room and looked intently at me. I thought you would still be asleep, sweetie. Has it started again? He asked, two lines of worry creasing on his forehead. It's starting, I muttered. Hunter sat on the edge of the bed by my side and lifted me by my waist, placing me onto his lap. I went to get some food, water, and something else. His gray eyes had a gleam of mischievousness. I thought you had left. I uttered, after I cocked my head to the other side, avoiding his gaze. Claire. He exhaled deeply and tightened his hold around me. I see where this is coming from and why you thought so, but I won't ever leave you again. He replied, tilting my face towards him by placing three gentle fingers under my chin and over my cheek. I swallowed hard and sank myself into his embrace. I love you, and I am here to stay forever, he said further. A deep breath of relief left my nostrils. 
I couldn't have him leaving. This time it would be much worse, because this time I also loved him. Beyond the bond, beyond attraction and desire, I loved the strong and caring male he was showing me he could be. I moved my head up and locked my eyes with his piercing gray ones. I love you too, I muttered before I planted a tender kiss on his lips, but the faint kiss was enough to set my body aflame once again. My womb clenched a wave of blazing lust. About what I have for you, he started as he put enough distance between us to be able to look at my face. Here it is, he said as he threw the content of the paper bag he was carrying on the bedside table. I looked closely at it. Four sandwiches, bottles of water, a pink tulip, and handcuffs? Hunter gave me the tulip, a naughty grin on his face. Thank you. It's beautiful. I smiled before smelling it. I took the handcuffs in my hand and chuckled. Are you planning to get handcuffed, Mr. Alpha? He also chuckled in return. <laughs> Could be, but before that, I will have you freely with abandon and tied down for me to pleasure you the way I want. My mouth went dry at his words, and the heat coursing in my womb became an inferno as my blood felt like liquid lava in my veins. I straddled my mail, pulling him towards our bed before our lips found each other in raw and flaming passion. I felt in my body and my heart that nothing could separate us. Hunter. I took my clothes off as fast as I could before flipping my small, hungry female around. I pinned her down with my weight, placed her arms over her head, and handcuffed both of them to the bed rail. Last night you showed me how fierce and sexy you can be when you are in control, but today I'll have you still restrained and given for me to pleasure and take however I want. Now you are my prey, sweetie. She gasped with anticipation, arching her back and parting her lips. I claimed her mouth with an urgent kiss before I trailed away of kisses down her body, nibbling and sucking her skin. I captured her engorged pink nipple in my mouth as my wandering hand found her sex. I entered a finger into her, making her whimper in delight. I was only starting. After teasing her both nipples, I kissed down her body and only stopped my trail of kisses when my mouth was on her folds. I opened her for me, using my tongue, without stopping fingering her fast and deeply. I knew that her body was burning, craving for all it could get, and that was what I wanted to give her. It all. I lapped from her clit hood until her entrance, and replaced my fingers with my tongue as I started licking her inner walls as a parched and desperate man. She tasted even better while in heat. She was convulsing in pleasure as the most enticing and sensual sounds left her throat. I am only starting, female. I will give you so much pleasure that your mind will get mushy for hours. I muttered against the soft skin of her pussy. My cool breath on her warm skin made my Claire squirm. Please do it, Hunter. Please. She asked. Don't worry, my female. I have gotten you. I reassured her before resuming my kisses and the rough thrusts of my tongue. I wanted to drink all of her. After a few minutes, my Claire bucked and rocked her hips towards me, pressing her mound against my face to increase the friction, the pressure, her pleasure. She was close. My mouth roamed up and I gritted her clit between my teeth very slightly, circling her opening with my fingers. That was her undoing. In a few seconds she was moaning out the peak of her pleasure and melting even more into my mouth. I didn't let her cool off from her orgasm. I promised maddening pleasure, and that was what I intended to deliver. I placed each of her legs over my shoulders, opening them up before I bottomed out into her soaked wall with a single and powerful shove. Hunter. She called me. Yes, my love. I husked. 
While I was taking her, in a moment in which I was overtaken and distracted by immense pleasure, Max took control and started sliding into my woman, as he pushed me to the back of my head, where I could only watch the scene play. Max slammed into her full power, making her walls squeeze tightly around me. My wolf let out an animalistic grunt. Max? She asked, sounding hazy. Yes, Claire. His guttural voice filled the room. Claire's eyes were shining again, showing Hope was really trying to push to the surface to mate with her male, her counterpart, even though if it was only through Claire's form. Somehow our lovemaking was also helping to push Hope forward. I could feel how insanely happy Max was at this thought. He was going mad puppy dog in love for her. Yes, I'm... There is no shame in that. He replied, like a proud alpha. Max. Hope's voice carried the undertone of a rumble. She was almost on the surface more than ever. Hearing her voice drove him crazy. He started unleashing hard thrusts deep into our female. Claire's body shuddered, and they pushed her hips towards us, their movements meeting each of my plunges in a frantic, wild, and passionate dance. Max, you can't mark them. I scolded my wolf. I knew that it was hard for him to control his urge, but it was very hard for me, too. But I had to respect her wish. If she wanted to have it in an especial way, join my pack in getting the Luna position before it, doing it on the top of a mountain, or even having a bonding ceremony as the elves do, I would give her that. I would give her every and anything her heart could wish for, all the love and affection she deserves. He growled in annoyance inside my head. I know, I hate to wait, but I will do it. He replied. He looked back at our mates and concentrated on the feeling of Claire's skin, which soothed him immediately. All his frustration faded away and was replaced by pleasure. Pleasure and love. Hope, Claire! Max grunted, looking intently at Claire's face, contorted in pleasure. Clenched eyes, parted lips, head thrown back. She was a sight. She wrapped her legs around my neck firmly before they moaned out loud. Hope let out a small howl. Our females came beautifully for us. Having them like this, lost in ecstasy, was all Max and I needed to explode as well. I emptied out inside of her, filling her insides with my seed, and maybe even making her carry my pup. Max let me have back the control. He was too gone in his own pleasure to fight me back. I covered Claire's body with mine as I planted many kisses on the skin of her neck. I freed her arms from the handcuffs and placed gentle kisses on her wrists before I enveloped her in my arms. She tilted her face up and looked at me. I looked back at her. I was sure of one thing. Claire is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Chapter 49 The Morning After Hunter After Claire's burning was soothed, she slept in my arms once again. My poor mate was exhausted, and so was I. But I have never felt more pleased and happier in being exhausted before. We rested a lot, and when I woke up, I asked someone to bring us breakfast in the room. Claire really needed to recover her energy. I was glad I told Tyler and Stefano to go back to the pack after the Alpha's meeting. This way I didn't have to worry too much about the Black Forest pack, and could focus on my mate. Hopefully, I could take Luna to our pack soon. Sweetie, I called my sleeping mate softly as I planted a few gentle kisses on her cheek and hair. She stirred a bit in her sleep and let out a sweet whimper. Let's eat something. You should be hungry, too, I added. I am. She answered without opening her eyes. She only tried to reach me and pull me closer. Her gesture made a smile curl up on my face. Claire opened her eyes slowly. How long have we slept for? She asked. 
Her sleepy voice was adorable. Almost twelve hours, sweetie, I replied. Claire's eyes opened wide and she sat up almost in a jump. I have to train and go to work. Oh, goddess. I didn't even tell Sarah I would be late, that I wasn't coming to work yesterday and today, too. I'm not even sure what day is it today. I can't believe I did this. Sarah was counting on me. I couldn't even think about it or anything when I was burning. Claire thought out loud, speaking very fast. Don't worry, I have already called Sarah. She said you were taking the day off today and rest, and she didn't want any discussion about it. I added, and Claire frowned a little, making me chuckle. <laughs> Let me take care of you, I told my mate. What do you have in mind? She asked, looking up at me. Oh, first we can eat, then I can wash you, uh, kiss you, and maybe later, if you are feeling well rested, we can train more. We have to do it. I have to see Hope Hunter. You were with Claire, but how about me? Don't be a selfish butthead and help me get to my Hope soon. Come on! Max grumbled in my mind. I understood, shared his urgency. But Claire had a very hot and hard day yesterday. We couldn't push her. You don't have to take care of me. I'm not a pup. Claire replied. I am sure my independent female was used to and liked to do everything by herself. But now she had me to spoil her. She deserved and could use a little break and some coddling. Let me do it, sweets. You aren't alone any more. I argued. Just a bit. She smiled softly, and I brushed my lips against her smile, kissing her delicious lips. I already miss them. I brought the breakfast tray to the bed, and we ate together. Hunter, I was wondering about what Alpha Cain said about your father. Claire asked me. I could hear an undertone of worry in her voice. I looked away for an instant... It was a sour topic, but my mate had to, deserved to, know more about me and our pack, which included my past. My father. <sighs> my father wasn't a good alpha, I replied with a long exhalation. Claire placed her small hand on top of mine. You don't have to tell me, but if and when you want to, I am here for you. She had a look of sympathy and a tight smile on her beautiful, rosy lips. I'd better get it over with and spill all the truth. There was no point in keeping it all bottled up inside me for any longer. He was quite selfish and too inclined to his own carnal and other egoistic satisfaction. He wasted the riches of the pack, all that many of his wolves worked hard for, for his own benefit only. Uh, exploiting the work and abusing the trust of others, he spent all the money on parties, drinks, gambling, and even females. The darkness in him was very strong. As you know, if someone takes too long to meet their mate, their darkness can grow and overpower them. Most alphas aren't afraid of said darkness. They have their pack to support them and even to share the mental burden through our mental link. It didn't help my father. Maybe because he had a weak connection with his packmates, since even before the darkness cursed him, he was a selfish male, so I have heard. Even though he had found my mother, his fated mate, he bedded many she-wolves, mostly Omegas. I looked away for a moment again. It was always hard to talk about it, to recall and bring back all these memories I... I hated the disgusting way he paraded those females in front of my mom, and even in front of me when I was young. The look on their faces. Some of them really liked the attention, enjoyed all that they could get by being the Alpha's mistress, status, money, even some sort of fake respect that the other packmates were forced to pay them. I hated those females and I considered them all as low as my father was. They all disgusted me. It was very hard for me, and for Tyler as well. 
He was always by my side through all the suffering and chaos my life was when I was a pup and a teenager. That is why I didn't snap harder on him, show him his place, or even take away his position as my beta after he disrespected me and my future Luna in the flagrant way he did a bit more than a day ago. Sometimes he could be the biggest of idiots, but he was like a brother to me, and soon he would come back to his senses. That should have been really hard for you, to grow up like that. I'm so sorry, she muttered, her voice soft, soothing, and filled with sympathy. I turned my head once again and looked at my Claire. How could I ever think she was anything like these selfish and opportunistic females? It's not your fault, sweetie. The females that he betted... They were power and riches hungry. It was hard for me to see it, to see him parading them. That was what sent my mother away. She rejected him and left the pack. She wanted to take me with her, but the werewolf law wouldn't allow it. That was my father's only child. And heir. I exhaled deeply. I'm very sorry. Claire whispered as she drew soothing patterns on the back of my hand with her soft fingertips. Now I understand why you thought so low about Omegas. She added. It doesn't matter. I muttered. It does. It does make sense. But there are self-interested and opportunistic Omegas as much as there are bad alphas and bad wolves among every rank and every pack. But I guess when you're hurt, it's hard to see things objectively. Claire said, looking thoughtful. You helped me to see things clearly. I told her as I stroked her face with the back of my hand, and she leaned into my touch. In the end, my father almost destroyed the pack, not only by abusing and exploiting it, but also by neglecting his wolves. He didn't do anything for them. Many of them ended up homeless and famished. It was a heartbreaking thing to witness. I tried to be good for my people, rebuild the pack, and compensate everyone for my father's mistakes. That is also why I spent so many years focusing only on my pack. I still think that as an alpha I should put my pack first, not first, but second, before myself. However, not before my female, my mate, I uttered as I kissed Claire's hand. It goes without saying that... He wasn't a good father to me, and the only times he saw me was to say how much of a failure and a shame I was, how I was weak and not good enough to hold his family name and bloodline, how I reminded him of his weak runaway mate. Claire huffed. I could see a hint of anger in her slightly glowing eyes. Even Hope was enraged. At least her anger brought her closer to the surface. He was a sick man and a lunatic. You aren't any of these things, she said, as she stood up and sat on my lap, and lacing her arms around my neck and hugging me. I know, sweetie. Even though sometimes I doubted myself, and I was inclined to believe his words, I know they aren't true. Claire pulled away, putting enough distance between us to be able to look at my eyes. Her gaze was softer now. You are a great alpha for putting your pack first, Hunter. But you should put yourself first, too. At least sometimes. You aren't alone anymore. I will be there for you. When you put the pack first and neglect yourself, I will be there putting you first and taking care of you. She added, as she pressed her forehead against mine. I am so glad and so lucky to finally have my Luna, my caring and strong Luna, by my side. I muttered as I engulfed her in my arms. I'm very glad I found you too, my Alpha. She replied, using the intimacy of our mind link. In the end, I found my powerful and capable Luna where I least expected, in an Omega. I couldn't see it before, 
but the goddess knew it all the time. After making my words come true, cuddling my mate, and showering with her, Claire and I went to the training grounds. We, and especially Max, maybe even more than Hope herself, were too excited to have Claire shifting to her wolf form, so we didn't want to lose any time. We stretched and ran together. After that, we started sparring. I could see that she was already getting very tired. Heats take a heavy toll on females, that is a well-known fact. Probably it's even worse when it's the first time. Claire took her next move, trying to stretch her leg and kick my arm. It was a very bold move, and she was already panting a lot. I took her in my embrace and could feel a soft rumble vibrating in her chest. Hope. Yes. Max muttered, rumbling in my mind as well. Claire. I looked up at Hunter's eyes and smiled. Hope was even closer. I felt as if I could almost touch her. I knew I had to push more, to bring her forward. Being with our mates, making love with them, really gave her a big push. Oh, yeah. She sighed. Horny little wolf. She was pacing anxiously inside my mind and making me a bit dizzy. Sorry, Claire. I would like to take the whole pacing thing out of your mind. It shouldn't be that comfortable to feel my paws stepping on your thoughts, but until now, I can't. She joked and let out a little whimper. We're almost there. I'm quite tired, though. I breathed. It's okay if you want to stop. You had a very active day and night yesterday. Claire, you were unstoppable. My wolf barked laughed as she crouched down a little and covered her face with her paws in my head. She is so cute. I wish Max could see her, too. Soon. I didn't know if I should push more or not. My joking wolf was right. It had been a hard day, and I was beyond exhausted. I think Hunter noticed my struggle while he made his next move. Instead of trying to touch his fist on me or anything like this, he pulled me to his arms. It's okay to take a little break, sweetie, he said softly as he engulfed me in the comfort of his embrace and his fresh, earthy scent. He took me to sit on the bench and just kept his arms around me for the next minutes, making me feel a bit recharged and drowsy at the same time. Maybe we can stop for today, I mumbled as I closed my eyes for a moment. I heard Max's annoyed growl that left Hunter's throat and tilted my head slightly to look at him. His eyes were shining slightly. Max was there. Max. He told me, shaking his head. Let's try a bit more, Sweeney. Push, just a bit more. You can do it. You were so determined and strong. What you did every day by training, working, and the way you behaved and stood high in a room full of alphas, where many of them wanted to bring a horrible destiny, almost a punishment upon you, was incredible. Remarkable. I know you are tired and have to take a break, but let's push a bit more today. Hope is already so close to the surface after we made it. Maybe she is going back a tad if we don't push her more soon. He was right. Our intense mating created a good momentum to push my talkative wolf even further and shift for the first time. I believe in you, Claire. You can do it. His words renewed my willpower, and I took a long breath, trying to fill my lungs with energy and even brush my sleepiness off. I stood up and reached my hand to my mate. Let's do it, I said with a little smile. I couldn't stop now. Not when I was so close. Maybe I haven't ever felt that tired before. Having my heat was absolutely intense, but I couldn't stop. Hunter beamed a huge smile and took my hand. Standing up fast, we walked together to one of the fighting areas. Many wolves still stared at us, even after we did this. Training together, and more than occasionally kissing, for many days already. But it didn't matter. All that matters is Hope, Hunter, and Max. It's us. I gathered all my energy and determination and took a fighting stance. My left feet behind my right one as I propped my body up and placed my hands up on the height of my eyes. 
A smile found its way to my lips. When I launched towards Hunter with all the speed I could muster, as I muttered to myself, let's bring hope totally to the surface. Chapter 50 Biting Tales Hunter. Claire was pushing very hard, and I could see how exhausted she was. But after our little talk, she didn't even mention that she wanted to stop or even take a break anymore. We trained for hours. There wasn't anyone apart from us in the training parlor anymore. We'd been there almost for the whole day. I wondered if I should just tell her to slow down a little. I knew she could do it. But on the other hand, I didn't want her to faint due to exhaustion. I can feel hope, Hunter. She is almost there. Claire is much stronger than one can see, and hope too. It's no time to stop now, Max said in a low growl as his voice carried a hint of a scolding. I was so tired of being constantly scolded by an animal. Oh, shut up, you enjoy it. I am the one to bring you down to earth and avoid that you get high on your own ego. He choked. The jerk. I mentally sneered at him. Truth is, I like the furry jerk a lot. I won't ever tell him that, though. I heard it. You couldn't keep your thoughts from me this time. <laughs> Max said with his awkward wolfish grin. Remember, never smile like this in front of hope. It was my turn to taunt him, even though my words held some truth. There was a chance Hope would run to the mountains after seeing it. He barked, irritated, at my remark. It serves him well. Claire took another step towards me. She was about to lunge, but I only circled her. She looked so beautiful, her light brown eyes burning with determination, droplets of sweat running down the sexy curve of her neck, her parted, panting lips. It was hard to resist making her my prey. Sometimes the best strategy is circling your opponent. Let them work out themselves, and when they least expect it, you attack. I told her before I went to her swiftly and took her in my arms, dipping her backward in my embrace and kissing her lips. This is not fighting. Her breathy voice echoed inside my head. I am taking the breath of my opponent away. It's a very smart fighting strategy, I argued. I really enjoyed our newly found mind link to speak inside her mind, inside her thoughts. Once we mate, I would be able to catch on to her feelings and even some of her thoughts, at least the strongest of them. I would feel what she does and have our souls united. Can't wait! Ha ha ha! You, on the other hand, will have someone else in your head, Max added. She won't be pacing around, howling, grumbling, and annoying me. She isn't a grumpy wolf, I replied to him. I felt another rumble on Claire's chest. Hope. I set my mate to her feet. Let's continue. Wait. I can't. Her voice wasn't louder than a whisper. She leaned on me and placed her hands against my chest for support. What is happening, sweetie? I asked, worried, as I took her back in my arms. I'm dizzy. She said with difficulty as she clenched her eyes shut and took a few short and shallow breaths. My head is hurting and my bones too. I feel like they're breaking. She added. Claire opened her eyes abruptly and gasped. Does it mean? Yes! Max and I almost yelled in unison. I sat down with her on the floor, and she inhaled more air in small gasps. Are you feeling well? The first time shifting hurts and is exhausting. I tried to coo her as I brushed a strand of her soft and now almost wet hair to the back of her ear. She only exhaled in response. We both looked down at her hands. Her nails were already elongating and becoming Hope's claws. Claire's gaze met mine. Her eyes were shining more than ever before. This way they actually looked like melted caramel. I didn't know that her eyes could be even more beautiful. You're almost there, sweetie, I told her. Should I give you some space? 
I knew how painful it felt, and maybe she needed some space to move. I wanted to be there, holding her, but I had to give her what she needs. No, stay, she asked. Claire bit her bottom lip. I could hear the cracking noise of her bones breaking. She propped herself on her hands and knees, seemingly automatically. Another piercing noise and a little whimper. Her bones were reshaping themselves. From that moment, I couldn't see very well what was happening anymore. Max took control and forcefully shifted, shoving me to the depths of my mind. A celebratory and very loud howl pierced the night sky, and the next thing I saw, with Max's eyes, was the very beautiful and small light caramel wolf in front of me. Her eyes were a bit lighter than Claire's, almost hazel. She was pretty? No, she was gorgeous. Max took long and slow steps towards her as if he couldn't believe she was real. When he was closer to her, he rubbed his muzzle on her side before licking and nibbling her face gently. That is how wolves show affection, at least normal wolves. Max wasn't very fond of touching, until now I guess. He was totally mushy for her, the same way I was for Claire. Hope was rumbling, almost purring, like a content cat. She whimpered softly before she started licking and nibbling his muzzle as well. She moved to the side and all of a sudden she bit Max's tail, making him jump with surprise. What was she doing? Max. I was finally with my mate, my counterpart. She was the most pretty she-wolf I have ever seen. Those hips and that fluffy looking fur. Those beautiful dark hazel eyes. I just wanted to howl like crazy, like a wolf in rut. I walked slowly in her direction. She was only two steps away, but I still took some time to get there, afraid she would vanish away if I blinked. She was a vision, almost like a miracle, and surely a gift from the goddess. Jam! I was like a puppy. Hunter would make fun of me if he caught these thoughts, but he doesn't matter now. Only she does. I touched her with my muzzle. Her fur felt even softer and fluffier than it looked. She was perfect. Hope, I muttered in her mind. It was almost a moan. Dumb, I am gone for her. Hey, big boy, she replied, her sweet voice laced with a smile. My hope, how I wanted to lick you, play, hunt with you, and mount you. Too bad she wasn't in her heat any more. We could make such a cute pop. She started licking and nibbling me back until she moved to my backside and bit my tail. Then I jumped, startled. That's for what you and Hunter did to Claire and me. Now we're even. She said, blinking her eyes in a funny, teasing way. She didn't only have the looks, but also the humor. She was indeed perfect for me. I shook my head and resumed my ministrations again, licking her from her side to her muzzle once again. I couldn't stop my craving to taste her and scent her. After taking my sweet time, I motioned with a tilt of my head in the direction of the forest, signing for my mate to follow me. Let's run a bit, I invited, with my sexy wolfish grin. Hope did what I said. Hunter was wrong. Like always, Hope loved my sexy grin. Max, don't. Our females are too tired and Hope is a newborn wolf. She can't overexert herself. Hunter objected. It was easy for him. He could be with Claire, and he played a lot with her already. I wanted my playtime as well. We walked to the forest. I couldn't avoid rubbing my side against hers a few times. Many times. Hope only rumbled in response. Are you okay, pup? I asked to sound sexy as I moin linked my mate. I'm down for the run. Hope replied before she nuzzled my face and started running in front of me. Catch me, Alpha. She teased. Before I started with my chase, I let Hope run a bit further to give her the upper hand. 
Hunter was right. She was still a brand new wolf, and it was her first time walking, let alone running. But soon the chase would start, and it wouldn't stop. Never. Hope, you will be my prey every day, and the thing I want to catch most. Oh, I will catch you, my little wolf. Chapter 51 Feels Like Freedom Hope I walked on the dry leaves for the first time, slowly at first. I was trying, enjoying all the new sensations, the funny noise of leaves and branches crashing and cracking under the weight of my paws, the chirping of the forest animals, and the funny sound of little paws walking around hesitantly. It does smell like a squirrel. But my favorite sound, besides the grave voice of a certain male wolf, was the serenic song of the wind. The feeling of it caressing my fur was also pretty awesome. I waved my tail slowly to play with the wind. Oh, and the beautiful starry night over my ears, the stars looked even more shining when I could see them with my own eyes. I wish I could chase them. That would be super fun. Everything feels like freedom. It's so good to finally be outside Claire's mind. Claire, I had to check on my girl. She worked her pretty butt off to have me outside in the world. Claire, are you okay inside there? Yes, Hope. Just tired. It feels weird to be in the back of my mind. She told me. But I couldn't be happier for you. For us. It's incredible. Claire's soft voice was filled with emotion. I did get the best girl to be my person. I wanted to try those paws of mine, see how fast I could get, and give Max a good chase. No wolf likes an easy prey, especially not my big bad alpha. I started running. The wind felt even better as it blew against my fur and filled my lungs with its freshness. Freedom was flowing in my veins. I closed my eyes and let this feeling guide me. I heard more of the funny little paw noises of the small forest creatures going away and probably hiding, startled by the noise of my running. It's den time anyway. Good night, little fellas. I kept running at the top of my speed, chasing freedom, feeling alive. I kept running, leaving trees, bushes, tiny ponds, and Max behind. I could feel Claire in my mind. She was also basking herself in this feeling, the refreshing exhilaration that only racing with the wind could bring. I only stopped when I arrived at a clearing. The almost full moon was reflecting in the placid waters of a lake. I walked towards it and looked at my reflection. It was incredible. It was the first time I saw myself. I cocked my head slowly, looking at my muzzle. I thought it was bigger. My fur was light golden almost whitish. Girl, you don't look bad. Not at all, I told myself. I lowered my muzzle to the river. I wanted to feel everything. When the cold water made contact with my snout, I got a bit startled. But soon, I put it back into the water and decided to drink a bit of it. I didn't know how thirsty I was. The feeling of it going down my throat was also something new, and I liked it. I closed my eyes, trying to bask in the new sensation. It must be silly and trivial for a normal older wolf, but for me, it was quite special. I was like a pup, exploring the world for the first time. When I opened my eyes, I saw the reflection of my big and dark brown-furred male behind me. He had the same magnetic gray eyes as Hunter, the pair of eyes that drove Claire and me crazy and melt us into a puddle. I turned around to lick his snout. I already missed him and his scent. He pulled me away from the water by mouthing my cheek gently. I didn't know such a big, hot male could be that delicate. I was swooning. He jumped on me, literally, and we both were rolling around like playful pups as yips of joy left my throat. 
I rolled to the top and licked his underbelly, making his bark a laugh. Max. After some minutes, I decided to go after her. I couldn't wait anymore. I followed her delicious scent of strawberry and wildflowers until a little clearing. Hope was by the river, drinking water and absolutely distracted. I surprised her, and she opened her eyes, looking at our reflection in the water. How good we looked together. I pulled her away and rolled with her, playing for the first time with my hope. After games, playful nibbles, and loving licks, I couldn't control myself anymore. I had to have my mate. No. I shoved Hunter to a deeper place inside our shared mind and stood on my paws, motioning to Hope to do the same. She followed my lead, and after rubbing my side on hers, I licked her snout and mouthed it once more. I tossed my head and laid my legs over Hope's neck in a flirting and sexy way, as is the way we once court our females and let them know we're up for some fun. I want you, I told her. She released a sweet and quiet whine and rubbed her muzzle against mine. She wanted it too. I mounted my female from behind and entered her, making her let out a pleasurable whimper. It was pure bliss. We mated for almost a full hour, and we were tied up for half an hour as my knot filled my female. I went off her and groomed her face tenderly, rumbling with so much joy. I could hardly contain myself and my love for her. Hope was also a sweet, rumbling mess. Hope. I muttered in her mind. I was mushy like a newborn pup. I know. I love you too, big boy. She replied, nuzzling my snout. We laid side by side. I felt her fluffy fur against my pelt. We were both very tired, exhausted, but I was happier than ever. We fell asleep under the shadow of thick bushes as the sun went down on the horizon. Unknown POV I picked up my phone in my pocket impatiently. My mood didn't improve at all when I saw the number on my screen and realized who was calling me. I told him to never call me like this. I couldn't risk having anyone knowing what I was planning to do. Idiot. Yes, Soren. I told you not to do it. Yes, we should meet at the outskirts of the royal pack. I said, not louder than a whisper, as I covered my phone with my hand. Wolves have acute hearing, so it was always hard to keep secrets in the pack house. He mumbled, making up excuses again. I hated the fact that I needed him, that I needed the help of a disgusting bloodsucker. Besides being a leech, he was the kind that would do any deed for money, a, a mercenary, one of the most repulsive creatures of the realms. However, it wasn't as if I had any better or other option. Soren, just keep up with your end of the deal. I grumbled before I hung up. It would be worth it. Chapter 52 A Call Hunter I let Max take control and have all the sweet time he wanted to with Hope while I was in the back of my mind. After he and our beautiful she-wolf woke up and went back to the pack castle, where Claire and I shifted back. It was intense. Claire muttered, looking slightly shocked. I let out a little chuckle and wrapped her in my arms. It was. <laughs> you did so great, sweetie. You finally pushed Hope to the surface and let her come out. I said, as I looked in awe at the small female pressed against my naked chest. We did it. She replied. Her voice sounded weak. My poor maid was looking very tired. You did most of it. I added. I couldn't do it without you both. 
I think Hope jumped out of my mind faster to be able to meet Max. Claire added with a small laugh as a little rumble vibrated on her chest. I bet Hope was still overjoyed. I scooped Claire in my arms and walked to the shower. After here, you should rest more, my sweetie. Shifting for the first time takes a heavy toll on someone, especially doing it after your heat, I said as I ran the shower sponge down her curves. I have to work. I can't let Sarah down once again. Claire. I shook my head. I'll tell Sarah that you just shifted. I'm sure she won't let you go back to work immediately, and we'll tell you to go to bed. She raised her brow. Now you both are teaming up against me? It's not fair. She added with a small giggle. I pulled her towards me and kissed her tired face. Being with her like this, doing even the most trivial and simple things with her, was pure bliss. It felt new and exciting, but familiar and right at the same time. It will feel even better after we bite our mark into this beautiful neck, Max added in my head as he sneered a weird laugh. I had to agree with him. Soon. My female and I rested more and only went downstairs in the afternoon. On the way to the dining hall, we came across a small, dark-haired Omega. I had the odd sensation that I had seen this woman before. Maybe that was only because she resembled my maid a bit. Claire! She muttered. She looked at me for an instant, before lowering her gaze once again. Mom! Claire replied as she took a step towards her mother without letting go of my hand. This is my mate, Hunter. She told the she-wolf before turning to look at me. Hunter, this is my mom, Cordelia. Claire. Hello, I'm Hunter. He reached his hand to her. She gazed at me awkwardly as if she was asking for help. I think she had never had any small talk or such a thing with an alpha and it was hard for her. I took some steps towards her and held her hand, squeezing it in reassurance. I am Cordelia, she said without looking up at him. I have to go, Claire. Alpha, she said before walking away. I took a deep breath. It would work eventually. That was... I started. Awkward, but... I hope she gets used to me and grows to like me. It's important. She is your family. He smiled slightly. I wrapped my arms around him for a moment before I gazed into his eyes. I'm going to go talk to her, I told my mate. I wanted to ease my mom into it. I know that even though she is trying to overcome this old mentality and rank limitation mindset, it was still hard for her. Nothing and no one changed overnight. I went after her, and I found her on the third floor, heading to the kitchen. Mom! I called her, and she turned around. Claire! So that is him. Are you together again? Her gaze was soft, but it held a certain worry and even a bit of sadness. I would say we are together for the first time, I replied, taking a couple of steps towards her. We are finally figuring things out. I could shift to my wolf, Hope. I'm sure she's anxious to meet you. Mom, I am finally happier, I told her. Now with my Hope totally out in the world and my mate by my side, I felt lighter, more complete, and happier than ever. Claire, I'm glad to see you happy, but... She looked away and took a deep inhale of air. I knew what she wanted to say. I knew what she feared. Mom, he won't leave me if our pup or pups are omegas. He proved himself worthy of my trust. Even if he would leave, I have you and hope. I comforted my worried mother. I understood that it was hard for her to feel otherwise, after what she had been through with her so-called mate. I think the goddess did it wrong. At least once— by mating you to such a horrible male. The words and a little sigh slipped out of my lips before I could contain them. The goddess didn't make a mistake. 
For a long time I used to believe she did, but now I can see beyond it. The goddess did it right, because that male, that mating, enabled me to have you. My mom muttered, her words filled with emotion. I wrapped my arms around her as multiple emotions overtook me. I love you, Mom, I said as a couple of tears flew down my cheeks. I love you too, my child. And if you say you trust Alpha Hunter, I'll make an effort to trust him too. But be careful. The Alphas of the Black Boar's Pack don't have such a good reputation when it comes to mates and love. My mom exhaled. I didn't know she knew anything about Hunter's Pack and its previous Alphas. I have to go to work now, she muttered. I only nodded in response. Her words drove me to a thoughtful state. After she finishes her workday later tonight, I'll ask more about it, what she meant. Maybe that was why she told me I couldn't be Hunter's mate in the first place. At that time, it felt as though my mom would rather have me as Hunter's lover and mistress than his mate. It didn't make any sense then, and it still makes no sense now. Maybe rank and prejudice aren't the only reasons behind her behavior. But one thing I knew for sure— my mother was wrong in her assumptions. Hunter wouldn't leave me if our pups would be Omegas. He won't. Even if he tries, Max wouldn't ever allow him. Oh, Claire, I'm sure I got the big bad alpha wolf wrapped around my paw. Hope muttered with a bark chuckle. I'm sure she had after last night. Honestly, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to think about it. But then, I was very happy for them both. But their coupling should remain their business only. Besides, I was extremely glad that my Hope got to see and explore the world. She was thrilled and overjoyed by every little thing, like a pup. It was absolutely cute. But I would let her run freely as soon as I have time. But now, I have to get a snack, my growling stomach reminded me so, and tomorrow I have to get back to my work routine. I went to meet Hunter in the small dining room. We both agreed to have our meals there rather than the big dining hall. He was pacing around tensely and talking on his cell phone. Yes, I am heading there immediately. Take all the females and pups to the bunker under the packhouse. Their security should be the priority. I will mind link the neighboring alphas. They will send help. He hung up aggravatedly. His face was painted with worry. He took me in his arms and exhaled sharply. I could feel a deep growl quivering in his chest. Sometimes, especially when distant wolves preferred to call each other instead of using MindLink, because reaching someone far away could be quite exhausting, and cell phones made connecting much easier. Most wolves were attuned with the technology that came from the human realm. I even heard that our Luna Queen really liked humans' music and movies. The Black Forest pack was invaded by rogue vampires. Tyler said that the news about... He said that the vampires deemed the pack vulnerable and used this time to attack it. I am leaving now and heading there. They heard about me being your Luna. Is that what Tyler said? I asked Hunter. The news did travel fast in this realm and its borders. That's what he said, Claire. It doesn't mean it's true. Maybe they just attacked it now because they heard that the Alpha was away and the Beta and Gamma were also gone for days. That is much more likely. Hunter replied. His voice was anxious with a hint of frustration. I breathed deeply. I didn't want the fact that I was Hunter's mate, I was an Omega, to endanger the wolves of the Black Forest Pack. It was dreadful. That is not on you, sweetie. It's my fault. I should have reinforced the security and patrol when I left the pack. I just never imagined my Beta and Gamma would leave it and come to the royal pack as well. He ended his sentence with something between an exhale and a growl. Hunter took my lips with his in a passionate kiss before he parted our embrace. I have to go now. Every minute is crucial. I am joining you, I replied. No, not a chance. It could be dangerous. Hunter, if you want me to be your Luna, we should face this and all other situations together. No, sweetie, it's too dangerous. We don't know if there are more rogues surrounding the pack. Besides, Hope is still a newborn wolf. 
We will face everything together in the future, but this time you should stay behind and be safe. He argued. His eyes were glowing slightly. Probably Max was fighting him for control and wanting to order me to stay. I know how alpha wolves are, how protective they naturally are with their mates. I also knew that Hunter was making a great effort to translate his instincts in rational terms and talking to me and staying in a gentle and sensible way. Max definitely is trying to do it. Alphas, they are blockheads, but a certain brown one is a hot piece of blockhead. Hope muttered in my mind before she let out a sigh whimper. No, Hunter, I have to do something for our pack. I love hearing you say, our pack, my sweet Luna. A smile found its way to his tense face, and he cupped my chin for a moment. But if you go with me, Max and I will only be concentrating on protecting you and making sure you will be okay. So I won't be able to fight and protect the pack, not at all. Stay, Claire. He added with finality and gentleness. I sighed. Fine. Be safe and take care of our pack. He pecked my lips once again before leaving. I decided to head to work, mainly to distract myself so that I didn't think about the risks and dangers Hunter and our pack would face. They will be fine, Claire. They are big alpha. Hope tried to comfort me. I knew it, but I couldn't help feeling a wave of dread that was creeping in my insides. Chapter 53 Only Darkness Hunter, I made half of the way by car and the other half running in Max's form. This way I tried to save energy for the battle and approached the surroundings of my pack without making any noise at the same time. I hated to leave my mate behind, but I knew she would be safe and sound in the pack castle. I didn't want her to face any risk ever, but especially not now that Hope was still a very young wolf and still didn't know how to protect herself. Of course, Claire and Hope won't ever need to fight for themselves alone. Max and I would always be there to protect them. Our mates, above anything. He growled in my head, and that we would always agree. I was running as fast as I could. Max's paws were hardly touching the ground as his speed was fast as the wind. We didn't just run faster than the time we were trying to get to our Claire. Tyler, how is everything? I mind-linked my beta. All the pups, females, and omegas are already safe inside the bunker. The rogues uh, retreated a bit, but Stefano is hurt. Nothing fatal or even too dangerous, but um, he is unconscious. Tyler let me know. Damn! We couldn't let anything happen to Stefano or any wolf of our pack. Okay, watch the south border. Maybe they used the first attack as a diversion and are trying to make a bigger attack through the wetlands. I told him. Tyler can be an idiot sometimes, especially in what comes to Claire. But I was sure he would take care of our pack and have its best interest always at heart. After my father left the Six Realms to the Aether, the other dimension, we both rebuilt our pack together. In the beginning, it was only the two of us and many wary wolves. I had to fight to win their trust, since most of them thought that I would be a selfish and incompetent alpha, like my father. After a few years, we met Stefano and he helped us as well. Tyler was the nephew of my father's beta and he inherited the position since his uncle didn't have any pups of his own. Tyler's uncle was a reasonable male and tried to make my father see reality and behave appropriately, but he also couldn't deal with my father's rude and inconstant mood, so he mostly spent his time outside the pack then together with us. Tyler and I didn't have anyone to guide us, stand for us, and protect us from a very young age, so we had to stay together and fend for ourselves. Tyler also was with me during my worst moments, when my father paraded his nightstand and mistresses around and made my mother go away. She left our pack when I was very young, only eight years old. At that time, I hadn't even met Max yet. She left and Tyler stayed. He could have chosen to go with his uncle to his constant travels, but he didn't. He stayed for me. 
He was a couple of years older than me, so even though I was the Alpha, he was like a big brother, too. He was there for me when my father humiliated and belittled me during my earlier years. He was always there to support me, and for a long time, he was the only one. Until I met and finally let her in. My Claire. My mate and future Luna. Unknown. Just do what I say. It isn't that complicated, Soren. I told this stupid bloodsucker. I couldn't believe he was considered one of the best mercenaries of the underworld. His credentials were why I hired him instead of someone else. But now I came to realize that he was dumb as a door. I will, he sighed. We were both walking towards the back of the pack castle, covered by the dark veil of the night, our scents covered with mud and fey herbs. We were also careful enough to take a way through the old tunnels. Not many people even knew about the tunnels, just ranked wolves. It was built to help the warriors to move around undetected, without alerting enemies in wartime. How do we do it? He asked me, before we could even enter the dark and smelly tunnels. But it was a good thing. This reek would further cover my scent and hers. You just wait in the tunnel and I will fetch the Omega, I told him, not for the first time. Wait, I think I saw someone. He halted me by placing a hand on my shoulder. I moved away from his filthy touch and looked around. All my senses were on alert. I didn't catch anything. There is no one around. The only thing I could smell was rabbit. My wolf Rolf told me. That idiot must have heard a rabbit walking around. It's nothing. Just wait here and don't make any noise. I muttered as silently as I could and pushed him into the tunnel. We shouldn't speak in the open. This way someone could actually show up and hear us. I made my way to the medical wing. It was good that I had the time to look at some old maps than the last time I'd been to this castle. I knew exactly where to go. In no time I arrived there. She was distracted, looking at some papers. I knew she would be here. She wasn't ever with the other Omegas. She thought herself better than them. That was what the other Omega, Imogen, told me, after a couple of kisses and two glasses of wine. She was gullible as a pup and easy as a dog in heat. That one would do anything to be besides a ranked wolf. I knew that, in the end, Omegas were all like this. They only saw rank and a way to climb in the Pax Pyramid. The Omega, Claire, stood up and was looking around while I observed her from the small holes of the tunnel opening. It was almost like a secret passageway. I got my gloves and a piece of cloth with a lot of chloroform and a little wolfbane. I wouldn't take any risks. This time, it had to work. Claire Sarah left a few minutes ago, but I still had some records to organize, and I wanted to compensate for the days I left her working alone. Besides, I could use some distraction and control my urge to mind link Hunter often, asking if he and the pack were okay. He had to focus on arriving there as fast as possible and protecting the pack. Having me mumbling inside his mind would be of no help. I wish we were there with him, too. Hope muttered. All of a sudden, I smelled something weird. An unfamiliar smell of herbs and maybe even some mud entered my nostrils. Definitely mud, Hope agreed. I stood up and looked around, trying to find the source of the reek, when I heard a little scratchy noise. What could that be? There was nothing or no one around, it seemed like the sound had left the walls. It made no sense. Hope was still a young wolf. She has heightened senses, but not as much as a mature wolf would. Only in three years, she would become completely mature. Another unfamiliar noise made a cold shiver run down my spine, and I decided to leave the clinic. My instincts told me that something was definitely wrong. However, when I was walking towards the door with careful but fast steps, someone grabbed me from behind. The nauseating smell became overwhelming, making my throat clog. Before I could react, try to shift, or even scream, a tissue smelling like chloroform and wolfbane was pressed against my nose. 
I turned around as I felt my head throbbing and my body getting heavier. I forced my eyelids open for an instant. You. A weak whimper left my mouth before I collapsed, before everything around went pitch black and I couldn't hear anything. Not even hope anymore. No hope. Only darkness. Chapter 54 Memories of the Black Forest Cordelia I closed my eyes and the memories came back, clear as if it had all happened yesterday instead of more than twenty years ago. The Black Forest Pack Only hearing its name brought me many hurtful memories and made my heart clench. Among all the wolves of the realm, Claire had to be fated mates with their alpha with Alpha Damien's son. I would rather have her mated to a pixie. It was almost twenty-five years ago, a couple of months after I first moved to the Black Forest Pack to be together with my fated mate. It was the first time I had been to the pack house. Luckily, all in all, I had been there only a couple of times. It wasn't a good or comfortable place to be. Everyone looked quite worked up and tense all the time. I think that is what happens when a pack doesn't have a good leader. That day, my first day in the pack house, I was in the kitchen helping the Omega staff. They were short-handed, too much to do and too few wolves for the job. I prepared my specialty deer pie. I really wanted to cause a good impression, show my new Alpha and Luna that I was good and hard-working. And should I do something special for the Luna? I asked one of the kitchen girls. What, Luna? She asked back, arching her brow at me slightly. Doesn't this pack have a Luna? But I thought that Alpha Damien had an heir. I muttered, confused. She pulled me aside to the storage room, closed the door, and whispered for my ears only. Our Alpha is very special. He wasn't good to his mate, and it made her leave the pack. Actually, he is much better with his mistresses than the former Luna. He covered his lovers with jewelry, money, and even made us and the poor Luna now bow down to them. Can you imagine it? The whole pack had to bow down to a couple of Omegas, just like you and me, while the Alpha laughed to his contentment. It was better being his mistress than his mate. Oh, was the only thing I could muster. As far as I knew, all wolves worshipped their females all except my mate. But that time, I understood him. I was nothing more than a huge shame for him, and even his kin. I wondered why the goddess mated me to such a male. But above anything, I felt the overwhelming connection. I didn't like him, but I loved him. You could try your luck as the Alpha's mistress. I saw the way he was eyeing you earlier today. The girl smiled. I would do it, but I don't have the right looks. I... I am mated. It's up to you. She shuddered. By the way, there is something special we can do for the Alpha's mistress. The two of them. Miss Grazie likes lobster and caviar, and Miss Andrica likes Faye's purple potatoes and unicorn meat. Those were very special and odd requests. I didn't even know that consuming unicorn meat was allowed. The Black Forest Pack was indeed very different. How I miss the Royal Pack. How I missed home. I breathed deeply. I would have to adapt and get used to it, win my mate's heart. I was glad we lived in the outskirts of the pack instead of in its main villa. This way I could avoid the nasty Alpha's attention. I should tell Claire everything. Not that it was relevant or would make her change her mind about her Alpha. However, I should tell her anyway. Tell her his name, all about him, Show her the single photo I have of him. He might be a bad male, but he was still her father, at least in blood. He didn't even want to give her his last name. He said she wasn't a pup, but an Omega. Another sour memory. The day he learned she was an Omega, he sneaked me and my infant to the pack clinic in the middle of the night, silent and undercover like a thief. He insisted for Claire to have a complete examination, not because he cared about her health. 
He wanted to know what she was, if she was like me. It's hard to see it in tiny pups because all the pups smell wolfless. Their wolves are still underdeveloped. So we went to the clinic, and after the doctor told us about Claire, that she was like me, Jonas rejected me on the spot and shoved me and my baby away. I had to find my way back to the royal pack, to my family. That was when I met Alpha Hunter. At the time, he was still the only Alpha's heir. I remember his gray eyes. Hey, you let it fall, he said as he ran towards me with a small baby's nappy. He was only a teenaged wolf at that time. Wolves don't age and live forever, apart from us Omegas, of course. So earlier today, he didn't look much different than 22 years ago. I looked up at him for the glimpse of an instant before casting my eyes down. Alpha, thank you, I muttered. I was broken, and I had an infant in my arms. The last thing I needed was more problems. I just went away and got a ride to the royal pack. The head Omega of the pack was kind enough to take me and my baby in her car to take us home. That was the last time I had been at that ominous pack. That was the last time I saw him, my mate. But I came back home with something precious, something that was worth everything, every heartbreak, my little bundle, my daughter. I wish I could have let go of the bitterness and focused on the sweetness of having her earlier. It took me distance and almost losing the opportunity to have my Claire in my life to learn it, to try it. But it is what it is. Tomorrow I would talk to her during lunch break, get to know her mate, and give him a chance. This time, even though I was afraid for my daughter, I would also take a leap of hope. Claire I opened my eyes slowly and blinked twice, trying to adjust to the light. I was feeling quite dizzy. My head was throbbing, and I didn't know what was happening. I looked around, trying to recognize the place I was at. It was a dark place. Only a small lamp hung from the ceiling. The room was not very small, but it was quite empty. Only a table and chair could be seen, and around me was four wooden walls. The place didn't look familiar. I was sure I had never been here before. I tried to recall what happened. Chloroform and wolfbane. Hope? I called my wolf, but no response came. Was she hurt or asleep? A cold pang of fear cursed through my blood. I swallowed hard and tried to move. My body still felt quite heavy. Tyler, Hunter's beta. He was the last thing I saw before fainting. He was the one who took me and brought me here. What did he want with me? If his goal was to avoid that I mated with Hunter at any costs, why didn't he kill me instead of bringing me here? I stood up slowly since my legs were still very wobbly. My arms and legs weren't restricted, of course. He didn't fear that a small and powerless Omega would help herself and escape. He was square wrong. I tried to reach Hope once again. Reaching her, talking to her would be the solution for all my problems. I wouldn't only make sure that she was okay, but also be able to mind-link Hunter, any wolf of my pack, even Tor, and ask for help. But she was still silent, and I could hardly feel her, just like the time she was buried inside my mind. I breathed deeply to calm myself and try to think straight. She could be fine, just weakened by the wolfbane. I took a few slow steps towards the door and placed my ear against it, trying to listen for something, any noise or any sign that Tyler was around. Not being able to use Hope's heightened hearing would make it very hard, but I tried anyway. I couldn't listen to anything. I wrapped my hand around the door's knob and turned it tentatively. Tyler didn't even lock the door. He really believed I was the easiest prey possible. I opened it slowly, quietly, and took a few tentative steps outside. I was in some sort of wooden cabin in the woods. It wasn't any place I could recognize, so nowhere close to the pack town, or even the river. Was I even in the royal pack? I had no way to know. 
There was another dim lighted lamp hanging from the ceiling of the porch, moving forward and back like a pendulum. This cabin was an abandoned and secluded place, I guess. I walked around the porch where the light couldn't reveal my form and took a deep breath before squeezing myself to fit between two of the fence posts. I left the place without making a sound. I took a few steps towards the forest when I heard someone's voice. Even without Hope's sense, I knew for a fact that the male speaking didn't smell like a wolf. It wasn't Tyler. Yes, I am going there after I finish it here. I don't know why, but he told me to wait. Maybe he wants to tell the she-wolf something or do something with her before. I don't know, but we should be there by tomorrow morning. I don't know anything about the other guys. I will be there when I am there. Stop rushing me. He stopped speaking. I think he was on the phone with someone and apparently didn't hear me. He was planning to take me somewhere after he, who I presume was Tyler, would do something to me. A rush of panic made my blood freeze and my head throb further. I swallowed hard. I had to run away. I had to find my way back home, my way to anywhere without being caught. I breathed deeply and tried to gather all my energy, all my strength. I had to escape. Otherwise, I doubt I would ever see my mate, my mom, and my friends ever again. I took silent steps into the forest, into the night, into the unknown. Chapter 55 A Second Chance Mate Unknown point of view, 25 years ago. I saw my father entering Alpha Damien's office. It was odd to see him here. He hasn't been around for quite some time. Since my mother died when I was ten, my father grew depressed and distant. It was a normal thing after one lost a mate, especially a fated mate. It was a pain, hard to overcome. For the last months, father had been away, with my uncle and the beta, around other packs. When I mind-linked him last time, he didn't sound so gloomy anymore. But he wouldn't tell me anything. We rarely had real talks. My only way to find out what was happening was by eavesdropping, so I placed my ear against the cold surface of the door. Funny to see you out of your new den since you moved to the outskirts of the pack. I have rarely seen you around. <laughs> Didn't you miss your alpha? Alpha Damien asked with his habitual taunting tone. He was a repulsive and dreadful male. Alpha Damien has been a nightmare for his own son, my best friend Hunter, and for me too. We always stick together, and one day soon we would become the Alpha and Beta of this pack. Just after our plan works, Hunter will fight his father for the Alpha title and win. It won't be that hard. Hunter and I have trained as much as possible, and his father isn't in good shape. He uses all his time to drink, bed omegas, and do other things that I don't even want to imagine. Alpha Damien, I have been busy, that was all, and now that Tyler is grown up, he doesn't need my presence that often anymore. I heard my father replying. It's not like you have been really around, not after Marguerite died at least. What are we without <laughs> hot pieces of female around? Speaking of that, that little Omega with you earlier today, she doesn't look bad. Bring her here, to the pack mansion, more often. Alpha Damien's words of lust filled me with deep disgust. I had to contain myself and my wolf, Rolf, not to growl or vomit. I could already taste the bile coming up my throat. No! Alpha, please don't. My father stuttered. His voice was broken and weak. Why wouldn't I? I am the Alpha of this pack. Alpha Damien barked out. Because she is my mate. He said bitterly. I could hear in his voice how he dreaded every word. I heard my father exhaling sharply. I guess the words escaped him. His deepest secret was now out. A secret that no one knew, not even me. I only hoped it could stay this way, forever. 
I had to hold myself not to fall down. A rush of cold blood went up to my face. I was livid. How could my father have a second chance mate and an Omega above all? A disgusting and low Omega, just like the ones, the dogs, our Alpha parades around. That must be a joke. Rolf growled in aggravation inside my head. He hated it as much as I did. It can't be true, Tyler. We, you, can't even be related to an Omega, not even by any family relation gourd. He barked, pacing around my mind. I forced myself to focus on the exchange that was happening on the other side of the door once again. Your mate! <laughs> An Omega! I saw you treating her as a mistress! The Alpha asked, sounding surprised. No one can know about it. That would ruin my reputation, even affect my son. My father's voice was quiet. I almost couldn't catch his words. Alpha Damien burst into laughter. You went from a beta blood to an omega! <laughs> that is hilarious! The goddess is a mocking monkey, isn't she? <laughs> and a second chance, mate. So rare. <laughs> I've never even heard about it. <laughs> I've never even heard about it. His first mate, my mother, had beta blood. His second mate could hardly be considered a wolf, an omega. I guess I am lucky, my father remarked, sarcastically. <laughs> you see, I could tell everyone and have a good laugh. <laughs> People could use a good laugh. Alpha, please don't. I, I would do anything for you to keep it between us. I never heard my father sound like this. I could even picture him going to his knees and asking Alpha Damien for it. More and more humiliation. It was what one becomes. A shame. A joke. After one gets an Omega as a mate. Anything. I am listening. But what would you have to offer me? Everything was a big joke for that prick of an Alpha. My father didn't say a word. The only sounds I could hear for the next couple of minutes were his unsteady breath and his slightly racing heart for the next couple of minutes. I... I have some information. We take a... blood oath. I tell you something that is quite important, crucial, for you. And you swear to never reveal my secret to anyone. My father said, hesitantly. The Alpha let out a maniac laugh once again. <laughs> You see, someone always has something to offer. <laughs> Alpha Damien sounded amused. You have to swear to not hurt or banish me or the boys as well. Then I can tell you. Hmm, ain't you good in doing bargains? Fine, I will do that. But your information has to be good, or at least very entertaining. Otherwise, I will bed that Omega of yours. Your mate. The mockery in his voice was piercing. That repulsive male. Fine. My father agreed immediately. I guess he didn't really care for his Omega. Why would he? But why in the sixth pit of hell did he put his mark on her? Why he didn't keep her as a mistress? as everyone else does. It would still be repulsive, but less stupid and shameful. I would never touch any of these filthy creatures. I knew well how they were and what they wanted. The Alpha made me bow down to his Omegas and even serve their food more than once, and the heartless bitches only mocked and laughed at my discomfort. I heard some noises, and a couple of minutes later, Alpha Damien pronounced the ritualistic words to create a blood oath. I swear, by the magic that runs in my blood, and by it, I am now bound to not tell anyone about this wolf's Omega, mate. And not hurting or banishing him, Tyler and Hunter. I swear, by the magic that runs in my blood, and by it, I am now bounded. That I have important information, and if what I have to say doesn't hold any relevance... I agree that Alpha Damien beds my mate. Now spill it out. You know I could use my Alpha voice on you and get you to tell me. 
But what will be the fun of it? <laughs> Alpha Damien said. Hunter and Tyler are gathering supporters within the pack. The Gamma's son and others have already joined them, promised that they would back up their cause. They are doing this because Hunter wants to challenge you for the Alpha title. His secret was worth betraying his own son? I would hate that anyone knew about his mating situation. I would dread it. But he just ratted on me and Hunter like this, in one of the only times I entrusted him with the truth and told him our plans and tried to get his support. Was being ratted out, having Hunter's and my plans ruined, and facing a punishment worse than having people knowing that my father has mated and marked an Omega? I wasn't sure. Both things sounded equally horrible. But on the other hand, the disgraceful Alpha Damien couldn't live forever, and soon the pack would go to Hunter's hands anyway. So, I guess my father did the right thing. Now his secret was safe. Alpha Damien laughed once again. <laughs> Those ungrateful mongrels. They will spend a good couple of months in the dungeon. But no hurt shall come to them. Just a good time of reflection between the cold old walls and dog food. That will show them their places. The Gamma Son, on the other hand, he will be banished. I felt very bad for the Gamma Son. He was a good wolf. But sometimes we have to pay a high price and sacrifice other people to protect ourselves. Having him banished, facing Alpha Damien's punishment, was the price to pay to keep the honor of my family intact. Tyler, now. I could smell her. The sneaky little Omega escaped the cabin without making a noise. Just like a rat goes around the sewage. That stupid vampire couldn't even watch the damn cabin. One simple task and he failed. <sighs> I took a lungful of air, steadying myself and Rolf. I couldn't snap the bloodsucker's neck now or anytime soon, unfortunately. I also couldn't kill the Omega. Hunter would feel it. Even though their mate bond has not been consolidated, he would suffer. Besides, I had other plans for the Omega. I approached her as fast as Rolf and I could. She didn't even see me coming. I grabbed her arm and spun her around. Are you going somewhere, Omega? I asked, narrowing my eyes at her. She gasped. Her eyes went wide, and I could hear her desperate breathing and her hammering heart. I could smell her fear, her anxiety. The same reaction every prey has when they are caught. Game over, Omega. Chapter 56 Betrayal and Silence Claire Tyler started dragging me to the cabin by holding my arm firmly. As I tried to squirm and pull away, it didn't help a lot. I was still dizzy, weak, and very tired. Stop moving! He complained. Why are you doing this, Tyler? I replied as I pulled back trying to dig my feet into the slightly wet earth and keep it in place. You know I will take you there anyway. Why do you always have to be such a headache? He asked, annoyed. So now I am the headache? You kidnapped me. Don't you call me a headache. Just shut up! He yelled, tightening his hold on me. After struggling and listening to my protests, he succeeded in taking me into the cabin and pushed me inside it. I almost fell onto the floor face first. If I hadn't broken my fall by steadying my hands on the wooden floor, Tyler closed the door behind him. Now he and the other male would watch me closely. I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't be able to escape this place without hope. I tried to reach her again. This time, instead of silence, I only heard a low whimper. She was in pain. Wolfbane can be very painful and even dangerous for young wolves like her. My poor wolf. But it also meant she would wake up soon. I couldn't stop thinking, wondering why Tyler was doing this to me, and more than that, what he intended to do to me and how was the other male involved in this. Hunter. When I arrived at my pack, I didn't find Tyler. 
I only found a still unconscious Stefano and a distressed Sunday. The border patrollers informed me that some vampires were still rounding our borders, but most of them didn't even enter the werewolf realm yet. I went to the infirmary, where Stefano was resting with the doctor and Sunday. What happened? I asked the brunette she-wolf. I don't know. He was running in his wolf form while I was resting inside the house. He took quite long to come back, and I heard the alarm sounding and people talking about the rogue attacks, so I went to try to find him. He was behind some bushes, already shifted back to his human form, and had this injury in his head. She said, without taking her eyes off Stefano's unconscious form. I inhaled deeply. Doctor? He will recover soon. He just has to rest. Was a very uncommon injury, I must say. Someone threw a heavy object onto his head from above. Apparently his attacker intended to injure only, rather than kill him. He explained. I scrubbed my hands over my heart and face in aggravation. What the hell was happening? I went to the Border Patrol main booth once again. I had to go around with them and check the rogues' position. I had to find Tyler. He might be injured as well. I had already called Tor. He was on his way. He would meet me around the southern border as soon as possible. I tried to mind Link Claire first thing in the morning, but she and Hope weren't answering. It's hard to mind Link others when they are distant, especially for young wolves like Hope. Max muttered in my mind, but he was as unsettled as me, doing his pacing around. We both wanted to make sure Hope and Claire were okay. Time passed and the rogues kept surrounding our lands, making it as if they would attack our pack and invade our borders once again. But they didn't make any further move. I tried to mind-link Tyler several times, without success. I was growing worried about him. In the middle of the morning, Tor finally arrived. I was quite surprised to see he was approaching the patrol booth with Katie by his side. Tor, why did you take so long? I asked him as I narrowed my eyes. I was grateful he came, but if we would be under a more aggressive attack, he would have been too late. I turned to look at the brunette she-wolf. Kate, what are you doing in my pack? After what you did, after ratting my mate and me out to Alpha Fergus. Max was growling insanely inside my head, and some of his growls left my mouth as well. What? You are an idiot to assume I did it. I would never do it, Hunter. She retorted with narrowed eyes and a frown. My jaw locked and my hands clenched in fists. The nerve of this female. Of course, Max and I would never hurt a female. But we were both beyond furious. A commanding growl broke through my chest. You are in my pack. Show some respect. So why were you with Alpha Fergus in the dining hall on the meeting day? I don't owe you any explanation, especially after you accused me like this. I wasn't with Alpha Fergus. I was with his Luna, Luna Lara. She is my friend. I didn't know what that Alpha was talking about, and I had no idea how he got the information he did. But now I could say I have a good guess. I furrowed my eyes at Katie warily. I am listening. What did she mean? A guess. Listen to her, it's quite important, Tora added. He was looking tired and worried. Yesterday, I was running in my wolf form when I heard a weird conversation and smelled a vampire. I dismissed it. After all, not all vampires are bad and invaders. But today, I went to the Royal Pack Clinic first thing in the morning. I met a distressed Sarah. She was looking for your mate, Claire, everywhere. Since Claire was unlikely late, she even went to Claire's room and didn't find her. Sarah said that Claire's bed was untouched, so I put things together. Racking my brain, I realized that the one I saw talking to the vampire yesterday was probably your beta, the tall male with dark hair. They were walking around the back of the castle in a rather suspicious way and talking about fetching the Omega. I think your beta has something to do with Claire's disappearance 
And probably he was the one to tell Alpha Fergus about your intentions to make Claire your mate and Luna. I always thought he was a rather strange male, and the empathetic way he tried to tell me to be your chosen mate. Something didn't sound right. That is why I came here to tell you that. I met her on the way to your pack and I told her where to meet you. I called Sarah. There are already some border patrollers looking for Claire. I am joining the searches. Tor added. I covered my face with both hands and inhaled deeply. My head was going a thousand miles. Tyler wasn't here. I couldn't reach him. He always opposed Claire so much, too much. I couldn't believe that my best friend, my brother, could go to such an extent to prevent me to be with my fated mate with the female I loved. Hunter. Katie's soft voice brought me back from my shock state. I shook my head and swallowed the thick lump that just formed in my throat. Thank you, Katie. Sorry for accusing you. We have to find Claire Tor. Now! I told him. He nodded, and the three of us walked away from the booth. I would mind-link the patrollers and ask them to keep watching for the rogues. In the meanwhile, I just could focus on one thing, finding my Luna. I didn't know what was louder, my hammering heart or Max's growls. Claire. I stayed by the door trying to listen to them, to any sign, any noise, something that could help me to understand what that insane wolf had in mind, what he intended to do to me. After some minutes, I heard a heated discussion, something that made my blood freeze even further. Soren, you have to do it! Tyler's voice was firm, almost commanding. I could hear it better now. They were close by, probably by the porch. Now that Hope was a bit better, I could catch a tad of his smell. The other male, Soren, was a vampire. The mating part I could do. It was never part of the deal, having to mark a she-wolf as mine. I don't like dogs. I won't do it. The vampire barked out. After you do it, you can do anything you want with her. I don't care. You just have to mark her before. I will pay you triple the amount we agreed on. Tyler insisted. I felt my heart stop for a second as beads of cold sweat ran down my neck. I gulped hard, trying to blink, trying to think steadily once again. I pressed my back against the wooden wall in an attempt to support my numb body. That was his plan? That was why he didn't kill me? He wanted to make this vampire mark and mate me? This way my bond with Hunter would be severed. He couldn't succeed. I reached for my wolf once again. She whimpered twice. This time, she sounded louder. She was recovering. As a young wolf, she would need quite some time to come back. Mind-linking someone distant was very hard for a newborn wolf, let alone one that had just been poisoned with wolfbane. I just had one option. No one could mark an unconscious male or female. The mark wouldn't stick, so my mate bond with Hunter wouldn't be broken. The vampire's mark wouldn't be anything more than a nasty bite. I just had to find a way to turn my mind down and gain time. Give hope time to recover. I closed my eyes and concentrated, trying to talk to Hope. Make her listen to me. Hope, dear, I know you are very weak, but can you try to push my mind to unconsciousness, please? I asked her as I sent silent prayers to the goddess. That would require much less energy than mind blinking. It was our only option, our only way to gain time. Please, Hope, listen to me. Chapter 57 the choice was made. Claire. Hope, dear, I know you are very weak, but can you try to push my mind to unconsciousness, please? I asked her as I sent silent prayers to the goddess. That would require much less energy than mind linking. It was our only option, our only way to gain time. Hope only whimpered in response, but soon I could feel my senses getting numb and I fell out of consciousness. It worked. I was there now, inside my mind, surrounded by silence. 
I could only see Hope's trembling form in a dark corner. She was laid on her side, looking like she was in pain and hopeless. I wrapped my arms around her and placed her head on my lap. Thank you so much, I muttered softly. Hope's ears stirred up and she tried to whimper in response, but I shushed her. Rest. You will feel better soon, I cooed running my fingers through her fluffy, light caramel fur. We were in this together. We would find a way. We had to. Even though I was unconscious, deep inside my own mind, I could hear some noises. After I didn't know how long, I heard approaching steps and male voices. I had to concentrate hard to discern their words. She is sleeping, Tyler said before someone probably him, started to shake me up roughly. After some time, he placed me on the floor once again. Fuck, this Omega isn't waking up. We need her awake for the marking and mating. He exhaled deeply in frustration. Besides being with a werewolf, I have to get a wolfless one. The vampire muttered with disgust. They didn't know about hope. They didn't know I could possibly mind blink and shift. I wasn't sure if Tyler knew about her before hearing the vampire's words, but now with this confirmation, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I could use this in my favor. It's better like this. This way she won't bite you. You got enough money to stop grumbling, Soren. Tyler uttered impatiently. Now we just have to wait for her to decide to wake up from this weird semi-comatose state. He sighed. The voices finally disappeared, and I was left alone in silence again as I looked around at the dark place in my mind I was at now. I breathed deeply and covered my tear-stained face with both hands before burying my face in Hope's fur. How I missed her sassy remarks and her cute, funny smile. I hugged her tightly. I could only hope she could recover fast before it was too late. Hunter, we got into an SUV and went immediately to the Royal Pack, trying to get any sign, any clue that could show where Claire was. I was worried sick, and Max was going feral, growling non-stop inside my head. I wanted to run instead of getting into a stupid car, Max protested. Maybe running in Max's form could be a tad faster, but I was afraid that if I shifted, Max would take control and lose his shit completely, even get dangerous. I wouldn't be able to do anything to stop the unrestricted wolf. He wouldn't allow me to. Wolves can go full-fledged feral when their mates are at risk and even get a tad insane, representing a danger to those around. I am not going feral! growled my feral wolf, scratching the corners of my mind with his piercing claws. We will find her, Hunter, Tor tried to reassure me, but he was also a nervous wreck himself, jaw locked in a lost gaze. He really cared about Claire. It was good that he dismissed the idea of having her as more than a friend. I would be glad to have him as Claire's friend. Having someone else to protect my mate was a great benefit. I could push my possessiveness aside to ensure her protection and well-being. I hoped Tor could find his mate soon and move on completely, though. My eyes traveled to Katie on the driver's seat. She was driving and she was an awesome driver, going as fast as possible and safe. I misjudged her. Katie, I am sorry, I muttered. Save it for later when your mate is safe and sound. She replied looking at me from the rear mirror. Without her, I wouldn't even know what was possibly happening to my mate. I owe her a lot. Tyler. I had a hard time believing he would do such a thing, endanger my Luna. Fuck! I was such an idiot to trust him, to listen to him. He was a rankest jerk, just like his father. I just didn't know that he could take his prejudice to a criminal extent, to the point that he would deprive his so-called best friend of the female that holds the other part of my soul. We will have his head as a decoration in the living room, Max muttered. He was indeed losing it. If it all came to be true, what was very likely the case, 
I also wanted Tyler away forever, and maybe even wanted his blood. But Max's bizarre thoughts were going a bit too far. No heads in my living room. Was Tyler doing it out of prejudice only? Jealousy that I found my mate, and he didn't find his? Or was there something else there? I clenched my eyes shut as fear, desperation, confusion, and anger crept in my insides, took my mind to overdrive. I didn't know I could feel even more desperate than in that stupid Alpha's meeting. At least there, in the meeting, my mate was by my side, at the reach of my hands. Now I didn't even know how and where she was. The only and little comfort I had was that I knew she was alive. If she had died, I would have felt an excruciating pain. Even though our mate bond wasn't consolidated yet, our souls have already connected, recognized each other. They still urged to be intertwined with one another. It would happen. Soon. I would find her and become one with my sweetie. Only the thought of losing her made Max start whimpering like never before. Actually, I think I've never heard him whimper at all. His head was low between his paws, and the big bad wolf was all cries. I followed suit as tears of desperation ran down my face. It was the first time I cried since my mother left the pack when I was eight years old. My father told me to stop, saying that alphas never cry. But I would cry for her, for my Luna, and I wasn't ashamed of it. I had to have Claire in my arms, know about her. I just knew she was alive and unreachable. Claire. After I don't know how long, I felt myself slipping out of my unconscious state. I tried to hold on to hope, hug her tighter in an attempt to remain here in the depths of my mind with her. She was still half asleep, but her jaw wasn't tense with pain anymore. She seemed much more relaxed, just tired. Those were signs that the wolfbane in her blood was fading, and its effects would reduce exponentially in the next hours. But I had no next hours to wait. Hope, please, try to keep me here in our mind a bit longer. I asked her. She wasn't hearing. She was sleeping deeper now. What was good for her recovery, but bad for our overall predicament? I started feeling the cold temperature inside this cabin and the hard floor against my back. My body stirred inadvertently. I was waking up. I planned to start pretending that I was still sleeping, but they would notice it. Vampires and wolves could say if you were sleeping or not by the way you breathe, and even your heart rate. I opened my eyes a bit, tentatively, trying to peek at my surroundings. They weren't here. I let out the thread of breath I didn't even know I was holding. But soon, my little relief was replaced by another cold wave of desperation as the vampire entered the cabin. My, my, look who is awake. Isn't it my new bride? He mocked. I swallowed hard at his words. As my heart stopped for a second, my blood was freezing, and it made time freeze inside my mind for a moment. There was no sense in pretending anymore. I didn't know what to do. Tyler! Come here! The vampire screamed. After I could get back to my senses and snap back from my despair-induced haze, Tyler entered the cabin. The Omega finally decided to wake up. We have no time to lose. He stated, looking down at me. I was still lying by a corner of the cabin, the same place I was when my wolf pushed me to unconsciousness. Wait, Tyler, talk to me. Why are you doing this? My voice sounded broken and throaty. I didn't know how thirsty I was until now. He inhaled sharply, impatiently, and ran his hand through his dark hair. Did you actually believe you would win? He asked. His eyes narrowed at me, held an expression of loathing. Win what? I asked as I sat up slowly to avoid getting dizzy. You won't become a Luna, mate with an Alpha. That is an abnormality, an aberration that challenges nature itself. 
that's all it's about? You hate me only because I'm an Omega? I asked, trying at the same time to understand the situation and gain some time. I don't hate you. I just know how disgusting your kind is. Not only because it's more than enough. He retorted with so much emphasis and anger in each word that he was almost spitting. Something occurred to me. What Hunter told me about his father. Is that because of the way Hunter's father behaved with the Omegas of his pack? That's on him. I started. You know nothing about it. It's not like he did it by himself. Those parasite whores did it too. And now one of them is trying to further disgrace our pack. A pack that Hunter and I took almost two decades to rebuild. No, this is not happening. He retorted. To what extent prejudice could blind someone? It was shocking and revolting. Now I was at the mercy of this rankest monster without my wolf to help me. I took a deep breath trying to calm my racing heart and steady it in my ribs. I was feeling as if my heart could just escape out from my mouth at any minute now. I had to stay grounded. Panicking won't help me. Tyler, I'm not. I don't want to ruin or harm your pack. Not at all. Shut up, Omega. I won't hear you. What you want doesn't matter. You would ruin it anyway, wanting or not. The problem is who... What you are! He barked out. Rage rolled off his body in hot waves. His eyes were shining slightly, and thick spurs of hair were growing on his arm. His wolf was also riled up. His wolf was just like him. I swallowed the nervous lump that just formed in my throat and stood up slowly without looking down. I could see well that there was no talking or arguing with him. He was pure hatred. Are you trying to escape again, my runaway bride? The vampire asked me. The word bride coming from his mouth made my stomach churn. I am not, and I won't ever be your bride. I stated firmly, that would never happen. If the Alpha King or the other Alphas would want me to mark and mate with a male, they could force, compel me to do so using their alpha voices that would be absolutely sickening but theoretically possible those two on the other hand couldn't bark any undeniable command you will you have no option tyler said bitterly i pressed my back against the wall but wouldn't cower away not even facing fear not even when my insides were telling me to i would never give up fighting fighting for me for my wolf for my life and my bond with Hunter. What will you tell Hunter? What would he say when he learns about what you were doing? I asked. Ain't you annoying and curious? He won't. He will feel the bond break and read your letters and realize that you are a slut and decided to go away with another male. Tyler's voice was dry. Neither he nor anyone else would believe that. I countered. Of course they will. Everyone knows how promiscuous your kind is. You just have to see something gold, a rank, a powerful male, and you open your legs. He replied while the vampire let out a burst of laughter. His words made me cringe as my breath hitched in my throat. So that was his flawless plan? He was indeed an idiot that thinks he knows everything about Omegas just because he hates us so much. That's not true. They know that. Besides, they know I'm not... I trailed off. You are different. You are not like this. All of you say the same. He interrupted me. He let out a humorless laugh. <laughs> now cooperate and write these letters. One to your beloved Sarah and another one to your family. You will tell them that you found a better male, a vampire noble, and left with him. Tyler instructed. Of course he knew I was close to the Luna's Beta Sarah. The vampire laughed at Tyler's words. He surely was no noble. If you cooperate, you won't get hurt, and it will all be over fast. Tyler added. I growled. It wasn't a wolf's growl. It was me. I won't write anything. I won't cooperate. I snapped. I wasn't only frightened. 
I was enraged. His sickening words made a burning anger rise in my insides. If you don't do it, I will have to kill you. He replied, shooting me a dirty stare as he took a few slow and menacing steps in my direction. Do it. I won't ever agree with it. I won't be this vampire's mate. He won't have me. If you want to get rid of me, you will have to kill me. I would rather die free than be forced to mate with this vampire and become his slave or any other horrible thing he had in mind. My choice was already made. Chapter 58 Wait for me Claire Do it! I won't ever agree with it. I won't be this vampire's mate. I won't let him have me. If you want to get rid of me, you will have to kill me. I said with resolve. Of course, I was afraid, and I wanted to live, but not like this. I would rather die free than be forced to mate with this vampire and become his slave or any other horrible thing he had in mind. Tyler's dark eyes, and even the vampire's reddish ones, were open widely. His jaw even dropped. I could say with certainty that he didn't expect that. I said I will kill you if you don't do what I said. He uttered slowly, as if he was trying to make a little child understand something. I heard you, and I repeat what I said. I won't do it. If you want to get rid of me... You will have to kill me. I sounded much more determined than I actually felt. Think about what you are saying. If you die, how sad would it be for your family? You will make Hunter feel pain. Is that what you want? To make people suffer? He asked. His voice was softer. I could see that he was making a great effort to sound calm. Me? You are the one threatening my life. If any suffering is brought upon anyone, it's on you, not on me. I snapped back. This male was out of his mind. I see I have no choice. He muttered in frustration underneath his breath. Luckily, Hunter didn't lose his mind completely and he didn't mark you after the Alpha's meeting, regardless of how much you must have begged him. Tyler said bitterly as his face contorted in an expression of disgust. I cringed at his words. He didn't know me. He didn't know anything about me. Yet he insisted on keeping on assuming and judging me, using all the resentment and hatred he had for Omegas. Oh, goddess, please help me. I closed my eyes for a few seconds and prayed silently. We shouldn't waste her delicious blood. I can kill her after my meal. The nasty vampire said as he looked at me and licked his thin lips, making my stomach revolve violently. No. Tyler declared, shooting him a disgusted look. That's the least you can do for me after you tried to drop me into taking this she-wolf as my mate. The vampire grumbled, also throwing daggers at Tyler. Maybe I could try to improve my odds to leave this place. Oh, Tyler, you really tricked and played the bloodsucker, as if he was a marionette. I said, forcing a little laugh. Tyler's gaze traveled to me and he was half frowning, half looking lost. Shut up, Omega! He barked out. Damn, the little she-wolf is right. What do you think I am? Do you think I am an idiot? As he asked, taking a slow, calculated step towards Tyler. I guess it's exactly what he thinks. I observed. The vampire sneered and spit at Tyler. It was working. Don't you see that this Omega is playing with your mind, you idiot? Go, drink from her. Do whatever the hell you want with her. Tyler said as sheer desperation overtook me once again. My breath was fast like a praise. I couldn't go through it, becoming a vampire's meal once again. Soren turned to me, fixing his eyes on my trembling neck and smiled. Aren't you a cunning little thing? A real bitch? He asked. We won't be the meal of any nasty vamp, Claire. I heard Hope's weak voice in my mind. Hunter. At the Royal Pack, Tor, Katie, and I joined the patrollers that were looking for Claire. Katie insisted on joining and trying to help. 
Max tried to catch Claire's scent around. We were running, going anywhere around 12 miles from the castle perimeter, looking for clues, signs, but we couldn't get anything. Max couldn't even catch a hint of my Luna's sweet smell. He and I, too, were getting even closer to going feral, to losing it for good. We also tried to mind link her and hope once again, now that we were likely closer to her, but it didn't work. I also tried to mind link Tyler, but the mind link channel was closed. That fucking miserable prick. He indeed did it. A small part of me, a fraction of me, was still denying the stinky truth. But I could do it no more. I shifted back to my human form before Max got even more aggravated and prevented me from doing it again anytime soon. Hunter, it feels like hope is asleep. Max grunted in my mind. Fuck! I didn't know what to do. I kicked a stone on my way with might, making it fly far away. I couldn't believe there were only five patrollers on the job. All of them, every one, should join the search. She was in danger. No one knew anything about her whereabouts and what could happen to her in the gap of a few minutes. I huffed, aggravated, as I started pacing around in the same restless way Max was doing inside my mind. Why doesn't the king send more patrollers? I asked, no one specifically. Sarah just told me that she, Beta, Lucas, and three more guards are joining. I'm desperate and losing it too, Hunter, but we are trying. No! I snapped as my hands reached up to my hair. I wanted to pull it away, to do any and everything to soothe this desperation to find my Claire. Hunter, please try to think straight. Calm down and understand that... Tor started, but I cut him off. No, you are the one who doesn't understand. How can I even try to be calm when I don't know what is happening to my mate, when I don't know if she is hurt, if she is awake, when I don't know what the hell is happening to her, or even if I will find her, if I will ever see her again? How can I? You are the one who doesn't understand. You will only get it when you find your mate. If after finding her, you are also about to lose her, like it's happening to me right now. I yelled between growls. I was growling and rasping so much lately that my throat was scratching, but it didn't matter. Nothing mattered. Nothing but finding Claire. Tor exhaled sharply. You are right, Hunter. I don't understand, but Claire is my best friend. I care a whole lot about her, and we will find her. But now we're only running in circles. We have to act smart, search with a, an aim, not going everywhere like a drunk raccoon. Tor said. He was actually right. We were only losing time this way. I had to get my shit together and think logically if I wanted to find my mate, even though each and every one of my instincts was going overboard and the only thing I, man and wolf, could process now was our absolute need to have our female safe and in our arms. Protect her. I had to fight myself, every guttural urge, and have my rational side winning. I took a sharp breath, filling my lungs to the brim. I had to do it. Let's go back to the pack castle. Katie, can you show us where you saw Tyler and the vampire? I asked. Sure, that's a good idea. She replied. We went to the place she led us to, a little narrow way in the back of the pack castle. They were right here. Katie let us know. Wait, that is the way to the tunnels. I muttered as I started to understand how my mate was abducted. I opened the grass-covered opening of the tunnel and squeezed myself to fit in its narrow entrance without losing time or saying another word. This will lead us to the medical wing where they took Claire from. But how could it help us? Tor questioned. The strong reek of dry blood entered my nostrils. It was indeed a vampire, and a stinking one. Maybe we can try to scent this disgusting smell instead of Claire's or Tyler's, I suggested. That's a good start, but we have to get a hint, a direction. Sarah is coming here, maybe she can help. Tor exhaled. In a few minutes, Sarah, the royal beta, and some enforcers arrived. Sarah also seemed very restless. Her normally chocolate-colored skin was looking pale. 
Sarah pulled Tor in her embrace, and to my surprise, she hugged me as well after she was done hugging him. We will find her. She cooed as she patted my back. Something else that I didn't expect happened. Claire's mom was walking in our direction. Sarah went towards her and hugged her too. Claire's mom had a tear-stained face and looked quite battered, desperate. I was sure I was looking the same. We have to put our brains to work. It's unlikely that they went too far, even out of this pack. If they would do so, the patrol officers would have seen them. That is true. I have already contacted the head patrollers of all the borders. They said that no group of people with their description or Claire's smell left this pack, Beta Lucas said. What would someone hide inside this pack? Sarah asked with a sigh as she placed her hand down her chin and looked into space. Hiding? Claire's mom muttered. There is a secluded area where some young wolves go sometimes. She added hesitantly. Do you mean the make-out spot? The royal beta asked, sounding like someone who knew well where the place was. Yes, I think so. Claire's mom trailed off nervously. It's two and a half hours from here by running. We should check it out, Luke added. Wouldn't that be a too obvious place to hide? Katie wondered. Maybe. I exhaled sharply, scrubbing my face with aggravation. We still had no clue, nothing. Only the desperation was filling this emptiness inside of me. Hunter. I heard my wolf's gruff call. Hope. I can hear her. Her voice is distant and weak, but it's there. Let's try to concentrate. He added with something between a whimper and a growl. I sat on a big stone and placed my elbows on my knees, burying my face in my hands and tried to concentrate, to reach Claire. I focused on her with all the strength my thought could muster. I pictured her face in my mind and called her name inside of my mind. Claire, please, my love, please, I muttered. No response, only a painful suffocating silence. Hunter. I heard Claire's weak voice in my mind. Wait for me, my Luna. I will find you. Chapter 59 Fighting Back Claire Soren, the vampire, took slow, leisured steps towards me. He had a predatory smile on his face. I took a few steps to the side making him believe I intended to run away, cower away. When he was about to reach me, I lifted the wooden chair close by as fast as I could and hit his head with it, making him almost lose his balance and trotter around. The vampire tried to react and stand straight, but I was faster. I went to his other side and kneed his groin as I punched him nonstop. I used all the moves and techniques I had learned in the last two years. After my first surprise attacks, Soren could finally react and fight back. You were being beaten by an Omega. That is hilarious. Tyler commented without an ounce of humor in his voice. I was no match for the vampire and his super speed. All I could do was pull him away a little with all my might and dodge. Ugh! I muttered as my breath came out like gasps from between my gritted teeth. I took a few steps back, but I was already running out of breath. Between the wolfbane and the lingering effect of chloroform, my attempt to escape and the panic coursing through my veins, I was exhausted. When he was about to sink his fangs on my neck, Hope took control and I shifted to her form, launching at him. She attached her teeth on his neck. Hope was still weak, but she was pushing hard and giving all that she had left. Hope was a fighter. Her sudden movement made him fall back onto the floor. She pinned him down with her paws, bit his neck, and clawed his chest with all her might several times. Help! Help! Don't keep only looking, you freak! Help me! Soren screamed. After a couple of minutes, Tyler apparently snapped back from his shock and started trying to pull her away from the squirming and screaming vampire. How is it even possible? An Omega Wolf can't be that fast. I heard Tyler murmuring underneath his breath. 
Take these dog away from me. Soren's voice was weak. He was losing lots of blood. I'm drying. Tyler replied with a yell as he kept trying to pull Hope off the vampire's neck using his enhanced strength. But she was not having it. She squirmed off his grasp, and after the vampire went unconscious under her fangs, she turned to look at him. Claire, I'm quite dizzy. We have to reach for Max and Hunter. While I still have energy... She muttered in my mind. Yes, please. Thank you, Hope. I replied to her. She was still such a young wolf and was making so much effort, I couldn't even understand how she was able to do that much. Hope was indeed incredible. It's our will to survive and come back to our males and friends. She replied my thought. Tyler's words got my attention back to him. Uh, you disgusting bitch! I can't believe it. I thought it would be much easier. You always have to make it hard for me. He grumbled with a sharp exhale. His words sound as they have come from a deep place within, a place of pure anger and even resentment. Tyler took a few steps back, shock still evident in his dark brown eyes. Shock, anger, hatred. He was about to shift to his wolf. When he would do it, Hope and I wouldn't stand a chance. He was a beta, not a small young Omega wolf. Fast, Hope, please, I pleaded in my mind. I'm trying. It's hard to reach them, Claire. I'm so tired. My poor wolf whimpered. No, no, goddess, please. Give Hope a bit of extra strength. Let us reach Hunter, at least to say goodbye, I prayed silently. Hunter, please. I called him. But it didn't work. I looked through Hope's eyes and saw Tyler's big black wolf taking slow steps in my direction. His eyes glowing with anger and dark promise his mouth curling up in an ominous smile. Hunter. I tried again. Claire. His voice filled my mind and washed over me with a spark of peace and tenderness in the middle of my dark predicament. Claire, where are you? His words laced with desperation broke my heart even further. A cabin. A wooden cabin. Abandoned, I think. A place I I've never seen before. The trees around here are scarce and forsaken. I replied between the strangled, fear-filled sighs that were permeating even my thoughts. Tyler's wolf was circling hope. She was exhausted, but didn't cower away. Can't you hear anything? A river? Uh, people talking in the distance? Animals? He asked. I racked my panicking brain trying to recognize any sound and recall anything I saw in my frustrated escaping attempt. The earth was humid. Maybe there's a spring or any other source of... My voice was cut by Hope's piercing whimper when Tyler's wolf finally launched at her. The impact of his huge and heavy body took Hope to the floor with a loud thud noise. Tyler's wolf sank his canines on Hope's shoulder, piercing through her flesh. She whined in pain. He moved his chest up, tried to reach for her neck, hovering over her and attempting to keep her squirming body in place with his forefoot, but she turned around slightly and pressed her four paws against his chest, succeeding in throwing him off her. She stood on her four paws as fast as she could. Even I could taste the blood in her mouth. Her blood. Tyler's wolf bite was indeed nasty. Hope and I heard the vampire's agonizing whimper. Hope peeked at him for an instant before looking back at Tyler. The vampire was still knocked out on the floor. I breathed in relief. Fighting Tyler was already more than enough. Stop it, Tyler. Hunter is coming. He will know it was you, but you can still give up and make it less bad. Even through the mind link, my voice was breaking. It wasn't exhausting to mind link him since he was in front of me. Only mind linking someone who was far away seemed hard, almost impossible. He won't make it on time. I went too far to stop now. I might not win this one completely, but you won't win it either. Give up, Omega. Tyler's voice was gruff and guttural. He and his wolf were speaking together. He started circling Hope once again, his eyes fixed on her neck. He wanted to attack, aiming to kill. I gulped hard. I could hear my wolf's pounding heart. 
Why are you doing it? I asked once again. Even if I was about to die, I had to understand the reason behind his actions. Besides making Tyler talk, could give me some time. Give Hunter some time to find me. Because you are an aberration. Why wouldn't you stay in the kitchen and whore around in your pack of origin? Why did you have to try and seduce Hunter? And Omega can't ever become a Luna. I won't ever let it happen, especially not in the pack I spent two decades rebuilding and doing everything for. Especially not with Hunter. He deserves so much better than trash. As a mate, he deserves so much better than falling for your tricks. His gruff voice was laced with bitterness. You are insane, I barked out. I can see through you, Omega. I know who and what you are. He replied before he launched at Hope once again. This time, his canines pricked her neck. Hunter. Suddenly, Claire's voice cut off in my mind, which sent a paralyzing shiver of dread down my spine. I looked up at our group as I stood up with a jolt, almost losing my balance. I was dizzy. She said she is in an abandoned wooden cabin, in a place where the earth is humid and the forest isn't lush. I know a place like this. It's hidden, a small clearing where... Claire's mom practically yelled, but she stopped dead in the trail, as if the words she was about to utter were supposed to remain unsaid. A secret. It's in the northeast. One hour and a half from here by car. We must go there now. We don't have any time. I said, before shifting to Max's form. I think I know the place she is talking about. The royal beta turned to look at Claire's mom. Close to the Ghost Springs. Some ranked wolves used to take their secret lovers there. He added, making Claire's mom blush crimson. Let's go. I'll lead the way. He added, before he shifted to his wolf. Tor, Katie, and Sarah followed suit. Max ran on the limit of his speed, leaving stones, earth, dry leaves, everything behind, stirring the wind with his unthinkable speed, powered by desperation and the need to have our mates safe in our arms. Hunter, we can do it. I mind link the Alpha King. He is sending more reinforcements. Sarah's voice resonated in my mind. I didn't reply. I just saw one thing. I just had one thought. My Luna. Claire! I tried to reach her once again. Please, answer me! No answer. No reaching. Just running. Chapter 60 A Last Wish Hunter Max kept running as fast as possible. He was jumping, flying to such an extent that his paws could hardly feel the ground beneath. Tor and the royal Beta, even the powerful males, couldn't keep up with us and were left behind. After some time, I heard Claire's weak voice inside my mind. Hunter. She called with a whimper. Claire, hold on. Wait for me, please. I replied as a new crashing wave of desperation jolted through Max's body. I love you, Hunter. Please promise to make my last wish come true. Her voice was a pained whisper. Last wish. These dreadful words made my breath hitch. Max went blind for a moment and almost crashed into a tree. No, Claire, stop! Don't talk about it! You aren't making your last wish! No! I almost yelled in her mind. Please do it. Promise. Her soft and weak voice broke my heart. But I wouldn't talk about any last wish. She wouldn't die. I would arrive on time. I had to. Claire! I didn't know what to say. A fog of desperation and hopelessness was taking control of all my thoughts and senses. It couldn't happen. Please. She muttered. I will do it, I promise, but it isn't your last wish. I replied, trying to think straight and be able to answer her. For you to accept it, I can't let you suffer from my death. The bond will make it unbearable for you. I, Claire Valos... Reject you, Alpha Hunter, of the Black Forest Pack as my mate and Alpha. Her words made my heart pang. She thought she was dying, and she was trying to make it easier for me. No, she wouldn't die. I wouldn't let her go. Claire, no, I won't. 
I replied as I heard Max's soul-piercing whimpers and his mournful howl. Max, don't! We will get there on time! I told him. I had to believe it. I had to keep running. Do it. It's the only way for you. Don't feel this killing pain. She muttered. In her voice, I could hear her heavy gasps, as if she was fighting to breathe air in. I prefer to feel any pain, even of losing you, than letting you go. Forgive me, but I won't. I won't accept your rejection. I love you. Fight my love and wait for me! I muttered. Max ran faster, pulled faster, forcing the muscles of his legs to their limits, making them burn and stretch. I was feeling my mate getting further distant, her presence vanishing in my mind. It was the most dreadful feeling I have ever experienced. It was sheer cold and choking panic. I'm coming for you, my love. Please, wait for me. I muttered before the mind link cut off, and I couldn't hear her whimpers in my mind or feel her trying to reach me. My heart stopped in devastating pain, but Max's legs kept going. Claire Tyler's wolf bit Hope's neck while she was trying to kick him and escape the deadly grasp of his teeth. She kept fighting him, despite the drilling pain echoing through her body. She pushed him away slightly with the convulsive moment of her neck and managed to claw his chest and bite his left shoulder. However, in an abrupt moment, he reached his paw up and sank his claw on the bleeding side of her neck, making Hope lose her grip on him. He took advantage of it to dig his teeth in her wound once again. I was growing lightheaded inside my own mind with desperation and the pain that radiated from my poor wolf. The big black wolf kept biting Hope's neck, tearing her flesh and making her bloodshed, tinting her light fur scarlet red. Her almost clogged throat could only let out muffled whimpers filled with a suffocating agony. She tried to squirm away, but Tyler's wolf's weight and the piercing pain didn't make it possible for her. Claire, I'm so sorry. We will... She cried softly in my mind. I could see that even communicating with me was very hard for her. No, Hope. You have nothing to be sorry for. You did all you could. Now we have to say goodbye to them and let the bond go for them not to suffer. I muttered these heartbreaking words. I know, Hope whispered. I knew that the hurt of being rejected was very intense, but it was nothing compared with the pain of losing a mate. It was unbearable and even lethal for many wolves, even when the bond wasn't consolidated like it was for mine and Hunter's case. Because to an extent, to a great extent, our souls were already connected. I couldn't let my Hunter feel this pain, in that Tyler was right, so I did what I had to do. After hearing him tell me to hold on, I asked him to promise to honor my last wish. No, Claire! Stop! Don't talk about it. You aren't making your last wish. No! He replied in exasperation, almost with a yell. Please do it. Promise. I pleaded. I couldn't let him suffer. Claire? His voice was almost faltering. Was I dying already? No, I couldn't go before releasing him from our bond. Please, I asked almost inadvertently. I will do it, I promise. But it isn't your last wish. Now I could hear him better. For you to accept it, I can't let you suffer from my death. The bond will make it unbearable for you. I, Claire Vallos, reject you, Hunter Alpha of the Black Forest Pack, as my mate and Alpha. I said it as I cried inside my mind, as I let my heart go. I could hear Hope's wrenching whimper at my irrevocable words. Claire, no, I won't. I could even hear Max's whimper in the undertone of Hunter's voice. My heart trembled at it. Do it. It's the only way for you to not feel a killing pain. I was almost begging. I prefer to feel any pain, even of losing you, than letting you go. Forgive me, but I won't. I don't accept your rejection. I love you. Fight my love and wait for me. This stubborn male. I tried to insist again, 
but I was pushed to a deeper place inside my mind. Hope. Lost consciousness. After some time, these words muttered in his husky voice filled my mind. I'm coming for you, my love. Please, wait for me. I wasn't sure if I was hearing or imagining them. Hunter. I reached the area the royal bed I told me to go to in less than 30 minutes. I hoped to the goddess it was enough. I could smell Claire. I could smell her blood. Lots of it. I could also smell Tyler and the reek of a bleeding vampire. Although it was impossible, Max ran even faster. When we saw the cabin, I shifted immediately to my form and broke the door open. I looked around. Vampire moaning in pain on the floor. A broken chair. Blood everywhere. On the bottom of the cabin, Rolf, Tyler's wolf, stood beside Hope clawing her belly. She wasn't even awake and he kept hurting her. Hope's breath was shallow, barely there, as if her life was starting to fade away. I froze for a moment at the view of my dying mate. The one that I considered a brother for my whole life was a monster. Rolf! Max's guttural voice vibrated out of my throat. Get away from her now! now. Max and I demanded with an alpha's command in unison, one that is not possible to disobey or contradict. He moved away, even though I could see it was the last thing he wanted to do. Rolf shifted to Tyler's naked form, and he took a couple of slow steps in my direction. I know that it is hard for you to see it this way, but I am doing it for the well-being of our pack. For your own well-being, Hunter. Sacrifices must be made for a great cause, for our pack to keep flourishing and keep its good reputation. What well, we gave everything to build for two decades. We couldn't let a low omega ruin everything. Step between us. Destroy our pack. Destroy our life. Give you mutts instead of pups. I did it for you. For our pack. He kept speaking. I was somehow frozen again. My eyes couldn't leave Hope's form, while that psychopath didn't stop spitting his bullshit. Let's kill him, but get Hope first. Max growled in my head. I ignored Tyler and walked towards Hope, but before I could reach her, Tyler's fingernails elongated into Rolf's claws, and he was about to claw her chest. She couldn't take one more blow. She would die for sure. Everything felt as if it was happening in slow motion. In a glimpse of a second, Max force shifted and lunged at Tyler, pinning him to the floor. He tried to move away, but Max wouldn't give him a chance. Max clawed him deeply, lacerating his flesh from his forehead to his chest, jumped off him, and went towards Hope. I licked her muzzle and she whimpered slightly. He was there, howling in mourning, and licking the face of his dying mate. Chapter 61 A Miracle Worker Hunter I shifted back to my form and caressed Hope's fur, trying to feel for her pulse. She shifted to Claire's form under the touch of my hand. It meant they were indeed dying. That is how it happens when someone is mortally injured in their wolf form. They would go back to their human form shortly before dying. I took Claire in my arms and stood up. I would run with her to the pack clinic. Even though I knew I couldn't make it, I would try it anyway. Hunter, she is already gone. Let her go. It was for the pack. For the pack. Tyler muttered as he stood up slowly. It wasn't for the pack, you disgusting monster. You can't kill an innocent female, my mate, my love, and say it was for the pack. It was because you let prejudice, resentment, and hate drive you mad. You are a sick lunatic! I yelled with hatred. I only walked away, taking Claire with me. She was my priority. She was all that mattered. But that fucking monster followed me and wrapped his arms around my arm in an attempt to halt me. I turned around abruptly, and without letting go of my mate, I clawed his chest almost inadvertently as my nails became claws by their own accord. Tyler fell down violently onto the floor with a crashing noise. 
I went out of the cabin caring for my trembling female's numb form. Her breath was so shallow, and the deep wounds on her neck and chest didn't stop bleeding. Seeing her like this made uncontrollable tears slide down my face. I kneeled down with her in my arms, begging the goddess for a miracle. I would give everything to have her well again, alive and healthy. The royal Beta and Tor arrived, shifted back to their human form, and ran towards Claire and me. Claire. Tor's broken murmur was pure pain. He crouched down and tried to touch her forehead, but I pulled my mate onto my chest. At this moment, instinct in its most raw form kicked in. I wouldn't let anyone touch my severely hurt female, friend or foul. It didn't matter. Tor stepped away after giving me a look of understanding. She is still breathing, the royal beta remarked. I'm mind-linking to the king, he told me. But I was absent. Everything around faded away. I just had eyes and thoughts for her. A flash of green light attracted my attention back to my surroundings. The Luna Queen took some steps in our direction and halted when she was very close. The Luna Queen is half-witch, so she can open portals and go from place to place using them. Hunter, can I touch her? I brought some healing balms. Her soft voice soothed me a tad. I only nodded, still engulfed in half-despair and half-mourning, numbing haze. Her breath is very shallow. The Queen muttered underneath her breath as she delicately placed a bit of balm on Claire's wound. I called a fay. She will heal her. The queen added. Fay was the only species that had healing powers. That was the only solution, the miracle we needed. Fortunately, our queen had a very good relationship with the fay people and realm. In another flash of light, a small brunette fairy came. Sorry, my dear. Alba couldn't come. She is carrying, and every time she flashes, she vomits nonstop. So she sent me in her place. The fairy explained as she hovered her hand over Claire's neck wound and a soft golden light left it, entering Claire's skin. It stopped bleeding considerably, but the wound didn't close as I imagined it would. I knew that instead of opening portals, fey people can move by flashing, vanishing from one place and reappearing in their intended locale of destination. Max wanted to growl at this stranger touching our female, but I held him back. No, Max! She is helping Claire. I scolded my anxious wolf. It's okay, Sai. The queen replied with a sigh. I could see fine lines of worry creasing in her forehead as her warm amber eyes were fixed on Claire. The fairy, Sai, sighed in frustration herself. I'm not a healer like Alba. I only have some healing powers. I am doing what I can but her injuries are too severe, and there is still some wolf poison. I think it's called wolfbane in her system, which makes it even harder. She is a bit better now, but it won't be enough to save her. Sai muttered sadly as she now placed her hand over Claire's chest wound. We will use the bombs. Let's take her to the pack clinic. The queen said as she looked to her left side, just now I could notice the presence of a crying Sarah. I will stay behind and deal with her attackers, the royal beta said. Sarah only nodded at the queen. Our Luna queen stood up. She closed her eyes for a moment, and a portal of a soft green light was open. It was large enough for all of us to pass through at a time. Let's go, she said, looking between me, the fairy, and Sarah. We did what she said and arrived at the pack clinic. I couldn't let my mate go, so I just sat down on the bed and adjusted her in my arms. Hunter, Tor started. It's fine. Her mate's touch can bring her comfort and help in the healing process. The queen explained. She approached us once again and started spreading a transparent balm on Claire's wounds. The fact that I didn't know what she was applying on Claire's skin unsettled me, and especially Max. We still had our protective instincts mode on. Some flowers and plants have healing effects, like osculum solum. She explained. 
The queen indeed understood wolves incredibly well, even though she wasn't a wolf herself. Please open her mouth. A passiflorine extract together with moonshed aloe vera can calm her body down and heal internal injuries. She asked. I opened Claire's mouth gently, and the queen let some droplets of a flower-smelling liquid into it. She massaged Claire's throat to make the potion go down. Now comes the other part of every healing process. Waiting. She added. She gave me a warm and understanding look. I know it's a very hard part, Hunter, but it's necessary we have to give her time. We have to give her time to heal, and the substance is time to produce their effect. She is out of danger now. Stay together, close to her, and let Sarah hook up an IV to insert some saline. Claire needs to be rehydrated as well. The queen explained patiently, with a kind smile. She does indeed. You could even become a nurse or a doctor, baby girl. Sarah told the queen. Hearing her calling our royal Luna like this was quite odd. Tor let out a small chuckle. He looked much calmer now. His jaw was loose, and his muscles were relaxed. <laughs> I guess we will always be pups, kids, for you, Sarah. That's absolutely true, and I'm so relieved that my puppy is fine again, that she isn't at risk anymore. Sarah smiled, letting out a long breath. We arrived here almost ten hours ago. Sarah convinced me to let go of my Claire for a few minutes so she could clean her wounds and dress her. She told me to do the same. Max and I hated the idea of leaving her even for a minute, but Sarah gave me some sort of doctor motherly look, which was actually quite compelling. I went to the bathroom and washed my face. Looking at myself in the mirror, I could see the purple bags under my eyes, my disheveled hair, and the tension imprinted in every expression and line of my face. I knew Claire wouldn't die, but she wasn't waking up either, and that was enough to fill me with restlessness. I put on the shorts and the t-shirt Sarah brought and left the bathroom. I couldn't stay away from my mate any longer. It was painful. We have to be with our female, protect and tender for her while she is sick, Max stated, as if it was a natural law. Actually, it was. Any wolf in his right mind would do it for his mate. All instincts propelled us to do so. I took my Claire's still cold body in my arms again. A hospital gown was covering her body. I looked down at her still pale face. Her usual rosy lips were stained a lifeless purple. Her wounds looked much better, and Sarah said that there was almost no wolfsbane in her bloodstream anymore. She whimpered softly from time to time, but didn't wake up. Again, I was feeling hopeless. Come back to me, my love, I called her, almost in a prayer. Sarah took a few steps towards us and took Claire's hand in hers. She gave me a worried but tender look. Her body needs time to recover, to rest. She will wake up soon. When is soon? I rasped in a raw way, sounding just like the dejected male I was now. Sarah sighed. I can't say. I can just say that her wounds are recovering fast enough. It's quite impressive for a young wolf like Hope to have such a healing speed. Plus... The Luna Queen's bombs and tonic were real lifesavers. She exclaimed. Claire, I felt myself go limp, grow cold, and get lost. Hope wasn't there with me. I was alone. I was dying. But even amongst the coldest of feelings, I could sense a ray of warmness, a comfort, a solace. Hunter's presence. It was some sort of dying hallucination. Was my mind fabricating this feeling to give me some consolation? I didn't know. All of a sudden, I felt a golden light, a golden thread, pulling me back to the floor, breaking my fall into death. But the pull was frail. It was enough to slow down the cold grasp that was seizing my body. However, it couldn't stop it. 
It was still all cold and dark, but soon I could hear her soft whimpers. My hope. I went around the shadowy limbo I was stuck into, looking for my wolf. I didn't know if it was my mind or an actual limbo. She was again, knocked down in a corner. I laid beside her and cuddled with her as I wrapped my arms around her quivering body. I'm here, Hope. Doesn't matter what happens. We are in this together. I cooed to her gently. After I don't know how long, she stopped trembling, and the sounds leaving her mouth were louder and stronger. I could also smell the comforting and sweet scent of flowers, and it washed me over with a certain serenity, made my dismayed heart calm down as my chest stopped stirring up and down in an ominous rhythm. The serenity became sleepiness, and I fell asleep inside my mind. Before dozing off, I saw glimpses of light breaking through the darkness. Above it, I could hear his voice and discern his words. Come back to me, my love. Hunter pleaded. I would come back to him. Some way. Somehow. Even if I had to challenge death itself to do it, I would come back to him. Chapter 62 A Surprise Hunter, after more long and agonizing hours, my mate let out a soft yawn, opened her eyes slowly and tentatively, as if her eyelids weighed a ton of pounds. Her head was still pressed against my chest, just like she has been for the last several hours. I cupped her face and kissed her forehead. My sweets... She tried to say something, but only a hoarse sound left her now again rosy lips. Uh. I moved to pour her a glass of water, which she drank slowly with a certain difficulty. I took her in my arms once again, and she tilted her head up, looking at me. Am I alive? She muffled, almost inaudibly. I couldn't avoid chuckling a bit at her words. More than that, I was smiling like a pup, overwhelmed by joy. Max released a deafening celebratory howl inside my mind. I was beyond happy and relieved, too, but why so loud? I was almost going deaf from the inside. Yes, my sweets, you are alive, safe, and with me, and I won't let you go or get hurt ever again, I replied before I kissed her forehead a couple of times and pressed her tightly against my body. I will always protect and love you, my Luna, I promised, my voice filled with emotion as a couple of happy tears leaked from my eyes. She closed her eyes once again and murmured, I want to be all yours. Have you all mine and our souls united? Let's consolidate our bond. Mark me. She said, with a certain difficulty, as she was still very weak. Her words brought me to an unknown level of happiness, a state of bliss. I let out another chuckle. <laughs> Sweets, that is what I want more than anything. But we have to wait until you are completely healed and healthy again. Unexpectedly, even the frantic and horny wolf pacing around and jumping in my mind agreed with it. You're back? She asked worriedly, looking intently at me for a moment as a few lines formed in her forehead. She closed her eyes once again. She could hardly keep them open. Even weak and hurt in the way she was, she thought about the pack. She would indeed make a great Luna. Our pack is fine sweets. Apparently, the whole rogue attack situation was only a trick that Tyler used to divert the attention and distract us. I pronounced his name resentfully, as if it hurt to say, burned my tongue. How could someone that was like a brother to me do it? How hadn't I noticed before the sick and cruel lunatic he was? What about Tyler? Claire asked as she opened her brown eyes slowly once again. She was trying hard to look at me, 
to stay awake. I wanted her awake, to listen to her voice, look at the sweet caramel color of her eyes, and be with her. But above all, above all my desires, I wanted her well, and fully rested. The royal beta killed the vampire, but he couldn't find Tyler. I felt the pack link break. He could have gone rogue or be dead now. I couldn't care less. I replied. That creature was a monster. At first, I hated him. And I even considered going back and making sure he was dead, and if not, killing him myself. But after looking at my sleepy mate for longer, I realized only her, only us, matter. And I shouldn't even waste a thought about that lunatic monstrosity of a mongrel. Claire. A few days after I first woke up, I was fully recovered. Hope and I couldn't wait any longer to be with our males, in every way. Hunter, I'm feeling good already. I tried to convince him, not for the first time. This stubborn alpha was getting on my nerves. No, sweets. You still need one or two more days to rest and recover completely. I have to go now and mind Link Stefano. We are still looking for a new gamma. He said, before he pressed a kiss on my forehead. I inhaled a sliver of air in, taking a lungful of frustration. Hunter made Stefano the new beta of the Black Forest Pack, and was currently looking for a new gamma. Until Hunter and I would go back there, Stefano was in charge to take care of the pack, with the help of Sunday. Luckily, she was very smart and competent, and could help a lot, probably even more than Stefano himself. We were really glad that she would soon become the beta female of our pack. Our pack. I was looking forward to knowing how the pack members would receive me, but it also made me quite anxious. The very thought of my questionable acceptance into the pack created lines of worry on my forehead. What if they didn't accept me because I'm an Omega? What if they didn't want me to be their Luna? I couldn't be a tyrant and force my rule on them. I would never do that. I told Hunter that he could go back to the pack and I would join him there as soon as Sarah allowed me to travel, but as I already expected, he said that it was out of consideration and he wouldn't ever leave my side, especially not while I was still fragile. That sweet, overwhelming male. I will be back soon. Rest a bit more. He added and left the room. I was in the guest room that has become Hunter's room in the pack castle since Sarah discharged me a couple of days ago. As a nurse, I know how resting is fundamental for the healing process, but Sarah, Hunter, and my mom were going overboard on me. I knew for a fact that I was feeling well enough that I rested enough already. I heard a knock on the door, which brought me back to reality. Come in, I replied. Sarah's flowery smell entered my nostrils before she entered the room. How are you feeling, my puppy? She asked taking a few long strides towards the bed where I was sat, and pulled me into her motherly embrace. I'm fine. Tired of resting. I huffed. Maybe the boredom of staying in a room for over a week instead of working a lot like I was used to was making me behave like an annoyed pup. She chuckled lightly. Let's walk outside for a bit. Breathing some fresh would do you a lot of good. She helped me stand up and pulled me with her. While we were walking outside, Sarah had a funny, almost naughty smile. I wondered what was passing in her head. I will miss you when you leave for the Black Forest Pack, and it will be impossible to find a nurse as good and dedicated as you. But I know you'll be happy there with your mail. Besides, you will be an excellent Luna. She turned to look at me. Her face showed at the same time a sweet but nostalgic smile and tearing eyes. I can stay longer until you find a replacement. I started. Nonsense. Go be happy in his arms. Take care of your pack and be great as you are meant to be. I'll visit you often, my puppy. Sarah cut me off before she pressed her curled up lips together, holding back her tears with a smile. I stopped on my trail and hugged her. I will miss you too, I muttered as I felt a little pang of nostalgia clench in my heart. 
I was so distracted by the flood of emotions that were flowing through me that just now I noticed that we weren't going to the front exit as I expected, but rather to one of the queen's back gardens. I gave Sarah a questioning look, and she only shuddered as the naughty little smile found its way to her face. When we arrived at the garden, I stood at its entrance, speechless with surprise. My jaw dropped open, and my heart fluttered at what was taking place before my eyes. While I was in my little shocked haze, Sarah left the garden. Hunter was standing by a fancily decorated table, a bottle of wine, flutes, and a little banquet surrounded by beautiful wildflowers, an arrangement on the dining table. Hunter sported a radiant smile on his lips and even his eyes. He took slow steps towards me. Our eyes locked almost hypnotically. We didn't exchange any words, but our gazes were speaking everything. Everything about longing, happiness, and love. My gape was soon replaced by a huge heartfelt smile. Hope howled and jumped around inside my mind like a hyper pup. I told you we could train him into a perfect mate. Who said one can't teach an old dog new tricks? She joked, mentioning something that she actually never told me. He took my hand on his warm big one and led me to the table. Before I could sit down, he engulfed me in his embrace. Hunter, I... I muttered, looking up at him. His gaze on mine still bewitched me like the first time I saw his piercing gray eyes. He tugged a strand of hair behind my ear and caressed my lips in his feather-light kiss. I... What is this all about? I love it. I really love it. But I don't really understand. I murmured again. Can't I surprise my mate with a dinner? especially in the evening in which I want to make her entirely mine and become fully hers. He replied, running his thumb across my cheek. I had a silly smile on my face. Yes, you can. Thank you. The words left my mouth mixed with an uncontainable couple of giggles. I was feeling like a giddy teenager discovering, exploring a new and exciting side of love for the first time. Hunter chuckled at my reaction. You don't have to thank me. I would, and I will, do everything to make you happy, my Luna. I will be the mate you deserve, he said. I took his hand that was still stroking my face in mine and brought it to my lips, pressing a soft kiss on it. I will also make you happy and be what you and our pack need, my Alpha. A sliver of lust resonated in my two last words, permeating the love haze that overtook my fluttering heart. His lips crashed on mine in a kiss that held no softness, only a raw desire. He broke our embrace, pulling me apart slightly. If we start it now, I will skip the dinner and go straight into eating you. He whispered in my ear before nibbling my earlobe. Such a teaser but he would get his sweet payback later tonight. We sat down and started eating. We had game meat with potatoes and red berries, the traditional food of our realm. While we were waiting for the dessert, my mate took my hand that was resting over the table on his and started. Claire, I really want to have you an hour back, but I don't want to rush you in to do it. Hunter exhaled lightly. You are not rushing me. I want to go there, too. I will miss the people here, but I would miss you much more if you were to leave. Like, you would have to, sooner rather than later. Our pack needs you. Our pack needs us. My mate remarked, making my heart swell a little as a smile found its way to my lips. How about your mom? Did she decide yet if she is going to our pack with us, or... Staying here? He asked. I sighed and looked away as a sliver of worry filled my thoughts. I didn't want to leave my mom alone. Of course, she had Imogene and a couple of other relatives, but it wasn't enough. She said she had to think about it. Maybe she just needs a little time to get used to the idea, to feel more comfortable about it. 
Hunter added, squeezing my hand in reassurance. I hope so, I replied, looking back at him. The only thing I know is that I want to be with you in our pack as soon as possible, I uttered. The day after tomorrow seems like a good day to go home. He smiled, and I breathed deeply, swallowing the little nervous lump that had just formed in my throat. Would the Black Forest pack indeed be my home? Would the place that somehow created a monster like Tyler ever welcome me? An Omega as its Luna? I looked at my mate as the question arose in my mind. Could I be his Luna? I think Hunter noted my uneasiness. They will love you for what you are. A caring, sweet, strong, and brave female. Maybe I can only be your mate and help you with the administration without officially being your Luna. If they don't want me, I can't force myself on the pack of people. That would be tyrannical, dictatorial, I muttered, casting my gaze down for a moment. Hunter couldn't hold back a loud growl laced with frustration. Max just said that if they don't want us, he will kick their tails until they get their right mind. Hope let me know. She was atypically quiet tonight. Maybe while I was having my date with Hunter, she was having a mind link date with Max. Claire, if they don't accept you, it will be only out of prejudice. We can't let our pack members blind themselves with unfounded anger and hatred. That would make them become like Tyler. He replied. <clears throat> He was right, but I still didn't know how big the challenge that I had to face was. Would the Black Forest Pack become my home, or just a place where people call me an intruder and want me gone? Chapter 63 My Love, My Luna Hunter after Claire took the last spoonful of ice cream and warm cherries into her mouth, I stood up and took her in my arms, making her chuckle. Hunter! She mock-protested in my mind, laughing. I have to make you mine, to devour my dessert! <laughs> I chuckled in response as I ran towards a bedroom. Wait, that isn't our... your room? Claire looked around confused when I stopped in front of a door on the sixth floor, a floor normally only reserved for the Alpha King, his Luna and children, and royal guests. Sarah helped me to arrange everything, and even the Queen sent some of her flowers and a bottle of fairy wine. Today, we will have something special, I responded. I opened the door, and Claire looked inside the room. I spread some rose petals on the bed and asked Sarah to light some candles. I would give my mate the complete romantic cliché. That is so sweet, Claire said, turning her head to look at me. I captured her lips with mine and walked towards the bed, placing my mate on it and hovering over her. I didn't want to lose any time. I was a hungry wolf about to taste my favorite prey. Hmm. How about what you said earlier, that I must rest more? She asked, raising a brow at me and making me chuckle. <laughs> that was part of my cover, part of my seduction plan. She burst into a delicious laugh, throwing her head down slightly. Do you think it will work? She asked softly looking at me and trying to clench her lips to keep more laughs inside, but only making them curl in a funny way. <laughs> I am quite sure, I replied, chuckling too. Ain't you a cocky, Mr. Alpha? She asked, shaking her head and twisting the corner of her lips. You will see how cocky I can be. I teased her before digging my mouth on her neck. I indented to give it a lot of attention and plenty of caresses and kisses before piercing my mark into its soft skin. Claire gasped soft moans and arched her back, pressing her body further onto mine. Max took control for a moment, ripping the sides of Claire's dress, bra, and underwear in a matter of seconds. Crazy wild wolf. Max. I heard Hope's moan, 
Those two were stealing our bodies and our fun. I pushed the mutt to the back of my head. He could have a run and some fun with Hope later. Now it was mine and Claire's turn. Claire? I asked to confirm. I felt a rumble, almost like a purr, vibrate in her chest, but Claire's voice answered me. Hunter. I love Hope. She is mine, too, in the same way Claire is Max's. But tonight, I only wanted my Claire. My love, I replied, as I kissed up to her neck until I found her lips. I parted them with my tongue and swirled it inside, caressing and tasting her tongue. She ran her fingers through my hair, making me even harder, impossibly hard and throbbing to have her, to be inside her. Make love to me while you mark me, she asked after we ended our kiss, my face hovering over her, my eyes fixed on her warm, light brown ones. Yes, sweets, I replied. That would be perfect. Now? She asked, with a glint of desire and a sweet smile. How could I deny it? How could I even wait a second further? I let Max come a bit forward in my mind and shifted my fingernails into his claws before I shred my own clothes into pieces. I dug an open-mouth kiss on her neck, making her squirm and moan softly as my hand reached between our bodies, and I cupped her perky tit, pulled, and rolled her nipple between two fingers. That made my female almost jump as she called my name. Hunter. I propped myself on my elbows to kiss down her neck as I licked a straight line from her collarbone to the curve of her breast. My mate wrapped her legs around my hips, pulling me down towards her body and making Max come closer to the surface, out of craving and lust. Max and I lost it. We had to take her now. I brushed my tip along her entrance teasingly, making my female cry out in pleasure. Without further ado, I encased my whole length inside of her at once, the sound of her moan and my groan intertwined. It felt so good to fill her to the brim, have my dick surrounded by her velvet warm wetness. I kneeled up slowly as I snaked my arms under her, lifting my Claire with me. I pulled her to have her straddling my lap. Her eyes were clutched shut. She looked intoxicated with pleasure. I cupped her face and kissed her lips gently without stopping pumping deep, long, and slow thrusts upwards in her, stroking her cervix. Look at me, sweets, I muttered. My mate opened her hazy eyes and gasped a trembling moan. Claire. Hunter's magnetic gray eyes only made me even mushier. I was melting into a puddle of desire, delight, and love. His lips and tongue trailed down my jaw, the curve of my neck until they stopped on my marking spot. His warm, moistened kisses were radiating tingles of ecstasy all over my body, as a wave of anticipation built in the pit of my stomach. He would mark me soon. Our souls would be entangled for eternity, and not even death or transcendence would be able to set us apart. Did I have any doubt that I wanted it more than anything? Not at all. I almost lost our bond, lost him, and even lost myself to death. But I emerged from it all knowing what my soul wants. Hunter. I wanted him to be his and have him be mine forever. Having him inside my mind as it will happen when we consolidate our bond. Hunter tilted his face up, looking intently at my eyes. Are you sure about it? More than anything, I replied without hesitating, not even for a fragment of a second. He smiled as his eyes lit up and their corners twisted slightly. I love you, he muttered. I love you too. My voice was mixed with hopes. My little spunky wolf wanted to be a part of this moment, as she should be. She is part of me, one of the fluffiest parts. I pressed my forehead against his and kept there still for a moment, enjoying his presence, his warmness, his love, and the rhythmic movements of his member stretching and stroking my insides. Let's, Let's become, become one, one, my females. Hunter and Max said in unison, 
I nodded slightly. I was too mushy to reply with words. The pounding of my racing heart was the only sound I could express right now as my eyes teared up a little. Hunter pressed a kiss on the place my neck meets my shoulder before I could feel his teeth brushing against it. He sank his canines into my flesh. For an instant, it hurt, but soon, all the pain was replaced by the most delirious pleasure I have ever felt. My body was overtaken by a hot wave, and I melted into a crushing orgasm that made me lose my senses for a moment. I felt light, numb, an immaterial fog of pleasure. Soon, my own moans and Hunter and Max's guttural claim brought me back to reality. Mine. Man and Wolf declared, their voice so deep, sounding like it came from a primitive place within their shared soul. A soul that I would soon have united with mine, as soon as I mark him as well. A jolt of energy crossed through my body, from the top of my head to my toes. Our souls were starting to come together. Hunter was pressing my convulsive body against his, without stopping his fast and deep thrusts. I could feel my inner walls clench tightly around him, and in a few seconds, my male released the thick spurts of his climax inside me, groaning my name in a husky and very sexy voice. We stayed there panting desperately in each other's arms until my mail started pumping into my core once again. Mark me! Hunter voiced out. It was a plead and a command. I brushed my lips against his fleshy ones and swirled my tongue into his mouth. We entangled our tongues at a sensual pace and let the kiss linger. After we parted it, I pressed my forehead against his once again. I was still feeling numb with pleasure an insane amount of it. He cupped my face gently. It was incredible, you coming like this for me. He husked. Hunter, I have to mark you. I had this raw need coming from Hope's instincts and even my own. Yes, sweets, do it. He added, as the combination of his hard and rough pumps into my insides and the gentle way he caressed my hair made my body overwhelmed in a pleasurable contradiction. I kissed up his shoulders and his mark spot before I felt my canines elongate and I dug them in his muscular neck. My male squirmed and pressed my body firmly against his as he came violently, flooding my insides with his warm seed. Another powerful jolt ran through me, and I could see that through my mate as well, as our eyes met in some sort of recognition on the certainty that at last our souls could reach, touch each other. We were complete. My heart swallowed, my eyes were clouded with tender and happy tears, as my lips twisted in a huge smile. Hunter was also smiling and crying at the same time as we shared this moment of sheer love. I opened our newly consolidated bond slightly, being inside his thoughts and emotions for the first time, before we could only mind link because of our wolves' magic. But now, due to the mate bond's magic, we could truly be inside each other's minds and hearts, share feelings, ideas, and feel each other's souls. His soul felt like home. You feel so good too, my love. Like warm honey, comfort and peace. He responded. I think he caught my thought. It happened rarely, mainly with too empathetic or repetitive thoughts. However, the rule was that the privacy of our thoughts was still there, even after we solidified the bond. Hunter, I... I trailed off in his mind. I have never felt that happy and complete before, my love. My Luna. He muttered in my mind. Me neither. I replied in the same way. Even before he could come down completely from his powerful climax, Hunter's hand roamed down my body, leaving a trail of the strongest tingles I have ever felt, and he started rubbing my folds and flicking my clit. Now... Our touch would rise even more tingles, even more pleasure, even more connection. 
our souls were finally one. Hun! I finished the word with a moan. You should come again as well, my Luna. He muttered a sexy grin on his face. Soon, he was already hard once more and started slamming into me full power. Alphas have so much stamina. We shouldn't complain about it, should we? Hope asked with a giggle bark. Definitely not. I replied, smiling on the inside and moaning on the outside. After my mate took me to the peak of my pleasure once again, he wrapped me in his embrace. I snuggled my face on his strong and warm chest as my heavy eyelids insisted on closing. I have heard that marking one's mate could be exhausting, but it was the best form of exhaustion possible. A heavenly exhaustion. At this moment, I couldn't be more thankful to the goddess for having given me Hunter, and for Hunter for not having accepted my rejection in the two times that I tried to sever our bond. Hope was rumbling in contentment and making my chest vibrate. Max is so funny, Claire. You can't believe the tale jokes he's telling me. It's so good to feel our males in my mind, feel them completely. It's, it's like, wow! She bark giggled. Soon... I'll make my big bad alpha howl and lose his mind. She added overexcitedly. I heard Max's growl in my mind at Hope's comment. Guess it's already starting. Well done, me. Hope added. Those two. They are such a perfect match. Before my eyes closed again with the weight of my tiredness, I looked up at my perfect match. My hunter's beautiful gray eyes. I love you, my alpha. Just as I was slowly falling asleep, I heard his reply through our bond. I love you more, my Luna. Chapter 64 Complete at Last, or The Playful Wolves Hunter, Claire and I would be going to my pack, our pack, tomorrow. Before that, I wanted to enjoy relaxing moments with my mate only to be in the sheer peace of having her close in my arms. I could hardly bring myself to stay away from her after what happened. Even if I could, Max wouldn't allow me. She was now sleeping in my arms. No, they are completely ours! Max released a loud howl of excitement. He was still hyper about it. <laughs> I didn't blame him. We got lucky. We were with the best females. And we are completely theirs, I added, snuggling my sleepy sweetie further into my chest. Let's sleep a bit more, Hunter. My female muttered before she pressed a kiss on my chest. I chuckled. Nothing would make me leave this bed with my mate. Only her. Later, we woke up and showered together. I heard something growling. This time it wasn't me. It was your stomach, Max muttered. Hunter, come with me, my Claire said, pulling me by the hand and walking out of the room. Where are we going? I asked, without stopping following her. Do you think you're the only one with surprises? She chuckled, turning to look at me. She took me to the riverbank. The same place two wolves did wild things some days ago. Claire guided me to a little hidden place between a couple of short trees where a towel covered the green grass and a picnic was settled. Two flutes, a glass of wine, orange juice, fruit, sandwiches, a bowl of salad, croissant, and even cake were on the towel. I looked at my small female. She had a little coy smile. When did you even do this? I asked. Sarah helped me. I guess she's a double agent. She added, chuckling and shuddering her shoulder softly. We sat down on the picnic mat, and I wrapped my arms around her. I knew that I was being a bit extra, but at this time, I didn't care. I had to be touching her, surrounded by her presence. Only this way I could call my instinct, my inner beast, or better said puppy dog, and even my heart. After all the fright, I still had a hard time understanding, realizing the fact that she was safe now. I need you close, 
I told my mate, and she only smiled in response. You can. You should have me all the time in your arms. It's not too much. She replied. Probably she caught my possessive thoughts. Now she was inside my mind and soul, and I was inside hers. Her soul felt good, felt light and natural. She felt like a sunny morning, a fresh fruit, a beautiful day. Our females are beautiful all around, Max added. He was grinning in my mind again. I honestly didn't understand how Hope could put up with his not-at-all sexy grin. How are you feeling? Claire asked. I couldn't be happier. You are mine, I replied, smiling from ear to ear. I mean about what happened when I was taken away. She asked, as a light line of worry creased her forehead. I have never been so afraid in my whole life. I honestly didn't know what I could do without you. I have heard many times that several wolves die when they lose their mate. I always thought it was a bit of exaggeration, but I finally understood it when I believed I was about to lose you. I wouldn't want to have survived. She gasped, and her eyes welled up with tears. Hunter, you... She spun herself around my arms and enlaced my neck with her arms. We are both here now. You survived, my sweets, I replied as I caressed her silky hair gently. That was all that mattered. I was still very hurt about Tyler's betrayal, of course, I was. However, I wanted to focus on my future with my female. I wanted to choose to be happy instead of holding on to resentment and revenge. After eating, feeding each other, and talking about nothing and everything, I laid on the picnic towel. Claire placed her head on my chest, and we both looked up at the blue spring sky, contemplating our future and enjoying our present. I hope you will like our pack. If you don't, we can always change some things, I told her. I hope they like me. She sighed. After getting to know you, they surely will, I replied. I understood her worry, but we would make sure the pack members would end up accepting her. Maybe they will need some time. Even I needed some time to realize how incredible she was. You can be dumb and quite slow. The annoying mud in my head sneered. Max! I huffed in my mind. What? At least now you know better. We will guide our pack, open their eyes as good alphas do. When you dumb up again, I will step up and show them the way. He told me. Thanks for the reassurance, mutt. I replied to the canine jerk. Suddenly Claire jumped on me, pinning me to the picnic towel as she covered me with her body, licking my face. Claire? I asked, a bit confused by her antics. It's Hope. The naughty little wolf giggled. She took control of Claire's body. She was learning fast and growing more powerful by the day. I want to play with my big brown wolf. She added, with a funny smile that showed Claire's gums. <laughs> I chuckled. Give me back to Claire when we will let you have the big brown wolf run and play around. I replied. She nodded with a hyper smile, moving Claire's leg up and down as she would move her tail, were she in her natural wolf form. Claire and I went behind the bushes and took off our clothes, before shifting to our wolves. I looked down at her naked body and licked my lips inadvertently before I pulled her into my embrace. I had to feel every inch of her skin against mine. Even though I had her last night, I craved more. I needed more of her. My desire for her wasn't only bigger than my love. That had no limits. I crashed my mouth on her rosy lips and kissed her, passionately, desperately, wanting tenderness, sweetness, and possessiveness flowed on my kiss. If it wasn't for an annoying wolf pacing and, in my mind, howling and growling to see his open run with her, 
I would have taken my Claire to our room now. It's my turn now. Don't go back to being a selfish jerk. You were doing so well. I was training you so well. Max taunted in my mind. The nerve of the mutt. If it wasn't for hope, he would see when he would have his turn. Claire parted our embrace. I can't make hope wait any more. She chuckled. She shifted to the small and pretty light golden she-wolf, and I shifted to Max's form. They ran freely, played around, and did their things. Hope. I was looking forward to shifting again to my cute furry shape and see my big sexy boy again. After we both shifted, I blinked at him and teased. Hey, sexy, catch me if you can. Luckily for Claire, now she knows how she can close her eyes while she's in the back of our shared mind. He let out a happy howl before I ran away as fast as my paws could take me. Let the games begin. We all know how it would end up. Chapter 65 A New Home Claire Two days after we consolidated our bond, we headed to the Black Forest Pack. Hunter was driving, and I was on the passenger seat, looking out of the window, as a wave of anticipation built in my stomach and made it churn a bit. It felt so different than the first time I'd been here, more than two years ago. We passed by the Pack's town. It was quite big and beautiful, with the little well-maintained white houses, the square with some shops, and a playground for pups. I haven't really noticed this place. I didn't look at it last time. Do you like it? Hunter asked me. Yes. It's quite beautiful. And the town seems much bigger than I expected. I muttered, glancing at him. It took a long time and a lot of effort to rebuild it after my father passed. We didn't have any money left and the relationship with the other packs was very strained. Thus, no one really wanted to support us. Ty. He stopped in his tracks, exhaling sharply. I imagined that having his oldest and best friend doing what Tyler did, betraying his trust and going insane, wasn't easy at all. It's okay. You guys still had good times together before it happened. I trailed off in an attempt to comfort my mate as I sent him some love through our bond. Yes, that made the blow much harder. He replied, It's normal that you grieve it. Feel the loss. You were so close. I added, He died to me after he took you, tried to hurt you. I couldn't imagine the extent of his cruelty and insanity. Hunter exhaled sharply. I took his hand that was resting on top of my thigh, in mine, squeezing it in reassurance. I wondered if the people in his pack had the same mindset that Tyler did, when it comes to Omegas. To me. Or if those who liked and supported Tyler would dislike me for what happened to him, what he brought upon himself. They could also try to separate me from Hunter, but it was absolutely hard now that we had consolidated our bond. Besides, I'm sure we both wouldn't let anything separate us ever again. I think my mate felt my uneasiness. Don't be nervous. They will like you, my love. He reassured me as he took my hand in his. I will do my very best to be a good Luna for them, for each wolf of this pack. I started. We will. Hope chimed in. I know you both will. He smiled, glancing at me for a moment. After a few minutes, we stopped in front of the light gray pack mansion, parked, and left the car. Stefano and Sunday came to receive us. Sunday surprised me with a welcoming hug. We are happy you both arrived. Everyone missed their alpha and are quite excited to meet their Luna. She said with a sweet and genuine smile. I also saw TJ, the girl who was working with me in the kitchen last time I was here. She was shying around, hugging a pillar of the porch rail. TJ! I called to her excitedly, happy to see a familiar face. She walked in our direction slowly, hesitantly. Luna, Alpha, 
Her voice wasn't much louder than a whisper as she did a respectful curtsy before us. TJ, I'm still Claire. Come here, I said as I wrapped her in a hug. We all walked inside the pack house, and Hunter and I went to his room. Our new room. I haven't ever been here before. I looked around. It was a large room with a minimalistic decoration. A large wood canopy bed, two bedside tables, a carpet, a spacious closet, and a big television. You can decorate it and anything around the house in the pack as you want, my sweets. He said as he wrapped his arms around my waist from behind and pressed my back flush against his muscular chest. Make it your home. He added before he pressed his kiss on my shoulder dangerously close to my mate mark. Teaser. In the evening, around twenty pack members were invited to dine here at the mansion, and I was supposed to meet them for the first time and be introduced as their Luna, even though I would only become Luna after I officially joined this pack and have some sort of Luna ceremony in which Hunter would make me his Luna, transfer me some powers and abilities as the ability to mind link all pack members simultaneous and carry a certain authority in my voice that would make the wolves of this pack submit to my command when I deem necessary. Hunter and I entered the main dining hall with our fingers intertwined. I could hear many whispers, gasps, and some comments as, How can she be the Luna? It can't be true. I took a long breath to calm my insides and keep my head high. I wouldn't force myself on them, but it didn't mean I would tolerate any form of prejudice against myself or anyone else. I could feel the anger building up inside my mate through our bond. Don't say anything, at least not now, I asked him, using our mental connection. He nodded. I knew he didn't like it, and the alpha in him was screaming to protect and defend me, but he made an effort to do what I asked for. We took our seats, sharing a table in the center of the room with Stefano and Sunday. My eyes met her gaze of sympathy. She was very sweet. In the same way people are taught to hate and discriminate, they can learn to love and accept others. Sunday murmured with a tiny smile. She was right. It may take long, may be challenging, but I wouldn't rest until I'm able to change the mindset of as many wolves of this pack, and even this realm, as possible. Claire, let's introduce you to the pack before the food arrives. When the meat is here, they will become wild, famished wolves, and not even my alpha voice would be able to attract their full attention. Hunter said through the bond. You're right. Let's do it. I replied. He held my hand, and we both stood up. Let's all welcome my mate and future Luna of the Black Forest Pack, Claire. Hunter announced loud. No one dared to say anything but I could see their shocked faces and bugged eyes. I could feel anger and an overwhelming feeling of protectiveness radiating from my alpha in equal amounts. I'm saying some words to them. I told him through the bond after inhaling deeply, gathering all my resolve. I was tired of having to prove myself over and over, but I would always do it to help open people's eyes and make them see beyond ranks. As you can all see, I am an Omega, but it isn't all that I am, as your own rank isn't all that you are. I am an Omega. I'm also a nurse, a fighter, hunter's mate, a very determined and caring person, and if you take me, I'll be your Luna. All of you already have ideas, mental concepts, and your own experiences with Omegas. You all, even the Omegas present, I said, eyeing some of the Omega waitresses that were serving the drinks. You probably heard that Omegas couldn't do something because of their lack of rank, lack of wolf, lack of strength. Maybe some of you also heard you couldn't do something due to your gender, your age, your bloodline, or the size of your wolf. But you already have, or should try to challenge the odds, not let the opinions and judgments of others limit what you are and what you want for yourself. I said in one single breath. My mate is a proof that one can challenge these odds, challenge their own limitations, changing themselves, their destiny, 
and in the process changing the people around them. Claire trained every day to be able to shift to her wolf, and she succeeded. She fought a vampire and knocked him down. Hunter added, We were quite on sync lately, since our souls became one. I heard gasps being mustered around the room in reaction to his words. Hunter, Claire proved to your stubborn and ignorant alpha that when someone truly wants and fights for something, it can come to be. This all, this female besides me, is an inspiration for our pack, because that's the spirit our pack needs. We shouldn't let anything limit us. We should believe in ourselves and our community, make effort and fight every day to achieve our potential. That's our way to flourish and become the best pack with the strongest and happiest wolves of the realm, I added. The room exploded in ovation, and Stefano told me through our link, It's good to have our alpha back. In the last two years you were quite... meh, but now I see you are better than ever, stubborn and ignorant alpha. Don't push too far, Max replied with a growl and a laugh through the mind link. Stefano was incorrigible. You all know how much I love and care for this pack, how much I fought for it. I know that our pack deserves the best, the strongest, and most thoughtful Luna, and I wouldn't settle for less. That's why I'm making Claire, my Luna, our Luna. Welcome her, with open arms and without prejudices. Allow her to show you just how strong, persistent, and kind she is. Just like she already showed me. I knew my pack trusted me, and most of the pack members would trust my decision. Not only because of my title as their alpha, but because I showed them for two decades that I wouldn't do anything to jeopardize or harm this pack. My Claire turned to look at me. She had a loving smile. You are an incredible alpha. You already made me a better one than I used to be, even before taking our place by my side as my Luna. I replied in the same way, through our bond. Being an Omega and having to overcome all the challenges she did is a strength, an asset, rather than a weakness. Don't let a lack of rank blind you, I added before I grabbed my wine glass. To Luna Claire! I raised my glass in a toast. To Luna Claire! Most of the wolves followed me. I knew it would be hard for some old conservative wolves to accept it, to accept her. But honestly, if they didn't come to understand things with time, I didn't want this kind of people around my pack. I could always move to another pack. I will chase them away, Max declared. Extremely protective of his hope. If you do it, Hope and Claire will chase your tail. We just tell them to go away, no harm done. I replied to my unsettled wolf. I wasn't, and never was, a tyrant. But I would certainly invite those who can't accept my mate to go out of my lands. We took back our seats, and I could notice my mate exhaling in relief. It was better than I expected. They trust you. I could see and feel it. You are right. Being an Omega can be a strength. It made me more sensitive to the situation and struggles of others. Claire added, We will face challenges, and sometimes it won't be easy. But we are in this together. I muttered to her, before I took her hand in mine and planted a kiss on it. Count on me, too. I trust Hunter and his good judgment. Besides, what you did shutting the old crampy alphas in the meeting out was totally badass, Stefano added. Me as well. Claire, what Tyler did was monstrous, totally cuckoo bananas. The wolves of this pack, at least a good 99.9% .9 of them, aren't rankest lunatics. You have nothing to worry about. Having you and my Sunday around will only be good, trust me. Stefano added in his casual way, making Claire even chuckle a bit. Thank you, Stefano. No problem, Luna, he replied. 
We should have a party. It would be the perfect opportunity to introduce me as your new beta. Sunday is my mate, and Claire could get to know more wolves before becoming Luna. Those are quite good reasons to have a party, and it's not like anyone needs reasons to party, right? Stefano added. Actually, it seems like a great idea. I would like to meet everyone from the pack before becoming their Luna. It's only fair that they know me before. Claire smiled. Besides, it's also a beautiful way to celebrate the fact that we found each other. Sunday beamed, looking at Stefano and enlacing her fingers with his. Are you fated mates? Claire asked them. No, but we love each other. Sometimes love comes with fate, sometimes not. And Stefano is the love and destiny I choose. Sunday replied with a sweet smile, gazing at Stefano with a lot of tenderness. He was indeed very lucky he found her. That's really beautiful. Claire replied. In our case, love and destiny came together, I said, as I caressed the back of my sweet's hand, making her smile. I looked intently into her warm eyes and told her through our bond, Now we just have to have a ceremony, bind you to this pack, and make you my Luna. Chapter 66 Bonfire and Revelations Hunter on the day before Claire's ceremony to join our pack and become our Luna, we had the party that Stefano planned. I was glad we have Sunday to help him now, since my new beta seemed uh, more inclined to plan parties than doing the rest of his work. But any beta would be better than the insane traitor one I used to consider my best friend and brother. Stefano invited all the wolves of our pack. We had a barbecue, music, many bonfires and flowing wine, as any good werewolf party was supposed to. It was indeed a good opportunity for Claire to meet all of them before joining the pack. She would feel better about it. At the dinner, she only met a few dozen wolves, mainly the ones who lived in the pack mansion or the houses nearby. They seemed to receive her well, at least after my pronouncement and her words. However... Tonight, the area outside the pack mansion would be packed. I understood her point and admired her democratic and fair spirit in not wanting to force herself, as the Luna of the pack, if the wolves here didn't accept her. However, I would do everything for them to accept her and for her to feel welcome here. I was waiting for her. She came out from our room, wearing a beautiful dark blue dress that hugged her waist but flowed down her hips. Change of plans, Max teased in my mind. Part of me really wanted to cancel the party and have my own party with my female, but I knew that she should get familiar with the pack. You look gorgeous, sweets, I said, lacing my arms with her before I pecked her lips. Thank you. You are also quite handsome tonight, Mr. Alpha, she said with a smile. We went to the outdoor area in front of the pack mansion where many wolves were already gathered. Many of them stopped what they were doing to look at me and my mate. I could hear Claire swallowing hard, but she didn't let her anxiety show in her face. Stefano and Sunday took a few steps closer to us and I started speaking. As you all know, Stefano is the new beta of the Black Forest pack after the former beta went rogue and betrayed us. Tonight, we celebrate it, and we also celebrate his mate and female, Beta, Sunday Coinin. I had to tell them about Tyler. I always tried to be transparent with my wolves, not keeping things from them. But I didn't go into the sordid details about what happened. Our future Luna, Claire Valoy, is also here tonight, and I want you to show her a warm welcome. I told them as my eyes traveled to Claire for a moment, she beamed a confident smile. We mingled with the party guests, besides the wolves of our pack, Flor and Claire's mom were there. I didn't expect to see her mom any time soon, and I even doubted that she would come for Claire's joining ceremony, since she seemed quite hesitant about coming to the Black Forest pack. 
Fleur approached us with a smile. I am happy to know you are well, Luna Claire. When I learned about what happened, I was quite worried. Sometimes we are wrong about people, and they can do the most insane and evil things out of prejudice and hatred. Fleur said with a sigh as she lowered her gaze for an instant. True. It's really sad. Claire replied. They started to talk about pack management and issues. I was glad they were getting along well. Suddenly, unsettling words took my attention from my mate to someone else. Petronius, an old wolf from my father's times, was talking down my mate with treacherous whispers. But I heard him well. Max's ears were peeking inside my mind as he stirred in a fit of raw anger. That dog dared to say that my mate was a low-class joke that seduced and lured me into marking her. Max wanted to shift and teach him a hurtful lesson, but I held on. I won't let him have his way with the mutt, even though deep inside it is what I want as well. However... I wouldn't shed blood and ruin my Claire's and my special day because of a disrespectful mongrel like Petronius. I heard you. You have three hours to pack your belongings and leave my pack. My wolf and I won't tolerate any disrespect towards our Luna. Max and I said firmly with a growl. It wasn't only directed at this mutt. It was a further reminder that no one can disrespect my mate. Claire approached me fast and wrapped her small hand around my arm. Are you okay? Her voice carried a certain worry, even inside my head. Now I am. Max and I won't let anyone disrespect you. Ever. I replied with a sharp exhale. Claire only wrapped her arms around me in response, but her presence, her touch alone, washed me over with comfort. Claire. When Hunter went away for a moment, my mom came to talk to me. It was quite hard to convince my mom to come to this pack for an unknown reason. She hesitated a lot. I even imagined she wouldn't come for the joining ceremony tomorrow, so it was a great surprise seeing her here tonight. We would have a lot to talk about, things to clarify and a past to bring to light. I really hoped she could grow comfortable with being in this pack and maybe even consider moving here. Claire... My mom called me as she took some steps in my direction. I think she still felt uncomfortable around my mate, but what matters most was to have her here with me. I'm so happy you came, I replied, hugging her. I just wondered why you were so hesitant. She inhaled deeply. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this now, but I better do it before I hesitate. I don't like this pack. Here is not the place for me. The last time I was here... Your father was from here. I don't want to risk seeing him around. She trailed off as she rubbed her hands together nervously. What? I asked a bit in shock. So that's why she didn't want to come. Could he be here? When I was a pup, I dreamed that I could remember my father, that I could have seen him one time before he passed away. But now that I knew he was alive, and the kind of male he was the one who abandoned and rejected his fated mate and his infant pup because of prejudice, I wasn't sure if I wanted to ever see his face. Above it all, I didn't want my mom to have to go through it. I didn't want that she has to see the one who brought her so much suffering and heartache. My mom deserved to be happy and move on, to finally be able to let her past go, not to be confronted with it in the shape of the mate who rejected and forsaken her. He would probably be here today if he was still in this pack, which is probably the case since wolves rarely switch to another pack. I sighed deeply, not really knowing what to do to comfort my mom. I can bite him. He won't upset mom, Hope said in my mind. She was very protective of my mom. It was very cute. But biting wasn't the solution. Thinking that this day and my beginning as the Luna of this pack would go smoothly would only be lying to myself but I know that I can do it. Have you seen him? I asked my mom. No, I think I should leave. I don't want to see him, and above everything, I want to avoid an uncomfortable situation for you and your new pack. First impressions are important. She sighed. No, you shouldn't leave. 
For me, it's more important to have you here by my side tonight than having everything running smoothly, unless seeing him is too bad for you. I replied, placing a comforting hand over her shoulder. She covered her face with her hands in aggravation. Unknown POV. An Omega as a Luna. Alpha Hunter went even farther away than his insane father. I wish Tyler was here to do something about it. The worst part is that I heard that they had the blessing of the Alpha King and his foreigner mate. This pack is becoming a havoc. Soon it would be left to the vultures. But there was something, also, about his Omega. Something odd and familiar. She smelled familiar, and her name, it clicked something in my mind. I took a large gulp of wine. I was alone at my table. The others were chit-chatting around. Some shifted, like they always do in this kind of event, and some were even dancing. I saw Petronius, an old comrade, whispering to his pup, talking about our new Omega Luna. If I had a pup, I would do the same. That was a very bad example for our pups, the order of things inverted, disrupted. But I wasn't the only one who heard Petronius. The Alpha took large and powerful steps towards him, fuming. He not only scolded him, but told him to leave the pack. That was what I was planning to do, too. Not because of any orders or command from Hunter, but because I couldn't live in a pack like this. This is an abnormality. We are wolves, not hyenas. We can't live like this. I was going to help myself to more wine when I saw her, a ghost from my past. Cordelia. Even more absurd. She was talking to the Omega Luna, and they looked as if they were close, quite close. They surely know each other well. What was she doing here? Realization hit me hard. No, that couldn't be. That must be only a mistake or a trick of my tipsy mind. But the girl is called Valoy, like Cordelia. Something in her smell resembled Cordelia's as well. That couldn't be. Chapter 67 Bonds and Blood, or I Am the Luna Jonas's Point of View Tyler was a beta, but he never helped me. He never allowed his position to come to the benefit of his own old father. But it would be much easier with this girl. Omegas are very submissive and compliant. She wouldn't deny if I ask her for help for an improvement in my current position in this pack. I heard they were looking for a new Gamma, and I would be the perfect candidate. Maybe having an Omega Luna wasn't all bad. I could lay my disgust towards this abnormality aside and take some advantage of her position. It's like they say, the goddess acts in a mysterious way, and... My chance and opportunity to finally ascend in the pack hierarchy has come through an Omega. About Tyler, I was sad that he wasn't around any more, but no wolf should challenge their alpha in the way he did, not even having good intentions as he had. He was obsessed with Hunter uh, to such a level that he couldn't think clearly any more and remember that he was the beta and not the Luna of the pack. However, it wasn't like he was a good son anyway. I only hoped he was well and would call eventually. I took some steps towards the Omega Luna and my former mate. I cleared my throat. Cordelia and the girl turned around, looking at me. I saw the blood disappearing from Cordelia's face. She was growing pale, like wax. Her eyes opened widely and her jaw dropped. She looked like she had seen a ghost. Mom, are you okay? The girl asked worriedly, wrapping her hands around Cordelia's forearms. She is fine, only surprised. I replied simply, 
attracting her light brown eyes towards me. She looked like Cordelia, not like me. Who are you? She asked, furrowing her brows and frowning slightly. I am your father. I have been looking for you for quite some time now. I replied, telling a little white lie. It wouldn't hurt anyone. The Alpha approached with long and fast strides and wrapped his arms around the girl from behind, pulling her back to his chest and folding his arms in front of her in a protective way. Jonas, he said with narrowed eyes. Are you here to ask about Tyler? He didn't even get what he deserved and there is nothing else to be said about him. He won't ever be back to this pack. He said firmly, authority rolling off of his commanding aura. This made me bare my neck to him inadvertently. No, Alpha, I am not here to talk about Tyler. He disobeyed his Alpha and was punished. That is how packs work. This is the past now. I started. What does Tyler have to do with him? The Omega Luna asked, confused, tilting her head up to look at the big alpha towering over her. I am here thinking about the future, about your new Luna. I concluded. Jonas is Tyler's father, even though never present. The alpha explained to her, not even acknowledging my words. Her mouth opened, and she also looked paralyzed for a moment, before she recovered her senses with a deep breath. He claimed to be my father. She murmured softly, almost absently. Cordelia spoke for the first time since she had seen me. He is your father, Claire. Unfortunately. She muttered with a sharp and pained exhale without even looking at me. Rejection hurts, but I did what I had to do at that moment. I couldn't let Cordelia ruin me and my reputation. Claire, I looked at the dark-haired man in front of me. Now that I knew it, I could actually notice his similarity with Tyler. Even before knowing he was my brother, I wished he was still alive, but forever away, out of our lives for good. Tyler was my half-brother. I couldn't believe it. My blood froze, and hope howled inside my mind at this news, at this fact. My heart clenched painfully, numbly. Did he know we were related? We weren't related to him, Claire. We shared blood, but nothing more than that. We shared no good memories or bonds of affection. We aren't related to them or to this gone father. Hope growled, and I could feel my eyes tingling a bit. I knew they were glowing. My fierce wolf was very worked up. She was right. Blood is a weak connection when there is no affection. Did Tyler know he was related to Claire? Hunter asked in an almost feral voice. I... I don't know, Alpha. Jonas replied. I guess we won't ever know, but I made my peace with it. Blood wouldn't make him my brother. He was still a rankest monster. I just wanted to let him go out of my thoughts and my memories. This is the male that rejected you, Mom. I asked, turning to look at my mom. She was a bit less pale now. I wanted to hug her, but my mate wasn't relenting. His protective hold on me. I squeezed her cold hand in reassurance and pulled her a bit closer to me and away from him. Yes, Claire. She replied, looking down. She had nothing to feel bad or ashamed for. He was the one who did. Apart from leaving her and rejecting her, what caused her immense physical and emotional pain, he made her feel really bad about herself. Think very little about herself. He crushed her. There was no place for such a male in our lives. It was in the past. Now, I want to build a new future with my family. With my daughter. Jonas said, taking one step closer. The nerve of that male. However, Hunter took a step back, taking me with him. I could feel the warm waves of anger building up in his vibrating chest. He also wasn't liking it. Not at all. I am not your daughter. We never were and won't ever be family. Family is not blood. It's much more than that. I declared firmly but calmly, 
even though my mind was in turmoil. You heard my Luna. Step away. Hunter rasped with a growl. Alpha, please listen up. You know, she will think about it later and reconsider it. You know, Ome uh, females, they change their minds often. Just please listen up. I, I only want a chance to make it right. Away. Out. I ordered with a growl. It wasn't my Luna's voice. I couldn't use it until after Hunter makes me his Luna tomorrow. But somehow, my voice mixed with Hope's commanded some respect. And that man, that stranger that claimed to be my father, took a few steps away as his eyes grew wide. I think Hope's fierceness and determination compensate for her lack of rank, giving her the authority she needed to shove that male away. Maybe one day I would consider talking to him, and maybe even give him a chance. But not in this way, having him belittling me and ignoring my mom. Not in his opportunistic terms. Some bypasser wolves looked at me in awe, and a couple of them even lowered their gaze, showing that their wolves were submitting to Hope's dominance. That was something insane, unimaginable for an Omega wolf to do. My hope is indeed incredible. Yes, pups, I am the Luna, she declared in my head. She indeed was. My so-called father went away without any further word. Hunter spun me around in his arms. His gorgeous gray eyes had the gleam of amazement. Even my mother was looking at me in awe. She looked proud of me, prouder than ever and it made my heart jump in my chest and my wolf do somersaults in my head. It was a dizzying, but a sweet combination. You are amazing, my Luna, he said, pressing me against his firm chest and kissing the top of my head. Claire, my mom muttered with wet eyes and a small smile. I broke from Hunter's embrace and hugged him. He won't be around anymore. We will make this pack your home, Mom a place you feel welcome to be without any discomfort to fear. I reassured her. We will make every effort and change everything that is necessary to make you feel good here, Cordelia. Hunter told my mom for the first time she actually looked at him and held his gaze, a smile on her face. Thank you, Alpha Hunter, she said. Please, it's Hunter for you. We are family. He said, making my mom smile lightly and a huge smile found its way to my face and my heart. That was the only family I needed. Jonas and Tyler, they were never family, just people that shared blood. Family is this. These two, Sarah and Tor, are my family. Family is when love makes us find the way back to each other. Because deep inside, the heart never left. Chapter 68 She Is My Luna Part 1 Claire Exactly one week after the day I first arrived in this pack, I would officially join it, become a member, and then the Luna of the Black Forest Pack. I was wearing a light and long dress with the colors of the pack, blue and black. Sunday, my mom and TJ were helping me to get ready. Not that I needed any help, I wasn't overdoing it but it was good to have some girls' time. Alpha Hunter is going to freak out when he sees you, TJ said with a squeal. He certainly will, Sunday smiled. I am so happy that most of the people accept you. I was a bit afraid, you know. Some people are so full of prejudice, TJ added with a sad face, casting her eyes down for a moment. I patted her back, trying to comfort her. I was also very relieved and surprised that the vast majority of Hunter's pack members really trusted him and his choice of making me his Luna. I knew that I would eventually face some challenges and resistance from some pack members, but Hunter and I were ready for it, to face it together. I caught his approaching earthy scent. He was close. He entered the room after knocking once. Claire, ladies. He greeted before he closed the distance between us. Before you join the pack, I have a little something to show you. Come with me. Hunter said as he took my hand in his. After we left the room and closed the door behind us, my mate took a handkerchief from his pocket and blindfolded me. 
It's a surprise. He let me know. Hunter and Max want to go all naughty now. Those two. Hope muttered in my head. I would say those three, taking the expression in the face of my grinning wolf. But no, Hunter and Max weren't. Or were they? Hunter wrapped an arm around my shoulder and guided me somewhere. After five minutes, he halted and pulled me to his chest before taking my blindfold. I blinked twice, adjusting my eyes to the light before I could see a little plaque on the center of the wood door where we were standing in front of. It read, Nurse Claire Valos Wolfric. He even added his last name to mine. I turned around and looked at him. A huge smile on my face and a couple of tears threatening to escape my eyes. Thank you. I muttered before I sank into his embrace. You haven't seen inside yet, sweets. He responded, opening the door and walking in with me. It was a neat and spacious office with a working desk, a modern computer, a complete bookshelf, and a hospital bed. We have two doctors here. You'll probably meet them later today. You can talk to them and decide with whom you want to work. I looked at him a bit perplexed. Honestly, we didn't have much time to talk about my professional plans and nurse practicing in the last week between me getting to know the pack and our little honeymoon phase. Yeah, we have been pretty busy. Hope sighed dreamily inside my head, making a little rumble resonate in my chest. The only time we talked about it indirectly was when Hunter told me I didn't have to work that much when I became his Luna. But it was in one of our first trainings. It felt so long ago. But it was only two weeks ago. You don't like it? You don't want to be a nurse anymore? He asked, furrowing his brows lightly and giving me a questioning look. I think I was still looking a little dumbfounded, just looking around without saying anything. No, uh, of course not. I love it. And I want to keep being a nurse. I'm just surprised I didn't see it coming. It's a great office, and I'm excited to work here. I smiled, looking into his gray eyes. He smiled, too, and pulled me flush against his solid chest. Maybe we could have some fun on this bed before you start working here. He added with a teasing grin. I knew it! Hope barked, squealed in my mind. Oh, we will for sure, I said with my own grin. I still have to figure out how to conciliate my Luna duties with my work. I sighed thoughtfully. If you have a Luna's beta, just like the Luna Queen has Sarah, it will help a lot. If anyone can do both things, this person is you. Hunter suggested. His words made me melt a bit. Having a Luna's beta would be quite helpful. I just have to choose the right person. That's a good idea. I replied, kissing my mate. Thank you, love. It's amazing. I said in his mind without breaking our kiss. Okay, guys, I get it but it's almost time for the joining ceremony to start. Hope let us know, making me smile against my mate's lips. It's time. We went together to the Little Moon Goddess's temple near the Pack Mansion. It was decorated with wildflowers in front of it. Many tables and chairs were placed for the feast we would have after the ceremony was over. While walking to the temple, I could see the expectant faces of many of our friends. Sarah, Tor the royal beta, and his family. His pups were stirring and moving agitatedly, wanting to run. His little girl Joanna looked so cute in her purple dress. I was quite sure she wanted to jump around and make her pretty dress dirty, or even shift to her wolf and shred it in pieces. This brought a little chuckle to my face. It's hard for young pups to stay still. I could also see all the alphas and lunas, and some betas and gammas. Even the king and queen were here, some of the Alphas nodded to us as we walked. Alpha Kane and Alpha Blake had a little scowl. But today, they didn't matter a bit. Fergus didn't come. Now his son Nathan was the Alpha of his pack, and he was here with his Beta. I was also happy to see a very special pixie. Jyacinth came as well. Besides, of course, Fleur, she was a sweet and very skilled wolf. Hunter and I were considering asking her to become the Gamma. Or maybe even the Luna's beta. We hoped she would accept it. It was a pity that Katie wasn't here today. Hunter and I had so much to thank her for. She was, indeed, a remarkable female. 
and I hope one day she can meet someone she loves and loves her back, not only to join in a union, but for also helping a pack to flourish. Besides my mom, my cousin Imogene, and our other relatives were also here. Hunter and I stopped at the door of the temple in front of a beautiful statue of the goddess made of black stone. A table was placed there, a knife, a bucket of water, and some towels over it. Welcome to the ceremony to make my mate Claire a member of the Black Forest Pack and my Luna. Hunter started. All those present looked at us intently. Hunter took my hand in his and cut it slightly and making me hoof a little at the stinging sensation. Sorry. He muttered inside my mind. I only smiled in response. He also cut his own palm before starting. Claire Valoy, do you accept to become a member of the Black Forest Pack? He asked in the ceremonial way. Yes. I replied. Repeat my words. I... I... Claire Valoy... Claire Valos... Accept Alpha Hunter Wolfric as my Alpha. Accept Alpha Hunter Wolfric as my Alpha. I pledge my loyalty and alliance to the Black Forest Pack, all its wolves, and Alpha Hunter Wolfric. I plead my loyalty and alliance to the Black Forest Pack, all its wolves, and Alpha Hunter Wolfric. In doing so, I swear to protect, defend, honor, obey, and respect Alpha Hunter, and the Alpha King, and Luna Queen. In doing so, I swear to protect, defend, honor, obey, and respect Alpha Hunter, and the Alpha King, and Luna Queen. I said with him, We, Hunter Wolfric and my wolf Max, accept and welcome you, Claire Valoy, as a member of the Black Forest Pack. He also used the ritualistic words as he pressed open our skin and flesh together, allowing the pack magic that flowed in his blood to enter me. I felt a little jolt of energy going through my body. It also made me feel even more connected with my mate and all the wolves of his pack, our pack. By establishing a link with this pack, my connection with the royal pack disappeared automatically. No one can be a member of more than one pack. Welcome to our pack, sweets, Hunter said with a beautiful smile before he sank a small towel on the bottom of the warm water and wrapped my bleeding hand with it gently. He took my hand in his and raised our joined hands as Max and he released a loud celebratory howl. Stefano and some of the wolves of our pack followed suit. The king and queen came forward to the front of the temple, beside us. I was a little surprised. It was normal for the king only to take part and most of the time are the ones to officiate the union between an Alpha and his Luna, and the ceremonies when one becomes a new Alpha or Luna of a pack. Claire, I am very happy to be here today. Be a part of it and officiate your union with Hunter. The Queen said, taking my towel free hand and answering my unspoken question. She wanted to be here for us. A smile filled with emotion found its way to my face. Thank you for everything, Luna Lee, I replied, calling her the way she told me to when we first met when I was only a pup. It's my pleasure. You are like me. You want to bring change and justice to this realm, she murmured with such a sweet and warm smile that made me want to hug her, but I didn't. The Alpha King cleared his throat, attracting our attention back to him. <clears throat> We are gathered here today to unite Alpha Hunter and his fated mate, Claire Valoy, before the goddess, realm, the Black Forest Pack, the people, and the land. Today, this pack shall welcome and celebrate its new Luna. The king said. Hunter unwrapped my hand and refreshed the cut on his palm. Alpha's heal faster than other wolves, so his cut was already starting to close. My mate clutched his palm in a fist and let a few drops of his blood leak into a ceremonial golden chalice. I did the same. The queen mixed our blood with a green-colored brew, giving it to Hunter. First, he took a gulp from the chalice, and then it was my turn. 
I think the queen added some flower extracts to it because it didn't have the metallic taste of blood. It tasted rather good. May the goddess bless you with a thriving leading together, filled with loyal pack members, wisdom to take the hardest decision, hope and an open heart to be able to see all the abundance and blessings surrounding you, patience and strength to face the times of scarcity and dread. May the goddess bless you as mates, enlightening your love with prudence, spurting your shared bed with passion, and gifting you with the joy of fertility. The king said, We, Hunter Wolfric and Max, Alpha of the Black Forest Pack, accept you, Claire Valois, as our Luna, to lead alongside you and care for, protect, defend, and esteem our pack together. We swear to be your protector, your safe haven, your best friend, your family, your male, your lover, and your alpha, protecting you against all dangers and dreads with our own life, honoring, respecting, and being eternally loyal to you, placing your bare needs and survival first before anything. Provide for everything your body, soul, and heart may deem necessary, walking by your side through life and eternity. Hunter and Max said the ritualistic words together, but to my surprise they kept speaking. We swear to face all challenges together. Never allow hardships to separate us, but take them as an opportunity to grow even closer to each other and in this way come stronger from every trial. I promise to understand your needs and satisfy your desires, to lead our pack with you as equals, to see you for who you are and love you always and completely. Their words made me cry a little. Even hope was howling whining inside my head. I accept to be your Luna, to be the Luna of the Black Forest Pack. I promise to always do my best, dedicate myself to this pack, to the well-being and best interest of all its members, regardless of their rank, age, or bloodline. I promise to listen to all the wolves of this pack with an open mind and heart, to be their guide, support, mentor, leader, I said, adding my words to the normal, simple Luna acceptance speech. While I looked between Hunter and the wolves of my new pack, I turned to my mate and uttered, looking at his amazing gray eyes, I accept. I am honored and overjoyed to be your Luna, mate, and female, affirming before our pack and all our friends that besides being my alpha from now on, you are my partner in everything, my safe haven, my heaven, and my love. Hope and I said with a smile, I could feel a wave of energy, a wave of love flowing from my mate to me. In one more way, we were one. Hunter, now you are my Luna, sweets. Our Luna. This Pax Luna. I husked in her mind as I took her in my arms, pecking her lips gently. To the Luna of the Black Forest Pack. The Alpha King hailed, and a round of howls followed his words. With my enhanced hearing, I knew well who among my pack members was silent, who didn't support my Claire. I wouldn't act like a tyrant, but I also wouldn't tolerate any kind of disrespect towards my mate. They wouldn't dare, Max growled in my mind. Most of them wouldn't the sane and reasonable ones, but some wolves lost their better judgment and even a bit of their reverence and respect for their alpha once alcohol started flowing freely in their bloodstream. I took Claire's hand in mine, and we walked towards the table. She had a beautiful and sweet smile that irradiated pure joy. Sarah came towards us and engulfed Claire and me in a big hug. I'm so happy for you both. I will come and visit as often as I can. She giggled. Thank you so much, Sarah. 
Claire said, taking both of her hands in hers after Sarah ended her bear hug. I really hope you come often. By the way, there's someone I want you to meet. My mate said, guiding Sarah to the place our pixie guest was. This is Jyacinth, the doctor from the pixie lands that I've told you about. She told Sarah, before turning to the small and pixie. I'm so glad you came, Jyacinth. That is Sarah, my mentor and guardian angel. I think the two of you have a lot to talk about regarding healing methods, plants, and even mushrooms. Claire smiled, leaving the two doctors to talk. Tor came in our direction. He had a smile on his face. I am very happy for you both, he exclaimed, hugging Claire and me simultaneously, just like Sarah did. Thank you, Tor. I hope you find your Luna soon. I'm quite sure the goddess reserved someone amazing for you. Claire replied. I honestly wished the same. Tor proved to be a good and generous friend, helping Claire and me to be together, even though he once was interested in her. Now all the bad blood between us was gone, I had Claire mine, and hopefully, soon, Tor would find his beloved as well. I saw Katie approaching with Adrian. It was good that she came. She had a small smile on her face, and was coming in Claire's in my direction when something unexpected happened. The new beta of the Crimson Moon Pack professed his claim in a guttural voice that came from his wolf, from his soul. Mine! Beta Joshua said, looking at Katie, with a couple of desperately long strides he was in front of her, taking her in his arms. Katie took a lungful of air. I could hear her gulping hard, her glowing eyes cluing that her wolf was on the surface. She wrapped her arms around the beta's neck, replying, Yours! Before they started kissing. Since Fergus was stripped of his alpha position, his son Nathan, a much more reasonable wolf than his father, became the new alpha. This was the first time he and his beta Joshua came to an official event with all the other alphas, lunas, and betas. I'm very happy for her, Claire said softly, and lacing her fingers with mine. Me too. She is a good soul. She deserves the true happiness that only a mate well chosen by the goddess can bring. I replied, wrapping my goddess's gift in my arms. Chapter 69 She is My Luna Part 2 Claire Hunter and I went to talk to Floor and ask her about the Luna's beta position. Floor, we want to know if you would like to stay in our pack, I said. Stay? She asked a bit confused. Stay here as the new Gamma or Claire's Luna's beta. Hunter added. Wow! That's an amazing invitation. I am honored, Flora uttered with a smile. So what do you say? I asked. Yes, I would love to work with you and be your beta, Claire. Make all your plans and goals for this pack come true. Build a fairer pack together, yes, she replied excitedly before she gave Hunter and me a fast hug. Sorry if it's inappropriate, Luna, Alpha, she muttered looking down for a moment and biting her bottom lip in a shy way. No, not at all. Now that you are officially part of the pack's family, hugs are part of the deal. I said with a smile of my own, making Floor smile as well. After some time, the Luna Queen came in my direction. Luna Queen, I have so much to thank you for. All you did for me. I started thanking her again. She literally saved my life. Oh, Claire, please. Of course, I would, and always will help you. I know I can't stand prejudice, and I support other Lunas, especially thoughtful and strong ones like you. Besides, I always liked you, since we first met, she replied. The Luna Queen wrapped her arm around my shoulder. She was so small, only a couple inches taller than me, almost Omega size. That's the new addition to our Luna's group, Claire, she said with a sweet smile. 
Welcome to the girls gang, dear. We meet every once in a while to talk, relax, have lots of sweets, and vent a bit about our overwhelming yet super hot males. Luna Petra added with a heartfelt smile. Mated life is amazing, but having girls time and grumbling about our males once in a while is fundamental to keep the mental health. Luna Michelle remarked, laughing a bit as well. They seem so sweet and welcoming. It felt so good to be a part of a group, to be accepted and looked at regardless of my origin. Those Lunas are awesome, and we will be an awesome Luna too, hope squeaked in my mind. We will do everything to become the Luna this pack needs, I replied to her. After I finished talking to the Lunas and already got to know the time and location of the next Luna's meeting, I went to eat something. I was so overwhelmed and amazed with all that was happening, all these amazing people, that I forgot my growling stomach. A little girl with black curly hair and black small eyes, who should be around seven years old, came in my direction. She was an Omega. I could recognize it by her smell. She stopped for a moment and hid herself behind the table. I took slow steps towards her to not make her feel uncomfortable. Hello, I said, crouching down and waiting for her to come out from her hidden spot. Hello, she murmured back, almost inaudible. If I didn't have hope in her enhanced sense, I wouldn't have been able to catch it. Do you want to come out? Do you want to talk? I asked. Yes. No. You are the new Luna? She asked, peeking from behind the chair. Yes. What is your name? Karasmara, she said, looking down once again. Well, you know what? I am new to this pack, and I still don't have many friends. I wondered if you would like to be my friend. I asked, making a little pout and offering my hand for her to take. Yes, she muttered, looking at my hand for some time before she wrapped her small hand around it. She took slow steps closer and touched my hair, visibly feeling much more comfortable. I also don't have that many friends, she sighed. Mama said I couldn't go to school or have a wolf when I'm big like you because we're only Omegas. But I told her that I can because you are a Luna and you have a wolf, she said. The people in the pack have seen my light gold wolf many times while Hunter and I let our wolves run together and play around. This time... I made sure to be as deep as possible into my mind when they did their love business. Yes, you can have your wolf. Go to school and do a lot of different things. You just have to want it very bad and try every day, studying and training. My mama also thought I couldn't, that we Omegas couldn't, I said, making her mouth open in a perfect O shape. But now she knows I can. She learned it. I'm sure your mama will get to know that well, and you and her both can be the things you want to be, I told her. She wrapped her arms around me and said in a coy and happy way, Thank you, Mama Claire. My mama will be happy to know it. She smiled once, showing the cute gap in her mouth due to the loss of her baby teeth, before she ran to hug the legs of a brunette she-wolf, probably her mom. Sometimes it was hard, it was exhausting to fight prejudice, and there was still a lot to be done in this pack. But for moments like this, for giving pups a chance and telling them that their dreams can come true, to give people hope, it was and would always be worth it. I stood up, and when I turned around, I was already engulfed in the arms of my partner. In this fight and all the upcoming challenges, my support and my comfort, the love of my life. My Luna, he muttered in my mind before he took my lips in a passionate kiss. I murmured back in the same way, Your Luna. Epilogue Five years later Claire Five years have passed since I've become his Luna. Things in our pack are going well. With Floor as my beta, I've been able to conciliate my nurse career and my Luna duties. She is a great help. I couldn't be happier with my mate, my hunter. We grew even more in sync and in love. Besides, working together with him in leading our pack has been amazing. I am very proud of us. My only worry was about his sadness because of Tyler. 
but it was settled as well. Four years ago, the Royal Pax patrollers found him roaming around the borders in his wolf form. He was lost, almost growing feral. I wanted to help him, mainly for Hunter, but I didn't want to see him ever again. That was too much for me. So I asked Sarah to tend to him, and to help him recover and be able to shift back to his human form. Sarah has a huge heart, so she didn't hesitate in doing this for him. After he recovered, he tried to find a pack. No one wanted to welcome a former Beta who betrayed their pack, and Alpha. Hence, Hunter and I had to intervene. We asked many Alphas, although not the ones from neighboring packs, to accept Tyler in their pack. Alpha Mateo was the only one to say yes, but he wouldn't let Tyler have any important position in his pack, or even be a regular wolf. Thus, Tyler was currently working with the Omegas, cleaning and gardening staff. It was quite ironic. I just hope that this way he can learn to be humble and see beyond his prejudices. The most important thing is that brought my Alpha a sliver of peace of mind he was lacking. My mom didn't move to the Black Forest Pack, but she comes to visit us very often. Now, she has a closer relationship with Hunter and felt more comfortable. I could even say, at home here. Katie was quite happy with her beta mate, and they already had their first pup, a little boy. Tor still hadn't found his mate, but I was quite sure the goddess had something amazing planned for him. That was at least what his good karma should attract. A lot of love. I was organizing some of the files in the pack clinic when I heard Hope's happy howl in my mind. We are pupped, Claire! Hope was jumping inside my head. What? I asked as her words brought me back from my deep concentration haze. We are with Pup. I wasn't sure about it before, but now I could listen to the little heart, so I know for a fact we are carrying. I've already told Max, Hope said in a hyper way. It was the first time ever I saw a wolf doing pirouettes. Goddess, I'll become a mom? My lips curled up in a huge smile. A baby? I've already told Max our mate is coming, she squealed. I stood up to leave to go see my Alpha. I wanted to be the one to tell him the news, but apparently my overexcited wolf couldn't wait at all. But before I could open the door, Hunter did it and wrapped me in a bear hug. Claire, we are having a pup! His voice was guttural and his eyes were glowing. Man and wolf were talking. He started spinning me in the air as crazily excited as Hope was. He put me down and took my face in his. My lovely Luna, I love you, he said, before he caressed his lips on mine in a sweet kiss. Then he went down on his knees and wrapped his arms around my still thin waist, pressing his face against my belly. He showered it with kisses, making me giggle. A few months later, Hunter and I welcomed our little girl, our Vanessa. We couldn't be happier. I think she's an alpha. She's so full of energy. I muttered, looking at my pup in awe after she sucked my nipple eagerly. Too eagerly, and with a strength a newborn pup wasn't supposed to have. While I was nursing her. Our sweet Vanessa. The only thing that matters is that she's ours. <laughs> that makes her perfect. She and all the other pups will have any and every opportunity, regardless of their rank. Hunter replied, kissing the top of my head and looking at our pup with so much love. Most of the wolves in the pack, except for a dozen of centuries-old conservative ones, grew to accept me as their Luna, and the changes that Hunter and I implemented. The conservative wolves moved to Alpha Blake's pack. We can't change everyone and everything. We have changed the whole system in our pack. Now young Omegas could choose to train with other wolves, pursue their studies, or even work in the kitchen if it was their will. They had a choice. Having a choice empowered many of them to find themselves, achieve, and even enhance their potential. Many of them trained on a daily basis and meditated to connect to their wolf spirits, and in this way, twelve Omegas already could shift to their wolf, meaning that in five years, we could achieve a number four times bigger than what happened in the royal pack for centuries. I was very happy that one of the Omegas who could shift was my friend TJ. 
She was the first friend I had in this pack and was there for me when I didn't even have hope. Her wolf Momo is a dark brown wolf with a bubbly personality and light shining eyes. Goes without saying that she became one of Hope's best friends. Things keep changing continuously, sometimes faster, other times slower. But one thing will always remain the same. Mine and Hunter's care for our pack and our love for each other. A love that overflowed in life and brought us our sweet pup. She was finally asleep. I looked at my mate, his gorgeous gray eyes, and nuzzled him, gently, just like our wolves do to show their love, before my lips caressed against his. I love you, my Alpha, I said using the sheer intimacy of our bond. His words filled my mind. Ah, uh, and I love you, my Luna. <laughs>